Hey what's up, it's cute what if this side. Today we will be seeing, what if Deku went to juvenile detention center. Now before we move ahead with the fic, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. For future what ifs like this. A young Izuku and Jin ran through the dirty alleyways of Shizuoka, knocking over trash cans and doing their best to stay away from the teenage thugs that were chasing them. Quit running punks the leader snarled, slashing through the trash cans with sharp claws, you'll get it for crossing the southern wolf syndicate. Shit Izuku shouted as they came up on a dead end, Jin shift the ground. My arms busted I can't Jin cried as they turned to face the teenagers coming towards them, one with the best quirk, and two with strength enhancers. You two are gonna pay for Putin our little buddy in the infirmary. The beast sneered, flexing his claws. Izuku, you gotta use it. Jin whispered, taking a slight step back. Or we're fried. Three can Izuku whispered. Get him. Izuku woke with a slight gasp, making Yui look up from where she sat next to his bed eating breakfast. Midoriya Ida called standing from his bed, Todoroki doing the same from the other side, you're awake. Yeah he sat up, wincing as he looked down at his bandaged torso. Careful. Ada warned, you were injured badly. No shit. Izuku deadpanned, I took a katana to the stomach he groaned as he fell back, grunting at the jostling. Dad's gonna kill me he muttered, looking at Yui, noting the bandages on her arms and legs, are you okay? MHMM. She nodded, you and Ada were the worst injured, Todoroki and I are just waiting for the doctors to release us. With how outclassed we were, I think we were lucky we all weren't killed, Todoroki said quietly, Izuku especially. Yui hummed as she scooted closer to Izuku's bedside, offering him some yogurt, which he gratefully accepted, having trouble managing the cup and spoon with his weak limbs and giving in when Yui took the yogurt cup and spoon and motioned to feed him. We're happy you survived Midoriya, Todoroki said in amusement as he looked to Ada, who stood and bowed. I must apologize Izuku, my blind need for revenge almost got you all killed. Hey man, don't worry about it. Izuku said easily, last night would have been a clusterfuck regardless, I mean the Namus on their own fuck what happened to the Namus. My father killed two of them, and Stain got the one that tried to drag you away. Todoroki explained. But nothing on the other League of Villain members. But they did get Stain. Yui continued, he passed out a few seconds after saving you. Izuku slowly nodded, so hat now. Now we wait, Ada mumbled, the doctor still needs to see you and I am still waiting for some tests to be completed on my arms. You can eat until then. Yui said, holding up the yogurt. Now say ah. Izuku blushed as he continued to eat, ignoring the amused looks of Todoroki and Ada. A few hours later the door opened to the doctors, followed by X Les and Manuel. Kid you're alive. X said with a grin, and it looks like you're doing better than ever. Izuku blushed, looking at Yui, who was sitting between his legs, absent-mindedly swiping through her phone. Hey X, you made it out alright. For the most part. Before we continue, sir. The door opened once more as a man with the head of a dog walked in. This is Kenji Tsurigami, the police chief of Hasu. Please stay seated, rough. The man said, making Ada and Todoroki sit down. Wu Fizuku thought incredulously. I am here to discuss the severity of last night with you four. He began, four heroes in training taking out the hero killer on their own is astounding. And you should all be proud of the strength you showcased. And display it sadly I cannot condone your actions. Excuse me Shoto asked as he narrowed his eyes. The injuries Stain sustained during his fight with you four has left him bedridden in the ICU ward. It's a miracle he didn't die. And while it is true he was a dangerous foe, two of you had no approval to confront the villain. If we hadn't done what we did, then Ada, Native and Yui would be dead right now. Izuku began angrily, arms unconsciously going around Yui as he spoke. I don't regret a single thing. Him, yes. You were given express permission to use your quirk in the defense of Native. He looked to Exless, who simply grinned back. Normally I would chastise your mentor, and inform you that what you did was highly reckless. Not to mention dangerous, but, you are right, your timely arrival, as well as your sauce message to other hero students saved lives. And for that I thank you, you as well Ms. Kodai. Sadly young Ada and Todoroki had no authorization. And were this a normal circumstance, then both would likely be facing expulsion and possibly criminal charges. Todoroki tensed, looking angry as Ada bowed his head in shame. But, given the circumstances, I have taken the liberty to place the entire rescue upon young Midoriya, and Ms. Kodai, as they had permission to engage the villain, and the injuries sustained by said villain would match up with both quirks. You two won't get any recognition, but it will definitely keep you out of trouble. I can't find a fault in that logic. Todoroki mumbled. It does make the most sense. Ada said, looking to Yui and Midoriya, I owe you both my life. I owe you mine as well, Ada. Yui said quietly, you took several hits for us during the fight. We were only in the position we were in because of me. Ida muttered, head hanging in shame. Look man, it's understandable. Izuku began. I'd have done the same thing had it been Bakugo or Jin. Don't let this keep you from being the hero you want to be. Two one but I still feel all of the credit should go to you too. It's a small price to pay. I agree. Todoroki said. Then congratulations heroes Kajin and Rule. Surigami said, for apprehending the hero killer, this is quite the debut for Yuan though I cannot officially say it. I want to thank you too, Ada and Todoroki, for your help in his apprehension. 
The teens bowed to him as Manuel moved over to Ida, sternly reprimanding him while X walked up to Izuku. Doc said you'd be in here for a bit. He drawled, so you probably won't get to finish your internship. But still, I'm proud of you kid, without you native would be dead, you also held your own against Namu. Thank you X, Izuku said with a smile. X looked at Yui, native wanted to come by, but they're still patching him up. He's about as proud of you as I am of Kajin here. You two have a great future ahead if you keep up like this. Yui beamed happily as X began heading for the door. I'll try and see you off on Friday kid, don't tear yourself up before then. Gotcha boss Izuku sighed, leaning back and letting Yui rest against his chest, the unfamiliar weight still comforting after the hellish day he had. Soon the doctors were back, using their quirks sparingly to heal Izuku's stomach wound just a little more than injuries so bad that they had to work slowly or risk it healing wrong and talking with Ida about his injuries quietly in the corner. How's the injury Ida Izuku asked. Ida hesitates as he looks at Izuku. The knives hit a vital nerve in my right arm Ida began softly. There's a chance that I'll never regain full range of motion in my hand. That's rough buddy Izuku mumbled, is there a surgery you can get for it? I turned it down. The other three teens stared at Ada in shock. Why Todoroki asked, that could seriously impede your combat skills. I received these injuries because of my own hubris and want for vengeance I am keeping them as a reminder of how far I truly need to go as a hero. Izuku slowly nodded, I can respect that. He said, holding out his own scarred hand for a fist bump, which Ada reciprocated while Yui gave a small hum of approval. You two truly are amazing. Todoroki sighed as they continued talking about the few things they had learned on their internships before Ida was discharged to his family. Todoroki was likewise released afterwards. So, what are you gonna do now Izuku asked his classmate as he began walking towards the door. My father failed to capture the hero killer, and all of the credit went to you too, he said, smiling slightly as he looked at them. I can't wait to see how he's handling it. He worries me sometimes Izuku muttered as the boy left. MHMM, Yui hummed in agreement, playing a game on her phone as she laid back against him. Not that I'm complaining Izuku began, unconsciously wrapping his arms around her waist, but why are you so clingy now? Yui looked back at him, looking down for a minute, before staring back up into his eyes. You almost died she whispered, twice, and I like you, and I don't want to lose you. Izuku tightened his hug for a moment, you won't lose me he mumbled, I promise. Yui sighed happily as she closed her eyes and rested against him, neither moving until the nurse came in to give Izuku his last round of meds. Two days later Yui and Izuku slowly limped towards the train that would take them back to the Mustafu prefecture. X less walking beside them. Sorry your internships were cut short. X said, but with your injuries, and with Native still in the hospital, there's nothing we can do. It's alright honestly I'm looking forward to relaxing for a bit. Izuku sighed. MHMM. Yui nodded along. Can't argue with that. X chuckled, just remember to give me a call once you get your license, you're good in a fight kid, and I'd like to see how far Kajin can get. Thank you X Izuku said, giving him a slight bow as the train pulled into the station. Hope to see you again. See a kid X waved them off as they stepped into the slightly crowded train. Do you need to sit down Yui asked worriedly as Izuku winced in pain. I'm fine, he said, giving her a reassuring smile. They told me I'd be sore for a few days. Dude are you Kajin a young middle schooler suddenly shouted, trying to force his way between Yui and Izuku, only for Izuku to push him back with narrowed eyes. I am, he began slowly, unconsciously pulling Yui closer to him. Dude you are awesome the boy gushed, his tentacle like hair waving erratically. My buddy said you beat the hero killer. I did Izuku said slowly, looking at Yui, with some help. No way your rule the middle schooler gushed, catching the attention of everyone on the train. Hey, that is rule. And Kajin too those two are the real deal. Can't believe they're only first years. Way to go you two. Izuku intertwined his hand with Yui's as they were swamped by their new fans. Can I get an autograph? Dude your scars are wicked. You two are awfully close are you together is that why you confronted the hero killer? Both teens blushed as the train stopped. Sorry everyone this is our stop Izuku called as they left the train, several of the citizens trying to follow them. Yui was quick to touch a nearby trash can, enlarging it to cover the entrance long enough for them to slip away. We may need to get disguises. Izuku sighed as they walked down the sidewalk. Hoodies and glasses Yui asked, leaning closer into him. Hoodies and glasses. He agreed as they wandered towards Iro's newly reopened tea shop, hands still intertwined. The Jasmine Dragon was the same quaint little shop that Izuku remembered. Polished wood surfaces, several tables and comfortable cushioned chairs surrounding them. The lingering smell of incense in the air as people quietly talked over their tea. A single waitress going table to table to bring refills or little snacks. Izuku over here. Izuku looked over and grinned when he saw Midnight and Present Mike sitting at a table, both out of their regular hero attire and in civilian clothes. Midnight. He greeted, giving her a small respectful bow. HMPH, none of that. I'm your honorary aunt remember she asked pointedly. It's either Auntie Nimiri or just Nimiri. Got it. Of course, how could I forget? He chuckled, remembering the few times he had met her and present Mike outside of work. The two would heckle Aizawa to no end, resulting in some of the best days he had. 
And Ms. Kodai Nimiri gasped, making present Mike groan. What are you doing with our residential fire user? She seemed to stare pointedly at their intertwined hands, making both young adults blush. I like him, Yui mumbled, leaning closer to Izuku as they sat down with the two heroes. Oh, I knew you two would end up together, Nimiri gushed before turning to Hizashi and slamming her hand on the table. Pay up. Izuku and Yui sweat dropped as Hizashi pulled some yen out and handed it over to Nimiri. One of these days I'll win. He grumbled. So, Nimiri began, leaning towards the two. We heard about what happened in Hasu. Are you two alright? Other than a few new scrapes and scratches we're fine. Izuku said with an easy smile, though I'll be sore for a few more days. Perhaps a hot cup of tea will help Iro called jovially as he walked over with a tray full of steaming cups. Uncle Izuku said happily, standing up and helping the old man set the tea down. Uncle, I'd like you to meet Yui Kodai. Yui, this is Uncle Iro. He took care of me when I was younger. It is truly an honor to meet you young miss. Iro said with a bow. Likewise, Yui said respectfully, returning the bow. Now, how are your injuries? Nephew Iro asked worriedly, turning to Izuku as they all sat down. From what I was told, your injuries were quite extensive. Like I told Nimiri I'll just be sore for a bit. He said. How's the reopening going? Quite swimmingly apparently I have the market in this area. Iro said, sipping his tea, Yui did the same. Gemmmmm. Yui hummed happily, looking at her cup with bright eyes. Jasmine, my personal favorite. Iro chuckled. It's very tasty. Yui said. I'm glad my nephew is with such a smart young woman. Iro said, perhaps I can teach you my secret technique for brewing tea. Iro looked about conspiratorially then leaned in and whispered, because Izuku's tastes like hot leaf juice. Yui giggled as Izuku groaned, isn't that what tea is hot leaf juice? How could a member of my own family say that Iro cried dramatically as everyone laughed? A few hours later, bye uncle I'll try and come by tomorrow Izuku called as he and Yui left the now closed tea shop. Nimuri and Hizashi had left hours earlier for a teacher's meeting. You two stay safe Iro called as they walked away. I like your uncle. Yui said as they walked down the sidewalk. He's the best, Izuku said fondly, where do you live I'll walk you home. Not too far from here. Yui said, reaching out and taking his hand, and smiling when he intertwined their hands, today was fun. It really was. Izuku agreed, though I wasn't very happy about that dig on my tea making skills. Does your tea taste like hot leaf juice Yui asked innocently, making Izuku huff. It may have you a bit. Yui giggled as they reached her house, thank you for today. She said, stepping up onto the stoop and turning around, it was fun meeting your family. You say that now, but you still haven't met my dad. Izuku chuckled, giving her a kiss on her forehead, good night Yui. Yui blushed, good night she mumbled, quickly dodging in and kissing his cheek before going inside. Izuku smiled happily as he skipped down the steps and away from the house, whistling a quiet tune as he went. He was almost home when he felt the hairs on the back of his neck stand on end. Whoever's out there, step on out now. He growled pointedly, turning around to glare at a shadow that slowly stepped out from an alley. You've really grown up, haven't you Akuma? That voice. Izuku muttered, tensing as a familiar face stepped out. Dab I. Long time no see little brother the scarred man sneered. Saw your little display at the sports festival. Gotta admit, you've really grown into that quirk of yours. What do you want Dab I? Izuku asked rudely. What can a friend come see his little kohai he asked innocently. He waves his hand flippantly. Relax Akuma, you have nothing to fear from me right now, especially after your takedown of the hero killer. He laughed loudly. He was trying to kill my friends. Izuku said stiffly. And you managed to stop him. Dabai praised, but that doesn't mean his message didn't reach others. He began to pace around Izuku, who kept his guard up as he watched the older man. This society is corrupt and must be taken apart. Heroes who do not meet the vision of the hero killer will be called. He stopped and gave Izuku a sad smile, his ideologies make a lot of sense, and a lot of people him included will be following it. You and that Kodai girl are deemed safe, but don't be surprised if the next time we meet, we're enemies. With that, Dabai began walking away. Izuku didn't relax until Dabai was out of sight. Damn it he muttered, trudging down the sidewalk with his hands in his pockets, mind going back to an incident in his childhood. Izuku slowly opened his eyes, staring in shock at the crowd of older boys who were now passed out on the ground with minor burns. Standing over them was a boy with spiky black hair. He was covered in severe burn scars and was glaring down at the boys with a cold fury. That'll teach you to mess with my friends. The boy growled, looking at Izuku and Jin. Come on guys, let's get you two fixed up. Dabi I'm sorry Izuku began to sob, only to stop when Dabai karate chopped his head. Don't apologize, Dabai told him with a friendly smile. Just do what you have to do to get stronger yeah. Izuku sighed as he unlocked his apartment door. What am I gonna do? He muttered as he walked in. He froze as a familiar capture weapon wrapped around him and tightened. He slowly looked over to the kitchen, where Aizawa was drinking out of a juice box, red eyes glowing as he looked at his son. What did I say about taking care of yourself again? The next day, Izuku walked towards the municipal jail, hands in his pockets as he stopped in front of a thick window, where an officer was waiting. How can I help you? The overweight man asked boredly. Here to visit, Izuku said simply. Jin Watanabe he said I should be on the list. 
Let's see. Ah, here it is. Go ahead and go in. He'll be there shortly. Aizuku nodded and entered the visitation room, a long room with metal stools lined up against the wall, with a corresponding window, and phone set into the wall. Izuku sat in front of one of them. A few moments later Jin was sitting across from him, putting the phone against his ear as Izuku does the same. Good seeing you again Akuma, the bald-headed boy said with a grin. Same to you Golem. Izuku responded, leaning against the wall a bit, how they treatin' you in there. Not too bad now that everyone knows one of my boys took down the hero killer. Jin said smugly, great job on that by the way. You know how I do. Izuku said flippantly. Yeah I saw, that Kodai girl must be something else if you jumped into a fight with the hero killer for her. Izuku blushed, we didn't start going out until after that. Oh ho ho got the stones to ask her out after almost dying huh? H how's your case going Izuku asked quickly doing his best to change the subject. Jin grinned knowingly, since I helped you guys they're dropping all the hard ones. Criminal trespass should drop pretty quick. He leaned back a bit, Nezu came by the other day to talk. What did he want Izuku questioned. He's starting some kind of rehab project for criminal cases like me. He's talked to 19 others here, even extended an invitation to Kan and Peterson. Those two are heavy hitters. Izuku whistled, you gonna take the offer. Was gonna talk with you about it first. Jin admitted, you got out of the life, and I know you don't like talking about your past, which means your classmates probably don't know all the small time shit we used to do. I don't wanna throw a wrench into your shit. Bro, if you don't take that offer, then I'll kick your ass. Izuku deadpanned, making Jin laugh, all honesty, I don't give a fuck if they find out about the small time shit. Most of the staff already know about it, and I'm sure everyone's gotten some idea of what we used to do. Don't handicap your life for me man. I got you Akuma. Jin chuckled, anything else you need to talk to me about? Yeah, you remember Dabai Izuku asked, he confronted me last night, haven't seen Dabai since our stint in the madhouse. Jin grunted, what did he want? Apparently he wanted to warn me. Izuku sighed, said there'd be a lot of people who will be following Stain's ideologies, and that just because I was deemed worthy doesn't mean that we wouldn't be enemies. This is bad, Dabai isn't one to follow someone blindly. Jin muttered, if he's following the hero killer then he's serious. Do you think he'd actually fight me as in seriously? Jin shook his head, Dabai may have had our backs, but if we're heroes and we get in his way, then he won't hesitate. Time's up the officer called over the intercom. Jin sighed, I'll be out this bitch next month man, don't get into too much trouble eh? Yeah, I got ya. Izuku said, standing up, party when you get out. You know it, later Akuma. Jin said, walking out as Izuku left, mind still heavy with Dabai's words. Sorry it took so long for an update, but I'm back to those of you who are interested in having an OC make an appearance with the rehabilitation class. Then go ahead and send me their details, there's already three characters chosen for it so the next 17 will take a spot. They won't show up until after the training camp arc. Until then. Peace out. Class 1A was a buzz. They had all seen the news, they had seen the hero killer subdued and their friends standing to the side. It was amazing that their classmates had fought the hero killer, and awe-inspiring that one of them had been key in bringing the villain down. I'm glad I thought to tell my mentor about Izuku's message. Kaminari said to Jiru, to think he was fighting the hero killer. Typical Deku, always getting into trouble. Bakugo grumbled, trying to ignore Kirishima and Siro as they laughed at his haircut. Did you lose a bet or something Siro guffawed? Shut up you shitty extra it won't lay any other way. Best genist must have really had an influence huh Kirishima chuckled. Shut it shitty hair Bakugo snarled, his hair popping back out into its usual style. Look it fixed itself. Bakugo grumbled as he looked to the door, where Izuku was limping in. Oi Deku you still alive? Obviously. Izuku sighed as he went towards his desk. How are you feeling Sato asked. Ida and Todoroki were saying you were seriously injured. Not the worst injury I've ever had, Izuku said easily, just a bit sore, I'll be fine by tomorrow. Listen to him, Mina sighed dramatically, he's making it sound like he took out a mugger, and not the hero killer stain. Yeah, you can't be so nonchalant about this Midoriya Kaminari interjected. Dude was seriously badass and you took him down with that Yui girl. All honesty I was terrified during that entire fight. Izuku said honestly, thought we were dead until I was able to get that last hit in. Enough with the depressing stuff Hagakure exclaimed, what's going on between you and Kodai people have been speculating over your relationship. Izuku groaned, yeah I know, they practically mobbed us Thursday when we went to Eros. So you are going out with her Mina exclaimed. Yeah, why is it so important Izuku asked, we got together after everything happened. But neither girl were listening to him anymore, instead they were gossiping about what this meant for other potential matches. Everyone should already be in their seats. Aizawa growled as he pushed the door open, revealing his class in their seats and staring ahead. Alright, so I've heard nothing but good things for all of you in regards to the work studies, but don't get complacent. Because now, you have your finals coming up. Your ability to pass will directly influence what you will be doing during the summer break. Those of you who pass will be going to a summer training camp to improve your quirks. Those who fail will be in summer school with me, so be sure you work hard and pass. Now, get ready for English. Just think in a few weeks we could be lounging about on a beach Kaminari side dreamily, sitting in the lunch room with several other 1A students, sun, surf and babes. Yeah, keep dreaming Sparky. Jiru deadpanned. 
The question is, what are we gonna have to do for our exams? The written exam should prove easy if we study hard. Ada interjected, but the physical is an unknown. Maybe Midoriya will know. Hiroshima supplied. No what? The entire table looked up in surprise as Izuku walked over with his tray, Yui right beside him. Dude you're here Kaminari exclaimed in shock. Yui wanted to meet all of you. Izuku said as they sat down across from Ida and Yuraka. It is good to see you again Kodai. Ida greeted. You too Ida. She responded, and you're Yuraka right? Yep you can call me Achako I if you want. While Yui talked with his friends, Izuku turned to Kirishima. So what did you want to ask me? We wanted to know if you know what we're doing for the final exam since Aizawa's like your dad. Sorry guys, old man hasn't said anything to me about it. Izuku said with a shrug. Oh what's this? Izuku felt his entire body tense up as Monoma approached them. Class 1A DOES ain't know how the physical exam will be how embarrassing surely they must have an edge over the rest of us lowly students he then looked at Yui. And look at the traitor what class 1B not good enough for you. You can stop with all that. Izuku growled, beginning to stand. Or what trying to intimidate me now just like a villac. Sorry. Kendo apologized for Monoma as she slammed her fist into the boy's head, incapacitating him. But you guys shouldn't have much to worry about. An upperclassman told me that the exam is just fighting robots. That was supposed to be a secret Kendo Monoma wheezed out as she picked him up and slung him over her shoulder. Give it a rest Monoma. Kendo said sternly as she walked away. Glad someone finally knocked him out. Izuku grumbled, sitting back down. I'm just sorry it wasn't me. Same. Yui sighs. So Kodai Mina shouted, leaning into the girl. How far have you and Midoriya gone? Both teens turned scarlet as Toru started badgering them as well. That is inappropriate talk for a lunch table Ida shouted, arm moving robotically at Mina and Toru. Thanks Ida Izuku sighed, intertwining his hand with Yui's, making her blush deepen. Seriously, you guys are worse than my old roommate. You're 15 how could you have had a roommate? Well you see he stopped as Ida once again spoke up. Hurry up and eat we only have 15 minutes before classes resume. Sure thing Ida, Izuku said with a fond roll of his eyes. One week later, you will be facing the teachers. Izuku stood in stunned silence alongside his classmates, unconsciously clenching and unclenching his fists as his father explained how it would go down. And grinned when he was told his partner would be Bakugo. Looks like we get to work together number two. Izuku said with an easy grin as Bakugo growled. You two will be going up against me. Haku interrupted Aizawa as he stepped out from behind ectoplasm, wearing his costume and looking at the two. I expect to be reasonably challenged by the two of you. Izuku looked at Bakugo, then back to Paku. It'll be a fun matchup, that's for sure. Izuku said. Those of you whose exams are about to start, I suggest you get with your partner and discuss strategy. Everyone else can wait in the viewing room until their turn comes. The class began to disperse, Izuku hooked Bakugo's arm and guided him into the viewing room. We may be majorly screwed. What the fuck are you talking about Deku Bakugo barked out. Do you not know who that is Izuku asked, letting go of him as they reached the viewing room. He's a retired pro hero named Whiplash, his quirk is waterbending. He can control any water within a certain radius. We'll blast him clear off campus and pass with flying colors. Bakugo said confidently. Are you not listening he controls water, which means you can't use your explosions, and he can counter my fire easily. Bakugo scowled. He's old, he's not even a pro anymore, we'll take care of him I know it. I hope you're right. Izuku sighed, settling back to watch his fellow students go through their exams. Meanwhile Aizawa had cornered Paku in the hallway. I thought All Might would be facing those two he growled out. Principal Nezu decided that All Might wasn't the right match for these two. Paku said patiently, so he asked me to take over. He looked at Aizawa and sighed at his suspicious gaze. I promise, this has nothing to do with the Caldera Syndicate. I simply want to see what these boys can do. After all, they managed to impress me at the sports festival. Aizawa huffed, and you're not exactly easy to impress. He grumbled. As you well remember back when you were in my class, he put a reassuring hand on Aizawa. Relax, your boy's in good hands. Aizawa sighed, just watch yourself, he's more resourceful than you probably think. I'm sure, now, don't you have your own exam to initiate? Izuku and Bakugo walked into the fake city, looking around carefully. Look, I know you think we can just blast him away, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be harder than that. Yeah right, Bakugo scoffed, we'll blast this extra away easy. Is that so? Watch out Izuku shouted, pushing Bakugo out of the way and being blasted away by a high pressure jet of water. Heroes, Paku scoffed, sending a water whip at Bakugo and sending him flying back to where Izuku had crashed. The two slowly getting to their feet as Paku adopts a stance and begins to move, cracking concrete and steel as he summons water from several underground pipes, bringing it around him in a mass of tentacles, a hot-headed boy prone to fighting, and a reformed thug, Yue has truly fallen. What did you say you old geezer Bakugo roared, firing off a powerful explosion and flying towards him. Bakugo wit Izuku shouted as, with a flick of his wrist, Paku made a fire hydrant explode and slammed Bakugo into a nearby building, freezing the water with a puff of his breath. Come now Kajin. Paku sneered, show me what the great dragon of the west has taught you. Izuku bristled as he jumped forward, sending several streams of fire at Paku, who easily doused the attacks and created a thick cloud of steam. 
Izuku shot out of the steam and narrowly missed Paku with a flaming axle kick, pushing his fire out and turning his summon water to steam as Paku opened his water skin, sending several stinging whips at Izuku that struck him in the chest. Incoming Bakugo roared, having destroyed his icy prison and re-entering the fight, his flying kick sending Paku tumbling down the street. You still alive Deku. Keep pushing him Izuku ordered, sending more flames at Paku, who easily dodged them as he flooded the street once more. Don't tell me what to do Bakugo snapped, raising his hand and destroying the street in front of him. Together the two dodged water whips and went on the offensive as Paku easily dodged their attacks. Their quirks are powerful, and these two are skillful, he thought as he created an ice wall to block Bakugo's attack. Sending spikes at Midoriya as he opened his maw and turned them to steam, were my quirk not what it was, and if I hadn't confronted quirks like theirs before, I would already be done. With a twist of his foot and a sweep of his leg Midoriya was flying back and Bakugo was being flung across the street. Take this howitzer impact Bakugo screamed as he pulled the pins on his gauntlets. Haku destroyed two fire hydrants and brought the thousands of gallons of water forward, absorbing the concussive blast and creating a heavy rain in their area before Paku froze the droplets into jagged icicles and sent them straight for Bakugo, pinning him to the ground. Damn it, he's too strong, we can't outfight him Izuku growled jumping at Bakugo, and melting the icicles, get ready to fly Izuku shouted. Throwing him towards the escape gate, he turned and roared, intense flames pouring out of his mouth stopping Paku's attempt to catch Bakugo cold in its tracks. You think you can overwhelm me with fire Paku shouted, the ground rumbling as more pipes burst, and water came shooting out of the ground, dousing Izuku's flame and swamping him with water, which Paku quickly froze, freezing more and more water on top of it as Izuku produced his strongest flames. Paku quickly began shaping the ice around Izuku, freezing more and more around it as the ice shone with gold fire. Finally bright light went out, leaving Paku panting as he stared at the ice prison he had created. He can't be done yet. Paku muttered, knowing that the boy had broken out of something like this before. Die. Paku jumped away, narrowly dodging Bakugo's sneak attack. Inside the orb of ice, Izuku was curled up on himself, too cold to effectively use his quirk. Nano Izuku whispered as visions of the past flooded him. Cold metal and a heavy door slamming shut, Izuku throws himself against the door as he cries, his hands deathly pale. No, no, no Izuku whimpered as he curled into the fetal position, not now. Feeling nothing but cold as the freezer pumped colder air into the room, he couldn't feel his hands or his face, his feet were painful to stand on so he was curled in the corner, whimpering as he willed his fingers to light but nothing coming out. Inooo. Paku and Bakugo shielded their eyes as blue arcs of electricity shot into the sky, illuminating the area for a few moments until they died, revealing the destroyed ice prison. Ha see that you old geezer your shitty ice ain't shit for Deku let's take him out Bakugo laughed, looking at Deku, his smile falling as he sees his friend curled up on the ground, clutching his chest in pain. D Deku Bakugo blasted Paku back and shot over to Izuku. TTT to a cold no my chest Izuku stuttered out. Eyes shut tight air seemed to be squeezed out of his lungs as he tried to gasp for air. Don't worry Midoriya, I got you. Bakugo growled, slinging the boy over his shoulders as he took off running. Easily passing through the escape gate as Paku pulls himself out of the crater Bakugo put him in, still too stunned by Midoriya to have done anything to evade that attack. Old Lady Bakugo shouted as the door to the main building opened to reveal several of their classmates, move it extras. The students made room for Bakugo to run past them, heading straight for the infirmary where Recovery Girl was already waiting. Put him on the table hurry. Paku reached the infirmary just as they pulled his costume off of him. The old teacher froze in horror at the scars that covered Izuku. He's having a heart attack. Recovery girl whispered in shock, kissing his chest and shaking her head. That should help. But his nerve endings are fried. It's gonna take multiple healing sessions to heal the damage. And if we're not careful his heart might not escape scarring. How did this happen? Paku asked in shock. It seems those techniques are more than just fancy moves, Recovery Girl said dryly. Usually his lightning exits through his arms, generated safely away from his internal organs. However, he must have panicked and channeled all that energy through his chest. His heart stopped for a few seconds that's dangerous. This is all your fault. Both elders looked at Bakugo in shock. The boy was shaking with barely contained rage. I've seen you before, watching Deku like you didn't trust him. You knew this would hurt him you had to have you did this on purpose. Watch yourself Sunny Recovery Girl admonished. Paku is an old pro, and a veteran teacher teacher, he'd never do anything to harm a student on purpose. Bakugo growled, whatever. He pushed past the two and left the infirmary, ignoring the questions of his classmates. I don't think you would but it has to be asked, recovery girl sighed. Did you do this on purpose? No. Paku said quietly, had I known of this beforehand then I wouldn't have used that move. We'll have to watch him very carefully. I was watching this entire time, and I have my suspicions of what made him panic. Keep me posted. Paku sighed, walking out of the infirmary and stopping when he ran into Aizawa. What happened the tired teacher questioned. He had a panic attack while in one of my ice prisons, Paku sighed, and the lightning he summoned went through his heart. 
Aizawa looked worried as he peered through the door. I take it this hasn't happened before Paku asked. When he was fighting Todoroki I saw him panic for a split second before he retaliated. It was so quick I never thought to question him. Paku looked away, I didn't mean for this to happen. As it was I would have passed them whether they had captured me or not. They're good. You need to speak with Midoriya. I know Paku began to walk away, I know. Izuku stood firm in between the Jones family and one of the younger kids. The boy was bleeding from several lacerations on his back and whimpering in pain. Get out of the way. The husband growled, or else. Or else what Izuku growled, you gonna brand me again. He must be punished. All he did was break a cup, and on accident at that. Nothing you little monsters do is on accident you're all corrupted to be saved by the right hand of God. Fuck you and your God Izuku snarled. You can't whip a kid within an inch of their life. The man growled, then began to smile. I believe it's time for Adifrin approach for you. He said darkly as he suddenly grabbed a handful of Izuku's hair and dragged him across the living room and down into the basement. Let go of me you jackass Izuku shouted as he unleashed his weak red flames, only for the man to activate his quirk holy steel scale like metal covering his body and protecting him from the flames. We've dealt with unrepentant flame users before, he sneered, heading towards a large metal freezer. Enjoy the cooler he opened the door and threw Izuku in, slamming the door shut behind him and locking it. Let me out you asshole I'll burn this whole fucking building to the ground with you and it Izuku screamed as he punched the door, trying to summon his fire as the cold began to set in. But the weak flames only scorched the wall, and barely did anything to warm him up as he fell against the wall, shivering. A few hours later he was pulled out, unable to move his arms or legs and his lips starting to turn blue. Drag him to his bed, he can sleep in tomorrow. Fuck you Izuku whispered, jerking away from the other kids, none of them were his friends, not since Jin left. Oh is that how you see my generosity maybe a few more hours will teach you a lesson in respect. Izuku woke with a slight start, groaning at the pain that bloomed in his chest at the involuntary action. Oh good you're awake. Recovery girl said, walking in to check on the boy. How you feeling sonny? Like my chest is on fire, he croaked, shaking off the last memories of bone deep cold. What happened? You had a panic attack during your final and summoned your lightning without the form needed. Izuku turned his head to look at Iro, who was now standing in the doorway with a grim look. Without the kata, the lightning coursed through your chest, instead of through your arms and gave you a minor heart attack. That doesn't sound good. Izuku sighed, falling back on the bed. It isn't. Recovery girl said, had it not originated from you, it would have completely stopped your heart. As it is, you'll be feeling discomfort in your chest for a few days, and will have to watch for heart palpitations. You also have the early stages of frostbite, but keeping warm should take care of that. That's it Izuku sighed, slowly pushing himself up to sit with a wince, stopping slightly when Iro put a hand on his shoulder. Don't strain yourself nephew, Iro said gently, rest while you can. Izuku hesitated, then nodded, allowing himself to fall back on the bed. Do you want to talk about what happened Sunny Recovery Girl asked him. No, Izuku mumbled, turning his head away from them. I don't. Um, I'll come back in a bit, hopefully your strength has returned enough. As Recovery Girl left, Paku stepped in. I hope this isn't a bad time. He muttered, not looking at Iro as he approached the bed. Probably not the best, but do come in Iro said jovially. I'd offer some tea, but Recovery Girl has already chastised me about bringing my tea sets here. Indeed. Paku said dryly, looking at Izuku. How are you feeling Mr. Midoriya he asked. Like hammered shit. The boy muttered. Paku looked down, I came to apologize, he stated, bowing to the boy, had I known you would react like that, I would have never used that move. It's fine. Izuku said, how could you have known? Paku slowly raised up, that still doesn't make it right if I may ask. You may not. Izuku said pointedly. Paku hesitated, then nodded, of course, I simply wanted to apologize, I'll take my leave now. I'll follow you, Iro said, standing and de patting Izuku's leg. Get some rest, nephew, we can talk more about this tomorrow over a nice cup of ginseng tea. Bye uncle. The two older men walked out side by side, Paku with his arms at his side, Iro with his crossed inside his sleeves. I must apologize to you as well, Iro. Paku said quietly as they walked, I misjudged you and the boy, and in doing so my moves were less restrained. You had no reason to trust me. Iro said with a shrug, after all, you were the one charged with hunting me down. It still does not excuse my words and actions. Best to let bygones be bygones, Iro interrupted him quietly, to allow anger and resentment to remain unchecked as to invite imbalance in the spirit. Which leads to mistakes as this. Well said. Paku sighed, still, I feel that I owe both you and Midoriya a debt. Well, you can repay your debt to me by joining me and Tatsumoto for some tea and pie show. You play Paku asked in surprise. I like to think I am undefeated in the art. Iro said as they walked out of the building. That will change today. Izuku's ears pricked up as he heard the sound of multiple feet running down the hall. What in the he started, sitting up as the door burst open and his class came pouring in. Guys what are yao of? The boy grunted in pain as Yuraka and Mina practically tackled him with a flying hug. Midoriya they cried. Pain Izuku wheezed, making the girls quickly jump back from him. So much pain. 
You really gave us a fright, Midoriya. Ada said, putting a hand on his friend's shoulder. We saw what happened in the viewing room. But Mr. Aizawa wouldn't let us see you. That lightning was intense, Kaminari interrupted. I don't know how much voltage you were throwing out, but it was way past my limit. Past my limit too. Izuku chuckled weakly, almost stopped my heart. Why would you use such a dangerous move, Sato asked. It was a mistake. He said, it probably won't happen again. Still man, you really gave us a heart attack. Kaminari said, grunting when Jiru nudged him, I mean. Izuku laughed again, it's fine, I get it. He said, I'll be more careful next time, alright. Alright everyone, let's give young Midoriya here some time to rest. Recovery girl said, walking in. Recovery girl is right let us return to the classroom Ida said, ushering everyone out as they said goodbye to the injured student. You better get better Deku. Bakugo barked at him, putting a reassuring hand on his shoulder. I'll kick your ass if your shitty injury keeps us from facing off again. Izuku smiled, yeah I get you Kaken, see ya. Go ahead and lay back down Sunny. one more healing session and a quick nap and you'll be able to leave. Izuku slowly walked out of Yue, the sun slowly dipping down in the sky. Hey Midoriya Yuraka called from where she was waiting at the gate with Ida and Bakugo. Figured you guys would want to head home. Izuku said with a tired smile as he approached them. We wanted to make sure you would get home. Ida said, and while Bakugo is more than capable, I, as class representative, must see to the health of my classmates. And I wanted to hang out your rocket chirped, making Izuku chuckle. Well, let's get going, I don't want to be here any longer than I have to today. Izuku said, walking down the walkway towards the train station, they were mostly quiet, with Izuku walking ahead of everyone with his hands in his pockets. Ida and Yuraka attempted to ask Izuku about what happened but Bakugo would silence them with a look. They reached the station and sat quietly, no one wanting to breach the subject they wanted, and no one had a backup topic. At least until Bakugo cleared his throat and turned to Yuraka, soy like food. Oh yeah. Yuraka said, looking at Bakugo in confusion. Diawalu just that never mind. He growled, looking away. You okay? Izuku stared at Bakugo for a little while, confused by the boy's uncharacteristic hesitance. He slowly looked down at the ground for a bit, before his eyes widened comically, and he looked back at Bakugo, no fucking way. He said out loud, making Bakugo stiffen and pale as Yuraka and Ida stared at Izuku. What is it Yuraka asked curiously. A glare from Bakugo made Izuku clear his throat. Who thought I saw Miroku? But it wasn't her. He laughed sheepishly. You shouldn't be cursing either way Midoriya it's unbecoming of a hero Ida berated him, hand moving robotically. What about a rehabilitated delinquent Izuku asked with a grin. You couldn't have been that bad. Yuraka said. I was regularly in juvie and burned a house down. But it was for a good cause right? Izuku thought about it, then started nodding. Technically yes. How does one burn a house down in the name of a good cause Ida asked in confusion. Abusers. Izuku said with a shrug as the train pulled up. Well this is us Yuraka cheered as the doors opened. See you guys tomorrow. See you Yuraka, Ida, Izuku said, waving after them while Bakugo grumbled something under his breath. So, Izuku said, saddling up to Bakugo as the train took off, you like Yuraka huh? Bakugo shoved him off, I don't. You sure because I don't just ask my friends, so uh, do you like food? Izuku began laughing as Bakugo began to steam. Shut up I don't like that round-faced loser I just wanted to know if she liked food. Izuku rolled his eyes, sure Jan, he chuckled, leaning back against the pillar. Bakugo huffed as he glared up at the sky, hey Deku, he started, what happened during the exam? Izuku stiffened a bit, looking away from his old friend, nothing, just some stupid shit. You were muttering when I got to you. Bakugo growled, it wasn't nothing. Izuku sighed, you're right I just don't like talking about it. He muttered, it happened with those people. Bakugo nodded in understanding, Izuku had told him a lot through the semester, including the abuse he suffered through the Jones family, and why he never let anyone see the scars on his back and chest. But he didn't fool himself into thinking the boy had told him everything. I get it, Bakugo said gruffly, I'll drop it for now, but if you ever need to talk about it I'll let you yammer in my ear, or something. Izuku huffed out a short laugh, gee, thanks Bakugo, your rock is a lucky girl having you in her corner. Shut up D.E.K.U. Izuku popped his neck as he walked up the steps of his apartment complex. Dinner with the Bakugos had been as hectic and tiring as it implies, and Izuku was ready for sleep. Izuku. The young fire user looked up, sup pops, he greeted with an easy smile as he approached Aizawa, hope you weren't waiting too long, forgot to shoot you a text. It's fine, Aizawa reassured him, giving him a rare smile, how are you feeling? Good, Aunt Mitsuki makes good yudon. Aizawa nodded, are you alright after what happened in your exam? It was nothing. Izuku brushed him off as he unlocked his door, just a moment of weakness, it won't happen again. Izuku. Aizawa said, putting his hand on his shoulder, I know you don't want to talk about it, and I don't want to force it, but sadly neither of us have a choice in the matter, Principal Nezu has ordered counseling, you'll be seeing Hound Dog in a week. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Izuku said pointedly. You don't have a choice. That's bullshit Izuku snapped. That's life Aizawa shot back, as I said. Neither of us have a choice in this matter. If you don't show up, Nezu may very well ground you from training. Izuku bit his lip, fine. He muttered, throwing his door open. But don't expect me to be happy about it. 
Izuku Aizawa started. Good night, Izuku said, slamming his door. Aizawa stepped forward and put a hand on the doorknob, then breathed a tired sigh and stepped away, teenagers. He muttered, turning to walk away. What was that about? Aizawa froze and looked behind him, for fuck's sake he grumbled, glaring at Emi Fukado, dressed in her hero uniform and carrying something behind her. What are you doing here? Oh thought I'd stop by and have dinner with you she said happily. We haven't seen each other in months after all and Nimiri said something about you wanting to see me again. She waggled her eyebrows, laughing when Aizawa groaned, figured it was a good enough excuse to bring some takeout and maybe fool around. But it sounds like you're having some kid troubles. What did you find out you had a long lost son or something? It's complicated. He sighed. Well, I'm off duty, and I don't have any papers to grade. I'm not discussing this with you. Emmy slowly raised a bag of food, still steaming a bit. I brought your favorite. She said. Wan and soup. And I made sure they included egg rolls. Fine. Yeah, I knew you loved me, Zawa Jawa. You're insufferable. And you're a laugh. Izuku quietly trudged down the hall. The healing sessions he had endured after the exam had left him exhausted. And what sleep he had been able to catch was plagued with nightmares. It got so bad that he woke up early and left, catching an early train and wandering the halls in the hour, and a half before classes started. You all right? Izuku looked up and smiled when Yui approached him. The girl looked surprised to see him there so early, just about as much as he was to see her. Better now. He said as he intertwined their hands when she got close enough. I heard what happened yesterday. She said, moving a little closer, wrapping their arms together. Izuku blushed a bit, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. She said simply, carefully moving him towards a bench and having him sit down. Why are you here early? Talking to Hatsum about an addition to my costume. She said, she usually opens the shop at four and takes a break before class time. Why are you here? Couldn't sleep. He sighed, woke up early, couldn't get to sleep, then came in early, so now I'm just wandering and he stopped as she suddenly let go of her hand, and began guiding him to lay down, his head falling into her lap, Yui he stuttered. You look exhausted. Yui said softly, her cheeks heating up to a cute pink as she ran a hand through his long hair. Try and get some sleep before class. One hour won't help he started to say, but she simply shushed him, bopping him on the forehead. Sleep, she ordered. His eyes were pretty heavy, and it was pretty comfortable here. What if someone walks by he yawned out? They won't wake you, she said firmly. Izuku chuckled and felt himself drift off to sleep. Yui pulled her phone out, looking at a few apps while absent-mindedly petting Izuku's hair. A few early morning students walked by and stared curiously, but no one thought to try and wake up the sleeping hero course student. Nor did any think they should reprimand them or get a teacher. They'd seen exhausted hero course students in similar positions over their years at UA, and while many gave them shit. The truth of the matter was that the hero course students were usually amongst the most overworked alongside the support students, so no one really called them on it. An hour later Izuku was waking up as Yui shook his shoulder. Class is about to start, she said, putting her phone up. All right. Izuku yawned, sitting up and stretching. You were right, I needed that. Yui smiled smugly at him as she took his hand, both walking quietly down the hall towards 1B, where Izuku kissed her forehead, have a good day, and thank you. You're welcome. Yui responded, blushing once more as Izuku walked away. Oi Deku Bekugo barked as Izuku walked into class, what were you doing sleeping on a bench? Couldn't sleep. Izuku said as he took his chair, other students entering behind him, came in early and ran into Yui, she made me take a nap. You idiot, how are you supposed to heal if you don't rest I swear if you don't bounce back from this I'll blast you. Thanks for the encouragement number two. Izuku chuckled. You wanna go again Sparky? Glad to see everything's back to normal. Suyu croaked as she walked in with Yuraka. Can't keep them down for long she cheered as Ida came running in. Class is starting get to your desks he shouted, successfully catching several out of their seats, go go go. The one time he catches a Sato groaned as sat down. Every dog has his day right Kaminari asked as he sat down, how you feeling Midoriya? I'd feel better if people stopped asking me how I felt. He grumbled, looking out the window as Kaminari shrank back. Sorry man, just worried. Izuku sighed, I'm sorry, just a little tired. All good dude Kaminari grinned, perking back up. Everyone quiet. Aizawa said, stepping into the classroom. Instantly everyone was quiet. The exams have been thoroughly looked at, surprisingly you all passed the written exam. The class exploded into cheers, instantly quieting down when Aizawa flashed his eyes. However, he continued, his eyes narrowing on certain individuals, there were several of you who didn't pass the practical. Kaminari, Mina, Kirishima, Sato, and Siro. You three failed the practical. Izuku raised an eyebrow, I didn't Izuku questioned. The principal and Whiplash both decided to pass you. Aizawa explained, they reasoned that you never once stopped fighting until you were put in an impossible trap until your teammate could help, and you still escaped. Though you did lose points for the self-injury. Izuku slowly nodded in understanding as Aizawa continued. Now, those who failed will not be joining us at the summer camp. He declared, much to the dismay of those listed, at least they wouldn't be if I had been truthful in what I had said. It's a last-second twist they cried out in relief. The summer camp is for you all to improve on where you're weak. 
As Awa explained, those who fail will be the ones who will most benefit from it however. That doesn't mean you're off the hook, you still failed. So you will be doing supplementary lessons with me while at the summer camp. We'll be going over the itinerary tomorrow. For now, get ready for English. Izuku looked at the itinerary in his hand, thinking over everything he would need to pack and what he would need to go get. Hey Midoriya don't you agree? Huggy asked, looking up, confused as to why everyone was staring at him. What? Man you really are out of it, Kirishima said in sympathy. We were talking about going to the mall after classes or over to get what we need. Most everyone's going, so what do you say? Oh, sure, I need to get some things so I can tag along maybe I should invite Yui. She may need to get some things. Awesome we could go with one B Mina cheered. I like that kendo chick she hits hard. It's a waste of time. Bakugo scoffed, you can get all that crap on the weekend. Oh come on Bakugo Yuraka cheered, it'd be a great way to get to know each other you only ever really talk with Kirishima and Midoriya. Don't you want to know the rest of us better I want to know the real Bakugo. Bakugo stared at her for a minute, everyone held their breath, some preparing themselves for Bakugo's yelling. Everyone was pleasantly surprised when Bakugo just grunted and looked away. Fine, he muttered, ignoring Izuku's knowing grin, I'll tag along. All right Yuraka cheered while everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Yui's in, Izuku reported as Ada began making plans with Yeirazu, said she'd meet us with those of 1B who want to go along. It's a plan Mina cheered with Kaminari. Izuku walked into the mall beside his classmates, dressed in a black sweater with the hood up and simple jeans. He also wore sunglasses in an attempt to hide his identity. Haven't been here in forever. He said, mostly to himself. It's so huge Yuraka gushed alongside Hagakure. So many shops Mina exclaimed, a light shining in her eyes. Hey look it's 1B. Hey guys Kendo greeted as she walked up with Yui, Takage, Tetsu Tetsu, Abase, Kirwaro, Tsunotori and Honuki. Yui was dressed similarly to Izuku, trying to hide behind Kendo as she looked about in suspicion. Glad we found you this place is like a maze. Yui Izuku called, meeting his girlfriend with a hug and kiss to the forehead. Hi, she said cutely as Izuku intertwined their hands. Ugh, they're gonna make me sick. Bakugo grumbled, approaching with Kirishima, Tetsu Tetsu and Yuraka. Everyone else had already split up around them. Come on they're cute Yuraka said with a giggle. Yeah Bakugo, we're cute. Izuku said with a shite-eating grin. Shut up Deku. Enough you two where are we going first Kirishima questioned. I was gonna go see about some free weights Tetsu Tetsu said. Bro me too so manly. All right. What about you round face Bakugo asked gruffly. I need bug spray. She said, unfazed by Bakugo's tone. BB but if you need to go with Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu then we can totally follow them I'd be cool with that you know. Go with the flow. Bakugo scoffed. Hey losers we're gonna go get bug spray first. Fine so long as we get moving. While Bakugo yelled at Kirishima, Yui leaned over to Yuraka. Why are you acting weird around Bakugo she asked curiously. W what twam not acting weird she said with a high-pitched voice, blushing deeply. You turned red. Yui noted. Suddenly Yuraka grabbed Yui's arm. We'll catch up Yuraka shouted, pulling Yui away from Izuku. Oh alrighty then. Izuku trailed off as the girls disappeared, wonder what that was about. He muttered, turning to follow Bakugo and the others, only to bump into someone. Oh shit, sorry about that Izuku trailed off as the girl he bumped into said, Akuma prompting him to look at just who he bumped into. She was his age, wearing a tank top and jeans with a pelt of brown fur covering her visible body, and a pair of moose antlers coming out of her head. Her yellow eyes were feline-like and widened as she stared at him, lithe and lean she drove the air out of his chest as she shot forward, and hugged him. A-K-U-M-A she cheered, waving him around. Sabertooth he wheezed out, I need to breathe. Oh right she squeaked, setting him down. Shit, how do you expect me to react I haven't seen you in almost a year not since 12 arrested you and uncle. Yes yeah, sorry, things happen so fast he sighed. Io Saber why you running off like that a deep voice huffed out as a short teen ran towards them, shorter than both Izuku and Saber, and dressed in a loose sweat top and jeans, his hair was shaved on the sides and long on top, tied back in a ponytail, oh shit, Akuma. Big tiny Izuku laughed as the teen suddenly grew to over seven feet, clasping hands with him and chest bumping. Man why you looking like you some big star or something big tiny scoffed as he held Izuku close for a second. Saw your debut online, you a legend back in the old neighborhood. Shit man you know I gotta rep West Shizuo. West Shizuo represent he agreed as they both started laughing. Hey Midoribro, you gonna introduce us. Izuku looked back to where Kirishima was standing, grinning as Tetsu Tetsu leaned against him. Bakugo was watching them with his arms crossed. Right? He said, turning to his old friends, Big Tiny, Sabretooth, this is Bakugo, Kirishima, and Tetsu Tetsu. Friends up at Yue, guys, this is Sum Yasushiki and Kaiba Yorobai, otherwise known as Sabretooth and Big Tiny. Good to meet y'all. Big Tiny boomed as he shrank back to his original size. Hands stretched out, how you doin' how's the weather up there? Perfect Kirishima laughed, shaking the guy's hand. How do you know Midoriya? You mean Akuma Snot knows used to run the streets with us. Saber said with a grin, punching his shoulder playfully. Can't tell you how many fights I've been in cause of him. And how many times did you start at Izuku retorted as she laughed. What do you mean by ran the streets Tetsu Tetsu asked suspiciously. I mean we used to boost cars, skip school, stuff like that. 
Saber said with a shrug, honestly we've been out of the game for a bit, I just got out of juvie and Big Tiny is on probation. But Akuma here, he got out of the life completely became a pro hero. Trainee, Izuku muttered, rolling his eyes as Saber flipped him off. You used to Tetsu Tetsu began, only to stop when Kirishima nudged him and shook his head. Yeah I used to, Izuku said with a shrug, things change, and now I'm going straight. Well guess who's about to join you on that little pedestal she grinned. No shit, they asked you too Izuku asked incredulously. Hell yeah they did, must have seen my potential. She said smugly while Big Tiny snorted. That or Jin recommended you, like he did for Shinobi and Quickshot. Dude Saber whined. Shit, they got Shinobi and Quickshot too Izuku groaned. What are you three talking about Bakugo asked, Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu nodding behind him. About three weeks ago, I was visiting my old friend Jin when he let slip that Principal Nezu was opening a new hero class aimed to rehabilitate juvenile delinquents, and said he wanted him to be a part of it. Him and a whole bunch of other cats who have been JDC regulars. Big Tiny said, they tried to get yours truly. He scoffed, but I ain't never thought I could be some pro hero. I'll help on the block but all that big TV stuff ain't for me. I can respect that, Kirishima said. So manly, Tetsu Tetsu sniffed. You won't guess who else they got. Saber said eagerly. Who Izuku asked. Kimuri. Izuku froze at that, no fucking way. He whispered, that guy's been on lockdown since before Jin split. Apparently Principal Bear decided it was time for him to smell fresh air again. She said smugly. Who's Kimuri Tetsu Tetsu exclaimed. Guy's an old friend from the block as well. Izuku muttered, torched his old lady's house when she hit him one too many times. They threw him in solitary and we never really saw him on the out again. Visited a few times, but they never released him. He's getting a second chance of hell, a lot of us are, she said with a smile. Izuku returned the smile, well, definitely can't wait for you guys to suit up. Izuku said, extending a fist, which she happily bumped with her own. We gotta get going, good seeing you Akuma. Big Tiny said, waving as they walked away. You got some street cred, don't you Midori Akirishima said with a grin. Yeah that Big Tiny guy looked like a real bruiser Tetsu Tetsu shouted. For the most part. He said with a shrug, all honesty I'm surprised we ran into them, haven't seen them since way before UA, he ran a hand through this hair, hey, can you guys go on ahead without me I'll catch up. Sure thing man. Hiroshima gave a thumbs up as he and Tetsu Tetsu started walking away. You good Deku Bakugo asked. Yeah, just need a moment. He said, giving him a smile. Bakugo inclined his head and followed after Kirishima. Izuku let out a sigh and walked towards the fountain, reaching to pull his hood up when someone looped their arm around his neck. Hey you're that Kajin guy right? Izuku groaned, look man, I got stuff to do don't start. No no I just want to talk with you, especially since it's been so long since we've seen each other. Izuku froze as cold fingers clutched his throat. Yell or do anything and your throat is destroyed. Shigaraki sneered. I scream, you kill me and everyone already knows to stay away from you. Izuku growled. But how many will I go through before the heroes get here? How many will you go through with one leg? Shigaraki's eyes widened as he felt the sudden increase and heated his thigh. Then chuckled quietly, then go ahead, roast my leg. We'll see if your deduction is correct. Izuku growled but cooled his hand. Let's talk. So you like Bakugo Hayui mumbled as they walked back towards where they had last seen their friends. Don't say it so loud she whined, it's embarrassing enough. Why is it embarrassing she wondered. Because he's swell, he's Bakugo she groaned, there's no way he likes me. Are you sure she asked, because the way he acts around you. Oi round face mute you guys seen Deku Bakugo shouted as he walked up to them, making Yuraka let out a quiet, surprised, scream. Haven't seen him. Yui said simply, we thought he'd be with you. He split for a bit after we ran into some of his old friends. Kirishima piped up, but he's been gone a while. I'll go look for him. Yui offered, we'll meet up with you guys at the food court. Sounds like a plan Tetsu Tetsu shouted as Yui walked away, looking through the crowd for her boyfriend. I wonder what he went to do. She mumbled to herself as she began to reach the fountain. Oh there he is she trailed off as she saw the way the man sitting beside Izuku had his hand around the boy's throat, and the anger that her boyfriend was showing. I Izuku. Both looked towards her, Izuku's eyes widening in slight fear. How ho is that get away from him Yui began to say, her voice raising slightly. Yui stay back Izuku called out, everything's fine. Oh you were here with friends I'm so sorry. The man laughed as he pulled away from Izuku, letting him lurch away from the man as he walked away. Try and follow me and I'll slaughter everyone here. Yui quickly ran to her boyfriend's side. Are you alright she asked worriedly. Fine he gritted out, glaring in the direction that the man disappeared in. We need to call the police, now. A few hours later, Izuku sighed as he and Aizawa walked up the steps of the apartment. The cops had arrived shortly after Yui had found him, but Shigaraki had already disappeared. He and his friends had been questioned and released to their families, with Yui staying until Izuku had walked out of his own questioning. He had been introduced to her mother, who could have been mistaken for her older sister. The meeting was stilted and slightly awkward, but had only been for a few short minutes before mother and daughter had left, leaving Izuku with Aizawa. I'd like for you to stay in the confines of the apartment complex until further notice. Aizawa said as they reached their floor, I'd feel better knowing you were within help of other pros. Got you. Izuku sighed as he unlocked his door. Hey pops about that therapy what time do I gotta go to it? 
It'll be this Friday, 2 in the afternoon. Aizawa said, I I want you to know that if we had a choice. I know Izuku mumbled, sorry I was kind of an ass yesterday I just I don't like talking about that. I understand, and you don't have to. Hound Dog won't push you to talk about anything you don't want to. But I still have to go see him. Izuku muttered, then shook his head. Thanks pops, I'll see you tomorrow. Sweet dreams. The tired teacher responded, heading for his own apartment, stopping just shy of the door when he sees lights on inside. Don't tell me. He groaned, opening the door to Emmy happily cooking dinner. Hey Zawa I just finished cooking so go ahead and serve yourself. How'd you get into my apartment I locked the door and Nimiri gave you a spare didn't she? And she invited me to a double date tomorrow. I can't believe they won't let me leave the compound. Mitsuki rolled her eyes as she looked at her adoptive nephew. Currently she was in his kitchen cooking dinner with Katsuki's help. Izuku was currently sitting on the couch, absent-mindedly braiding Yui's hair as she watched TV. What do you expect you were targeted by the leader of the League of Villains? I'm surprised they're not trying to lock you down on campus. Izuku sighed, you're right, but I still hate it. I couldn't even go to Jin's release party. That rockhead really coming to Yue Katsuki asked rudely, earning a slap from his mom. Yeah, Izuku said, he and the ones we were talking to on Friday. Well, if he can take people down like he did at the USJ then he better not slack back Hugo roared. How was he at the USJ Yui asked in confusion. He went in with the villains, turned on them when he met up with Deku there. Bakugo grumbled. Yui blinked at that, he was a villain. Was being the key term here. Izuku sighed, we knew each other back in the day, got him out of a few tight spots. He had my back. Well invite him over then. Mitsuki said with a grin, we can have a cookout and everything. It'll probably be after the training camp. Izuku sighed, putting his arms around Yui as she leaned back into him, smiling happily. Well then I'll make sure we have everything. She said with a grin, now hurry up and come eat before this food gets cold. The next morning, Izuku yawned as he blearily got up, turning the alarm on his phone off as he sat up, rubbing the sleep from his eyes. Another day he sighed, staggering up towards his closet. Within a few minutes he was dressed and heading for the front door, pausing for a moment when someone knocked. He opened the door and raised an eyebrow at seeing Minda and Kaminari standing in front of his door. Tweedledee, tweedle idiot. He greeted with a smirk as they began to splutter indignantly. What can I do you for dorks? We came by to see if you wanted to come to the school pool. Kaminari said with an easy grin, get some training in before the camp. You guys just want to ogle the girls don't you he asked, crossing his arms. W what no what do you take us for mind a spluttered. Idiots. Izuku sighed, sorry boys, as much as I'd love to cool off in the pool. I already got something scheduled today, guess you'll have to find your innocent alibi somewhere else. With that he closed his door and locked it, then walked away. Damn, he was maybe the only one who'd actually listen to us. Kaminari sighed, guess we can't use the pool. Yeah where do you think he's going? No idea maybe he's going on a date with Yui. Kaminari wondered as they began walking down a different set of stairs. Wanna follow him? Yeah sure. Izuku stared at Hound Dog's office door, hesitating ever so slightly before sighing and knocking. Come in. A voice growled out, prompting Izuku to open the door and step in. Mr. Midoriya, how are you today the man asked, hands folded in front of him as the former delinquent walked in. Good. He muttered, looking around the office, noting the certifications and pictures of Hound Dog with other heroes. Have a seat, please. The dog quirk user said, motioning to one of the cushioned chairs. Now, I know you have some reservations on talking with the therapist. Izuku scoffed as he sat down. Yeah, I don't need a shrink. I'm fine. Your episode during your final says otherwise. It was a fluke, nothing to worry about. Izuku said dismissively, it won't happen again. We want to make sure it won't happen again. It won't. Hound Dog sighed, you don't know that for sure. What if this were to happen while you were in the middle of a real villain fight where lives are on the line? He watched as Midoriya looked away from him. Arms crossed, I'm not here to force you to speak on anything. If you don't want to talk about certain things then we will leave them be. But that doesn't mean I won't attempt to breach the subjects. Understood. Yes sir. Izuku mumbled. Good, now, let's talk about your childhood. It was shit I mean not good. Izuku corrected himself, making Hound Dog chuckle. You can use what language you want, young man. This is a safe space no. Do you want to elaborate on why it was shit? Izuku shrugged, going from foster home to JDC and back. Didn't exactly scream stable childhood. I couldn't rely on any of the adults outside of the JDC. And even then, it was really only Tatsumoto who had our back. You felt you couldn't trust anyone, Hound Dog noted. Was it the same for others your age? For the most part Izuku hesitated. Two had friends that I relied on well. They were more than friends. They were like family. I knew we weren't exactly the best people, but we had each other's backs. What do you mean by not the best people? Come on man, you know my past. He muttered. I want to hear your thoughts on your past. Reports only show half the story after all. Right while we were pickpockets, we'd steal food, candy, wallets, anything we could to keep ourselves alive when we weren't forced into foster homes. He ran a hand through his hair, as we grew up we started lifting cars, I stayed out of that for the most part, but I know Jin and Saber would do it every now, and then when times were hard. Did you keep in contact with your friends when you entered UA? 
Not really, he sighed. We got separated after someone called the cops about us squatting in an abandoned building. You'd think they'd have better things to do than to fuck with us, but anyways I didn't see most of them until the mall accident. I saw Jin at the USJ, but you know about that. How did you feel when you saw Jin? I felt relieved, Izuku said honestly, and scared. Worried, we hadn't seen each other in three years. And the first time we meet up is when he's raiding my high school I was half convinced he'd just attacked me but then he had my back. Helped us drive the invaders off. Do you think, had things been different, you might have been with Jin attacking the USJ? The thought crossed my mind but I think if we had stuck together, I would have been able to convince him that raiding UA was fucking stupid. MHMM what caused the fallout other than the police raid? The Jones family. He muttered, he got out with my help, he didn't come back. Tell me about the Joneses, what were they like? Izuku tensed, looking away from the older man. They were assholes, what else is there to say he muttered quietly. What did they treat you like? Like shit, can we not talk about this Izuku snapped, making hound dog raise an eye. Izuku sighed and leaned back. I'm sorry, it's just I don't like talking about that time. He grumbled, keeping his eyes averted. I understand, but you may need to talk about it to get to the root of the problem. The root of the problem is that I lost control and that it won't happen again. Izuku said firmly, the Joneses are in jail. They don't exist for all I care, neither does that time. At that moment, Hound Dog's watch began to beep. That's the hour, he said with a sigh. I want to see you again when you return from the summer camp. While I can agree that another episode is not likely to occur, I want us to touch base before I say for sure. Izuku sighed, alright, thanks Hound Dog. Please, call me Anui. All right, he said, walking out and heading down the hall, unaware of a pair of eyes watching him as he went. The next day, Kaminari slowly walked towards the charter buses that would take them to the summer camp, guilt weighing heavily on his mind. He should have known better than to go snooping on one of his classmates, but he had listened to Maita and he was sure whatever he heard Izuku yelling about wasn't something they should be overhearing. So he steeled his nerves as he walked towards Izuku, who was happily laughing with Kirishima while Bakugo steamed over whatever they were laughing at him for. H. Hey Midoriya Kaminari called, making the fire user turn around. Can I talk to you real quick? Yeah sure, he said happily, walking a little ways away with his friend. What's up? Two wanted to apologize. Kaminari sighed. It well, me and mine after you left, we kinda followed you. Izuku's smile disappeared, what he asked, a dangerous edge creeping into his voice. We thought you were going to go meet Yui, Kaminari whispered quickly. We didn't think you were going to go see Hound Dog. Seriously freaked me out hearing you yell. You heard Izuku asked, his voice rising slightly. Yes no we only heard yelling. No details I promise suddenly Kaminari was being shoved up against the bus, Izuku gripping the front of his shirt. Why the fuck are you following me in the first place Izuku growled, his hands steaming slightly. I don't give a fuck if you thought I was going to see Yui or not. I'm sorry Kaminari struggled to say, feeling genuine fear as Izuku brought a fist back. Suddenly Bakugo and Kirishima were grabbing Izuku, pulling him away from Kaminari. Deku calm down idiot Bakugo roared. Yeah man chill Kirishima added. Get off me Izuku snapped, pushing them away as their other classmates ran over. Midoriya why are you threatening Kaminari that is uncouth and not befitting a UA student Ida shouted. And I know it's fine. Kaminari said quickly, I kinda deserve it. What do you mean you deserve it? Jiru asked pointedly, crossing her arms as she leveled a glare at Kaminari. Midoriya almost threw a fireball in your face. Me and Mina followed him yesterday, Kaminari said, deciding that coming clean was the best thing to do, secretly, and we saw something we weren't supposed to. Private business of his I really am sorry Midoriya. He said again, half pleading with the angry boy. What's going on? Mina asked as he walked up, feeling a chill run down his spine as everyone turned to glare at him. Okay he muttered, walking up to Midoriya. So, how was your talk with Hound Dog? Izuku immediately bristled, his hands steaming once more, but Kaminari beat him to the punch as he suddenly pounced on Minda and began stomping on the boy. You can't just be that insensitive dude he could get us in serious trouble for eavesdropping and I wouldn't blame him if he did Kaminari snapped, moving away when Yuraka grabbed his arm and pulled. Kaminari don't it was wrong what you tooted but you can't resort to violence eep Yuraka squealed and jumped away as Minda brushed his hand against her butt, looking slightly out of it. You shitty pervert Bakugo roared as he began stomping on Maita. What's going on here Aizawa demanded to know as he walked up, making everyone freeze. Well he asked pointedly when no one said anything. Maina touched Yuraka's butt and Bakugo corrected him. Izuku said with a shrug, everyone staring at the boy in shock. All traces of anger were gone, and the boy simply looked tired. Aizawa turned his glare to Maita, you just made your training time that much worse. He growled, you'll be sitting up front with me. B but Maina started, only to shrink when Aizawa's scarf began to float everyone on the bus. Aizawa ordered, watching them all as they began to load the bus, suspiciously subdued. Izuku man, hey let me Kaminari started, only to stop when Izuku held a hand up, pausing on the steps. Just just give me a bit to cool down, he muttered, not looking at Kaminari, because I'm about five seconds from roasting someone. Kaminari gulped and nodded, watching the other teen walk away as Jiru nudged him. Way to mess up dunce, she said. 
Yeah, I know. An hour later, Bakugo looked around him, feeling uncharacteristically antsy at the heavy silence that had settled over the bus. Any good humor anyone had before loading the bus was gone. Izuku was glaring out the window, and all of his friends were sitting in an awkward silence, no one knowing what to say to the boy about what Kaminari and Minda had said. Kaminari was sitting in the back of the bus, likewise staring out the window miserably with Jiru giving him concerned glances every now. And then, Bakugo stiffened as Yuraka let out a tired sigh. The gravity user was staring out the window, a sad frown upon her face. Bakugo began to reach out to her, then hesitated, pulling back as he glared down in his lap. This is really starting to piss me off. He thought angrily to himself, stupid shitty Deku trying to kill shitty Pikachu, what the hell am I supposed to do? With a groan he pulled a piece of paper out, jotting something down real quick, can't make things any more awkward. He muttered, catching Yuraka's attention. What was that Bakugo Yuraka asked curiously? Here. He snapped, handing her the now folded slip of paper. Read it, or don't. Whatever. Yumike Yuraka muttered, taking the paper and unfolding it. Roses are red, violets are blue, I think you're cute and I hope you think I am too. Yuraka trailed off, a steam puffing out of her ears as all the girls crowded around her. Oh my gosh that's so romantic Mina gushed alongside Toru as Momo looked at the note. His handwriting is really atrocious. The heiress muttered as Jiru nudged Bakugo. You couldn't do anything less cheesy she asked, making Bakugo growl. Stupid shitty Deku, making everything so awkward, stupid me for thinking now would be as good a time as any to try. So fucking stupid he stopped his internal monologue as the paper was placed back in his hands, making him look at Yuraka, who was still blushing furiously, as she motioned to the paper. Bakugo raised the paper up and read out loud, Hey fuckface wanna suck face he trailed off, slowly crumpling the paper up as he stared straight ahead. Then his hand shot out and grasped Yuraka, making her entire face light up a bright red as their classmates began to wolf whistle and cheer the newly forged couple on. Hell yeah Bakugo so manly Kirishima shouted as Izuku laughed. Dude was that impromptu Izuku asked as. He nudged his friend, you couldn't do better than a cliché. Shut up nerd I thought she was going to reject me Bakugo roared, stiffening up when Yuraka leaned into him, giving his hand a soft squeeze and making him smile softly. They're so precious. Twas beauty that killed the beast. Bakuchako is a go. All of you shut up. With the tension eased, the rest of the drive went along smoothie, with jokes and laughter all around until finally, four hours later, they pulled over at a small rest stop on the side of a mountain, only a few meters of extra dirt allowing them to stretch their legs. Where's the bathroom? Mina asked urgently as he danced from one foot to the other, while Izuku looked out over the guardrail. Eyes narrowed as his ears pricked up. Can you hear it? Izuku asked Bakugo as the explosion user walked over, hand going up to put a hearing aid in. You know my hearing's for shit. Bakugo said gruffly, what is it? I'm not sure, something big's moving out there but he trailed off as another car pulled up. This one depositing two familiar faces. Locked on with a sparkling gaze. Stingingly cute and cat-like. The wild wild pussycats. Holy shit they got the wild wild pussycats. Izuku breathed, everyone stunned by the fanboy-like reaction from the usually cool facade he wore. I met them at a civic center event back when I was nine they've been a top-tier hero team for he was silenced by an oversized paw grabbing onto his face, claws pricking his flesh. Don't you finish that sentence boy pixie bob hissed, I'm 18 at heart. She's in denial Kaminari and Kirishima whispered to each other as Izuku pushed her off, still looking slightly starstruck as he apologized. So, what are they doing here Sato asked as Aizawa sighed. They are here to help you all train your quirk. This entire valley is owned and operated by their team, which means. Which means you'll be able to use your quirks as much as you want Mandalay said, stepping forward, which you'll be needing if you want to get through the forest of monsters. Get through. The forest of monsters. Let's get back on the bus. Bad idea. Izuku said, diving over the rail a split second before the cliffside practically exploded, depositing everyone else down into the forest below. Izuku landed painfully on his back, the air getting driven out of his lungs and leaving him gasping on the ground, as Bakugo landed beside him. You idiot. He growled as Izuku finally took a deep breath. Better than getting caught in a rock slide. He wheezed as Bakugo helped him up. A rumbling in the ground had both turning towards the thick trees, we got incoming Kirishima shouted, activating his quirk as a large rock monster sent Minda flying back. Finally, Izuku growled, fist smoking, a little anger management therapy. Later that evening, Izuku staggered into the clearing alongside his classmates, his hands and forearms covered in minor burns as well as his pant legs being tattered, burnt ruins, alongside him. The rest of his class looked just as ragged, with Bakugo doing his best not to show the pain he was feeling in his arm, and Todoroki suffering from minute frostbite, as well as minor burns. You said it would take us three hours Hagakure huffed out, leaning on Mina as they approached. Oh, well, it would have taken us three hours. Mandalay said with a laugh. You still got here a lot earlier than we thought you would Pixie Bob gushed. You were all great especially you three. Izuku tensed as the woman began gushing over them, doing his best to ignore her as he looked to a small child standing behind Mandalay. So, who's the kid he asked. 
Oh, that's my nephew. He's staying with us for a bit. Kota, come say hi. Izuku stepped forward as Kota did the same. Nice to meet you. I'm Izuku Midoriya. He said holding his hand out, eyes narrowing as the kid tried to punch him in the scrotum. His reflexes saved him from the devastating. Blow, he added a bit of heat to his hand, making Kota squirm a bit. Usually you shake hands, not punch people in the dick. Izuku said dryly as Kota yanked Izuku out of his grasp, blowing on his hand as he glared at the fire user. I don't want to hang out with stupid wannabe heroes he snarled as he turned and stomped away. What a lovely child. Izuku drawled as Ida walked over. You shouldn't have used your quirk like that Midoriya what if you had hurt him he reprimanded. Then he'd learn not to punch people in the balls. Izuku said pointedly while Mandalay sighed. He's right, Kota could have been nicer to you all but that's not important right now. I'm sure you're all hungry. Ah now this is what the doctor ordered Kaminari side as he sank into the hot springs alongside the other boys, save for Midoriya who was taking a cold shower, stating he couldn't handle the hot springs after using his flames all day. What do you think we'll be looking forward to tomorrow? If today was any kind of indication, we will be hard-pressed and pushed to our limit Ida said, moving his arm robotically, so we should relax as long as we can. And you know how we can do that Mina asked, a perverted smile on his visage as he looked up at the large wall that divided the boys from the girls. Dude, no. Kaminari sighed. How dare you even suggest it Ida exclaimed as everyone else shook their heads at the purple-headed boy. You cowards I won't wait these are my best years Mina shouted as he reached up to pull off one of his balls, only for a rough hand to grab his neck. You already got three people pissed at you, but Hugo growled into Minda's ear, you sure you wanna push your luck? And Ino Minda stuttered out. Good, you even look at that wall again and I'll blast you. Kota watched them from the top of the wall, sighing when he sees Bakugo keep Minda from climbing the wall. Guess I'm done here. He grumbled, climbing down and exiting the springs through the boys' locker room, stopping as he sees Izuku step out of the shower with a towel tied around his waist. The younger boy's eyes widened at seeing the scars and brands that covered Izuku's body. Izuku froze as he noticed Kota, then walked past the boy to his designated locker, pulling a shirt out and putting it on. Isn't it past your bedtime runt he muttered. W what happened Kota asked quietly. None of your business, that's what happened. Izuku said gruffly. B but those look bad shouldn't we tell Mandalay? It's none of your fucking business. Kid, so drop it. Izuku snapped, making Kota flinch back. Izuku sighed, and forced himself to calm down. It's not something I like talking about kid, he muttered, so leave it. Kota hesitated, then nodded, walking out of the locker room as Izuku got changed. He was curious. Izuku looked up, grimacing as Shoto walked towards him, as was I when I saw them. At least you had the good sense not to push it. Izuku muttered, leaning back against the lockers as Shoto began to change. True, Shoto said, looking to his friend, but I can't force someone to face their past, not like you can. Aizawa watched his students as they went through the training that the pussy cats had assigned them. Don't stop now, Ishida. He said as he looked at the pink-skinned girl who was whimpering while cradling her acid-burned hands. I know it hurts but you have to power through. Yes sir, she shouted as she began spraying more acid onto the wall. Ida you're slowing down pick up the pace he called over to the class rep, who let out a tortured scream as he picked up the pace. A loud boom echoed through the clearing making everyone stop. It was different than Bakugo's high-yield explosives, but the spiky-haired boy was looking around in confusion as well. Another boom filled the air and they all looked over to a large crumbling rock pyre, stained with soot and holes ranging. From golf ball size to the size of a minivan, standing before that pyre was Izuku, who was lying flat on his back, breathing heavily as he hugged his scorched hands to his chest. Midori Aizawa called worriedly, speedwalking towards his pseudo-son who forced himself to his feet as he arrived, are you alright? Ithan Kivari had me limit. He huffed out, going through his forms once more and jabbing his right arm out, intent on creating lightning, only for the attempt to literally explode in his face, sending him tumbling back as he hissed in pain. Aizawa looked about, then nodded, 15 minute break he called, making many collapse where they stood. You good Midori Ada panted out as he limped over to his friend practically guzzling down juice as Izuku rolled his shoulders. My form only works if I'm at peace with my body and mind. He muttered, wiping his face with a nearby towel, and trying to force it when I'm physically exhausted makes it fail more often than not. We have been at this for most of the day, Ada said with a nod. How many can you do before it fails? About eight, he sighed. Then I usually fail once or twice, before being able to get another eight. Towards the end all I got was failures. It's still better progress than what you were able to do at the start of the year. Ada praised, at the entrance exam you were only able to use your attack once before falling unconscious. Yeah but it's still not enough. He forced himself to stand up, looking around. Everyone else was still able to go for longer I need to up the ante. And that's what we're here to do Ada exclaimed, clasping his shoulder I'm positive that you'll be able to get stronger. Gee, thanks Ada you got any more of those juice pouches I could really go for one. I'll do you one better he proclaimed, holding out a bottle of water, better for you in the long run. Right? Izuku chuckled, guzzling down the water as Aizawa stepped forward. All right breaks over, you all have a few more hours until we're done don't waste it. Back to the grind, Izuku said, handing the water back to Ida. Indeed good luck Midoriya Ida, shouted as he took off at breakneck speed. 
Izuku took a calming breath, then began going through his kata, smirking when electricity began crackling at the tips of his fingers, let's try this again. Izuku slowly stumbled out, of the forest, covered in black soot. Izuku, Yui called, working alongside the other, students as they tried to make a passable meal, are you barely coming back from training? Had to make up for earlier. Izuku huffed out as he settled heavily on one of the picnic tables, what's Bakugo making? Why are you so sure it's that one a brat who's cooking Monoma shouted angrily? Because he's very particular about his food, Izuku deadpanned, then jabbed a thumb over to where Achako and Bakugo were working diligently alongside Sato and Suyu, also I can see them cooking while you're delegated to firewood gathering. Monoma seemed to deflate, having had the wind taken from his sails as Izuku forced himself to stand up, let's go see if we can help Yui. MHMM. Get away from my kitchen pyro. Bakugo snarled as Izuku walked over. Come on, just came to see if I could help. Izuku said sheepishly, you're the only asshole I know that can burn water, go start some more fires so we can cook more you idiot. Sheesh fine, asshole. Izuku sighed while Yui went to help Yuraka cut up some vegetables, glorified stove, coming through. Izuku drawled, helping Todoroki start up several fire pits. Soon the food was ready and everyone was serving themselves a plate. Good as always. Izuku mumbled over a mouthful of spicy curry. Happily eating alongside Yui as Bakugo wolfed down his own meal beside Yuraka. I'm always number one in everything I do don't forget that shitty Deku Bakugo snarled. Who was it that beat you in the entrance exam and the sports festival Izuku wondered out loud with an impish grin. You got lucky. The table laughed at Bakugo's ranting, talking happily without a care in the world. Kota Kota where are you Mandalay shouted, sighing as she turned back to go inside. I wish I knew where that kid gets to. She muttered. Izuku looked behind him, nuding Yui slightly, making her look behind them to see Kota walking away into the forest. Stupid wannabes, Kota grumbled, kicking a rock off the cliffside as he glared at the forest. Stupid pussycats. Stupid heroes. Lot of stupid people around, huh? Kota jumped and whirled around, surprised to see Izuku and Yui walking towards him. Yui was carrying a plate full of curry, offering it to Kota quietly as Izuku looked out over the forest. Hum, nice place, he said thoughtfully. Good view, remote, not many people know about it. It's a great hiding spot. What are you doing here? Kota asked angrily, pointedly ignoring Yui who simply shrugged and set the plate down on the ground before walking over to stand beside Izuku, smiling softly when he put his arm around her. Leave now. Not yet kid, Izuku said with a yawn, it's been a stressful few days, and I've been wanting to kick back and relax with my girlfriend, just act like we're not here. But this is my secret hiding spot Kota snapped, you need to leave, now. MMMM dot don't think so. Izuku drawled as he and Yui settled on the cliff, feet dangling off. Kota growled, then gave a mocking smirk, why would you even want to be a hero anyways he asked snidely, nothing but pumped up glory hounds, wanting nothing but fame. That's not why I want to become a hero. Izuku said, looking back at Kota. Well why do you want to be a hero? Kota asked, his anger melting away into curiosity. So no one else has to go through what I have. Kota froze at that, remembering all of the scars he had seen on the older boy. Slowly he stepped back, yeah well you're still stupid. He snapped, picking up the plate of curry and stomping down the hillside. Kids, Izuku sighed, looking back out into the forest. Why did you say that to him? Yui asked inquisitively. Izuku pondered his words for a moment. Yesterday the little shit saw something he shouldn't have, he began. Some scars from my childhood that I don't usually let anyone see asked about them and I told him to go to bed. Didn't want to talk about it you know. But now I'm thinking I may need to. Yui stared at him, despite their relationship, she didn't know much about her boyfriend, and what little she did know was tinted with pain and anguish for him, so she didn't push for more information. Instead, she wrapped her arms around him, smiling when he seemed to relax into her, resting his on top of hers as he wrapped his own arm around her, the two content to simply pass the time in each other's company. The next day saw Izuku collapse in a puddle of his own sweat as Aizawa called an end for the day's training. His arms were stinging and cramped from trying to forcefully produce lightning. Come on idiot, Bakugo growled as he walked towards him, likewise looking pained from his own torturous training. He helped Izuku to his feet and the two began walking back towards the lodge, you good. Fine, Izuku sighed as they headed down the trail with the rest of their classmates. My arms feel like they're about to fall off, but other than that, just fine. Quit your bitchin'. Bakugo sneered, unless you want me to snatch that number one spot while you're moaning. You're about as close to that number one spot as mine is to touching Yamomo's boobs. Izuku scoffed, making several around him laugh while said boy began to gripe and sob. Just you wait shitty Deku, Bakugo growled as they reached the picnic area, both collapsing against one of the nearby trees. I'm gonna be number one while you're sitting at home, overweight and lazy. I'll be uncle if that's the case I'm completely fine with this. Izuku muttered, laying his head back, you think I'll be able to make his tea by then? You better, Bakugo huffed, otherwise, why am I keeping you around? Because I'm funny and my ass is to die for. Bakugo snorted, laughing as Izuku let out a few weak chuckles before he forced himself to his feet. Come on, let's go help with cooking. 
Yeah, yeah, whatever. After a filling meal both classes were once again in the beast's forest. The sun had set a few hours before, leaving the forest eerily silent. Are you ready kids Pixie Bob called out as they all gathered up, because we're gonna be conducting a test of courage. Test of courage Yuraka wondered aloud as she stuck close to Bekugo. Yes, Izuku listened with half an ear as Pixie Bob explained the test of courage and paired them all up. Absent-mindedly noting the students who were dragged away by Aizawa for supplementary classes, he barely realized they left as he looked off to the tree line. Eyes narrowed. What's wrong Ada asked, walking up to his friend. I don't know I feel like something's wrong he sniffed the air, immediately bristling when he did, I smell fire. What Mandalay asked, overhearing the fire user. Something's burning out there. Izuku said, watching as smoke began to rise into the sky, alongside blue embers, oh shit. We need to get everyone back Tiger ordered. Pixie Bob see if you can't smother that fire. On it. Freck. Pixie Bob Mandalay shouted as the woman was thrown harshly to the ground, head bleeding from the sneak attack. Well, if it isn't the wild wild pussycats. Magni sneered as she walked out of the woods, spinner at her side. The false heroes shall know death today the lizard man declared, putting a hand on his katana. Everyone returned to the camp now. As everyone else took off, Izuku hesitated, looking between the fire and the cliff overlooking the forest. Mandalay I know where Koda is he shouted, making the hero Sparrow look at him in shock. Go she commanded and Izuku instantly fired off into the sky. Please be alright, he thought to himself as he flew through the air. Koda stared in shock and fear as muscular slowly lumbered towards him. That's a cool hat kid, wanna switch hate this fucking mask. The man sneered as he tossed said mask to the ground, it's all they had and they told me to suck it up, but that hat. Uriah were a villain. Koda interrupted, Uriah were the one who killed the water hose heroes. Oh yeah I did do that he laughed cruelly, what losers. Yeah you killed them, they were my parents and you killed them Koda exclaimed, hot tears trailing down his cheeks. Those idiots were your parents well kid, it wasn't personal, you see, I like killing people, and your parents got in the way so I killed them he pointed at his fake eye, I don't even care that they did this to me, kinda respected them for it, but you get in my way, you dehe, how about I finish what I started a kid after all, it's not every day I get to say that I killed an entire family. Koda closed his eyes tightly as muscular lunged for him, opening them again as he heard the man scream in pain. Fire had engulfed the man completely, forcing him to stumble back in shock as he glared at the newcomer. Koda, run to the lodge I'll cover you Izuku shouted at the kid, still in a defensive stance in front of him, fists clenched and frame shaking from the amount of rage that filled him. Go. You think you're some kind of hero kid muscular snarled as his cloak tore apart to reveal grotesque muscle fibers covering his skin. The burned section slowly tearing apart until nothing but pure healthy muscle was left. Hey, you're that Midoriya kid Shigaraki wanted you alive, you and that Bakugo brat, wants you unharmed. Which means I don't have to worry about you going all out Izuku snarled as he sent several fireballs straight for muscular, who easily dodged. If you think that'll save you then you're a bigger idiot than that kid's parents he laughed as he shot forward, fist driving into the ground where Izuku had been standing. The fire user having used his flames to propel himself into the sky and coming down with a heated axle kick that forced muscular to evade. Go KOTA Izuku snarled out at the boy who was still frozen in fear, watching as the teen he had ridiculed and tried to hurt fought against his parents' killers. All you got is speed your friggin' wimp muscular laughed as he tried and failed to hit Izuku. The martial artist easily dancing around his attacks and practically bathing him in golden flames. Even your fire is weak. Shit, Izuku thought as he jumped back once more, landing a few feet in front of the still frozen Koda. Training really took it out of me today. I can't get my fire hot enough, and if I push it I'll pass out. He dodged again and let out a slight gasp as his foot slipped on the rock face of the cliff. End of the line hothead muscular shouted as he drove his fist into Izuku's stomach, sending him tumbling into the side of the mountain as muscular pounced, driving his fists over and over into the fire user. Shame as Higaraki want you and that Bakugo brat relatively unharmed, but that doesn't mean I can't rough you up. Izuku let out a pained gasp as he felt a couple of his ribs collapse under muscular's barrage. I failed. He thought absent-mindedly as he fell to his knees, glaring at muscular as the man brought his fist back. Weakling, the man sneered, ready to deliver the final blow, only to stop in confusion as a stream of cold water hit his back. Leave him alone Koda shouted as he continued to pour water on the man, who began laughing at the boy's pitiful attempt at an attack. You really don't know how to quit, just like your parents. Muscular scoffed, turning towards Koda. You did nothing but get me a little wet. He did enough. Muscular quickly turned back to face Izuku, screaming in pain as fire washed over him, burning muscle away with its intensity as Izuku jumped back to his feet. Soaked from Koda's surprise attack, the injured boy moving fluidly through several stances as he began sending torrents of fire at Muscular, burning the man and forcing him back towards the cliff. You won't hurt him he roared as his arms quickly went through a familiar sequence. A scream tore from his throat as pure lightning flew from his fingertips, tearing through Muscular's chest and sending him tumbling down the mountainside as thunder roared through the forest. Izuku once again fell to his knees, breathing heavily as his hand shakily came up to cradle his ribs. Koda, are you okay? He gasped out as he forced himself back to his feet, looking at the boy in concern. 
You saved me even though he almost killed you, he sniffled. Even after all those mean things I said to you, he stopped as a calloused hand ruffled his hair. Knocking his hat off his head, he looked up to find Izuku squatting in front of him, giving him a friendly smile. Don't worry about it, kid, he said softly. This is what heroes Dono I have a favor to ask. I usually have a better tolerance to heat. But the training from the last few days have taken its toll. Can you hit me with that water cannon of yours? Ozure. Izuku let out a slightly strangled sigh as the cold water washed over him, his muscles loosening as his body cooled down. That'll do it. He sighed, standing back up. Come on, I'll get you back to the lodge, but then I need to get back out there. Be but your injured Kota exclaimed as Izuku picked the boy up and helped him settle on his back. You should stay at the lodge and recover. I stay at the lodge then I put everyone in danger. Izuku said as he began running down the trail. They're looking for me and Bakugo. Besides, I'm about the only one who can put that fire out quickly. From there the two were silent. Izuku's labored breathing the only sound they had as he dodged between the trees. Izuku. Oh thank Agni. Izuku sighed as Aizawa broke through the foliage, looking at his adopted son in shock. The boy's shirt was gone, and his chest was black and blue from the hits he had taken from muscular. Koda was attacked by a villain muscular. I took him down but I don't know what shape he's in. Fell off the cliff face during our fight. We need to relay what information I have to Mandalay let everyone know that these villains are looking for me and Bakugo. Slow down son, Aizawa said as calmly as he could, worrying over the boy's injuries as he handed Koda off, let's get you back to the lodge. Izuku shook his head and stepped back, these assholes are looking for me pops, Izuku said, looking towards the blue fire that was casting an eerie glow into the night, and if I know who's behind those flames, then I know we don't want him anywhere near the lodge, I can stop those flames and at the very least find some of the other students, but returning to the lodge will only put those who are already safe in danger. Aizawa hesitated, then nodded, okay, but give Mandalay a message from me, tell her to let the other students know that Erasure Head has given them permission to fight back. Izuku gave a slightly bloody grin to his surrogate father, you can count on me dad, he said before taking off into the forest. Be careful son Aizawa muttered before turning and running back towards the lodge. Is he gonna be okay Koda asked quietly as he ran. He's tough, I have faith that he'll get through this, Aizawa said resolutely. I made fun of him to hurt him I didn't get to say sorry. You'll see him again, Aizawa said, and when you do, try to emphasize that sorry. Izuku didn't stop running, even as he came bursting into the clearing he had last seen Mandalay. And Tiger in, he let out a war cry as he jumped through the foliage, flying flame kick sending Spinner tumbling across the ground as he continued running. Mandalay he shouted as he went, Koda's safe. Oh thank god. Mandalay breathed out in relief, get back to the lodge. I can Izuku called as he neared the edge of the clearing. I'm being targeted by the villains so as Bakugo I can't go back until we can all regroup and tell the remaining students that Erasure Head gives them permission to use their quirks to fight back. Wait stop Mandalay tried, but Izuku was already back in the trees, pumping his legs as fast as they could go until he was in the middle of the blue blaze. He came to a stop, taking deep breaths as he focused on his power. The flames around him began to grow bigger and bigger with each breath, until he took one last big breath, and slowly released it, hands pushing down from his shoulders and bringing the flames around him down until they petered out, leaving him with only the light of the full moon overhead. Well, well, well. That familiar drawl sent a cold shiver down his spine. Slowly, Izuku turned back around eyes narrowed as Dabai came strolling out of the forest, smirking at the young fire user as he came to a stop a few meters from him. Gotta say, I'm surprised you were able to stop my fire. I'm full of surprises. Izuku growled, his arms loose at his side as he slowly began pacing around Dabai, the older man mirroring his movements. I'm sure you are, Dabai chuckled, you were always resourceful, even when you were following my every command. You couldn't just stick with my plans, no, you had to improvise, adapt, bring the situation around to benefit you. He stopped pacing as Izuku stopped. You even took that fighting style and made it your own but you're not the only one who knows it. He laughed at Izuku's surprised stare, rolling his shoulders as he continued. That's right, I found my own master, who taught me the ways of the firebenders of the Caldera Syndicate, and by the rights given to us by Agni themselves, I challenge you to an Agni Kai. Izuku felt his blood freeze at Dabai's exclamation. He knew what an Agni Kai was, Iro had taught him much about the way of the firebenders, but never in his life did he think anyone would challenge him to one. He could back down, refuse and simply attack outright and hope one of his friends was nearby to see the fire. However, what are your terms Izuku asked grimly, crossing his arms. Dabi smirked and stepped forward, shrugging off his coat and pulling his shirt off, revealing defined muscles and deep burn scars, fire only. No lightning since I can't summon it and I don't think I'm too off the mark in saying that what you shot off up there on the cliff is probably all you can manage tonight. His smirk turned into a grin at Izuku's scowl. No killing blows. For either of us, winner takes custody of the loser. Izuku steeled his nerves and nodded. I agree. He said, pulling his own shirt off. You've gotten some new scars since last I saw you. Dabai said, his voice light but his eyes burning in fury. Izuku said nothing, slowly dropping into a defensive stance, ready when you are. The clearing was silent, neither combatant made a move as clouds slowly rolled away to reveal the moon. 
As the moon lit the clearing up, Dabai shot forward, fists coming forward and sending a wave of hot flames at Izuku, who easily batted them away and jumped into the sky, coming down with a fiery axle kick that Dabai easily avoided. The two firebenders unleashed a torrent of flames from their fists at point-blank range, using the cover to disengage. Well, look at how far you've come. Dabai praised him. I thought you wanted to fight. Izuku snarled as he sent another fireball at Dabai. Bakugo roared as he set off another powerful explosion against Moonfish, dodging its teeth as he landed beside Todoroki. Out of my way loser he snarled as he unleashed another explosion. Bakugo we need to run Todoroki called as he twisted his foot and erected an ice wall a mere second before elongated teeth stabbed through it. Then run I'm not going until this asshole is extra crispy Bakugo snapped, dodging a few more attacks as he spoke. The villains are after you we need to get you back to the lodge. That just means these losers follow us back you idiot Bakugo growled as he slid behind Todoroki's ice wall. Either we take him out beforehand or we endanger everyone. I can't fight properly with Tsuburaba here. Todoroki sighed, with how this guy is I won't be able to protect him should he shift focus. Boom. Todoroki and Bakugo tensed, looking towards the forest as the sound of shattering trees filled the air. Get ready Bakugo snapped as Moonfish turned towards the sound, grinning when an out-of-control dark shadow came exploding out of the forest chasing a bloodied up shoji. Bakugo Todoroki give us some light shoji shouted. Todoroki began raising his hand, ready to call forth his flames, but stopped when Bakugo held a hand up. Wait. He ordered as Moonfish charged at Dark Shadow, only to be easily crushed by the rampaging quirk. Now. A stun grenade and a hot flash of fire from the two had Dark Shadow back under control, with Takoyami doing his best to steady his breathing. We were a bad match once again Birdbrain. Bakugo said gruffly as Shoji checked over his friend. My thanks, Bakugo, Todoroki. Takoyami muttered, I shudder to think what would have happened had you two not been here. HMPH, whatever. Bakugo growled, looking to where Moonfish was, this asshole's not getting up anytime soon. He said with a cruel chuckle. Which means we can head back to the lodge Todoroki began. No, Bakugo said gruffly, standing back up. Deku's still out here somewhere, and I'm not gonna leave his ass out here undefended. The other three boys looked at each other in worry, they had all heard Mandalay's last message, how Bakugo was a target and they were allowed to use their quirks, but she had also told them about Midoriya. He's injured and attempting to stop the fire, anyone who finds him is to try and get him back to the lodge immediately. I can see his flames in the distance, Bakugo continued on, making the others look at him. He's fighting, he needs our help you losers can go back to the lodge, I'm going to help him. We can't let you go alone, Todoroki said, stepping forward, but Tsuburaba's injured. As Amai Choji said, indicating his bleeding tentacle, I can take him back to the lodge, with Takoyami as well. I agree, I would only be a detriment to you in your quest, Takoyami said gravely. You two stay safe, Todoroki said as he and Bakugo took off into the forest. If we're lucky, we'll reach them by the time Midoriya beats whoever he's fighting. Bakugo narrowed his eyes at the flashes of blue and yellow flames that lit up the horizon, we can only hope. He muttered as they burst back out onto the trail. Bakugo faltered for a second. Their path had lead them straight to Yuraka and Sui, who were currently struggling against some blonde bitch. Bakugo saw red when the bitch plunged a needle in Yuraka's leg. Dai roared as he unleashed a powerful explosion at the girl, who easily dodged his attack as well as Todoroki's ice. Yuraka are you alright he asked, standing over her protectively as he glared at their adversary. Fine, she muttered, quickly tearing her sleeve off her jacket and tying it around the puncture wound. She's skilled with that knife in her hands. Stay down, we'll handle stabby bitch. Awa, is this your boyfriend? Toga giggled crazily. He's kinda cute. Fuck off, Bakugo roared, charging at Toga, growling in frustration when she easily weaved around him and fell back deeper into the forest. There's too many of you now how boring, she grumbled as she disappeared into the woods. Fucking psycho come back here so I can kill you Bakugo snarled, barely being held back by Yuraka. Are you alright Sutodoroki asked in concern as Bakugo turned and checked Yuraka over, growling at the puncture wound. She cut my tongue, but other than that I'm fine. Su said with a sigh, looking to the sky as more fire erupted into the night. Midori is having one hell of a fight isn't he? We're on our way to help him. Todoroki said firmly. Let us come too, Yuraka said. There's strength in numbers. Are you sure that's wise Todoroki asked. You're injured. If she says she's fine then she's fine. Bakugo said gruffly, giving Yuraka's hand a comforting squeeze as he turned back around. We can't delay anymore we need to get to Deku. With that the four teens took off into the forest, the heat from Izuku's battle washing over them as they neared the clearing. D.K.U. Bakugo shouted as they burst into the clearing. The grass had been scorched away, and the trees around them had been reduced to blackened husks. Izuku was a flurry of movement, body moving through every kata faster than Bakugo could keep track as he sent wave after wave of fire at Dabai, who batted them away as he pressed the advantage. Stay back Izuku shouted as swept Dabai's legs out from underneath him. Jumping back as Dabai easily regained his feet and tried to deliver a powerful fireball to Izuku's head. Bakugo froze, bullshit he snarled, we're here to help. You can't interrupt an Agni Kai Bakugo Izuku snapped as he opened his mouth, 
and unleashed a torrent of flames, illuminating the clearing. Yuraka and Suyu gasped at the scars and brands on the boy's body, while Bakugo clenched his fist, only Todoroki was unfazed. Twice, what do you want on it? Watch out Todoroki shouted as he summoned his ice, barely able to absorb more blue flames that were directed at the still-stunned Yuraka, steam filling the air as another Dabai came charging into the fight, twice running in after him. Dai Bakugo snarled, charging the clone Dabai, only to jump away as Toga tried to sink her knife into his side. So close she whined, I wanna see you bleed she cackled as she attacked Bakugo again, the explosion teen doing his best to evade the crazy girl's attacks. If you harm them I swear Izuku started as he punched Dabai with a flaming fist. They should have stayed out of our way Dabai snarled as he kicked Izuku in the chest, sending him tumbling through one of the burnt trees as Dabai recalled the Namu, preparing himself as Izuku came charging back out with the feral roar. Meanwhile Tsuyu, Yuraka and Todoroki were dealing with Twice and the clone Dabai, with Yuraka and Tsuyu doing what they could to try and capture Twice, while Todoroki's ice and fire went up against Dabai's firebending. The half-and-half -half teen was having a hard time of it, the clone was just as fast and powerful as the real Dabai, and his usual method of overwhelming power paled in comparison to Dabai's precise fighting style. It's like trying to fight Midoriya. Todoroki growled as he jumped away from the clone, hand slamming into the ground and sending icy spikes straight for the imposter, only for them to melt away into nothingness as Dabai opened his mouth, and roared, the flames easily melting the ice away before ducking as Toga was launched towards him, the blonde girl crying in surprise as she slammed into twice. Now I'm mad. Bakugo seethed as he stalked to Todoroki's side, his arms and chest covered in shallow cuts and deeper gashes, let's finish this fucker. B-A-K-U-G-O watch out. Bakugo didn't have the chance to even turn around as a sledgehammer slammed into him and sent him sprawling with a sickening crunch. K-A-T-S-U-K-I Yuraka screamed as she ran to his side. Todoroki quickly dodged a follow-up attack from the Namu. One of its arms had transformed into a drill, while the other an oversized sledgehammer. Todoroki didn't hesitate as he engulfed the monster in fire, only to let out a gasp as the drill burst out of the fire and shot through his shoulder. Todoroki Tsuyu cried as she jumped from tree to tree. Dabai and Toga were unconscious, but the clone Dabai was still there. I'm fine keep fighting Todoroki gritted out as he grabbed the thing's arm and encased it, breaking the appendage off before jumping back. I see spikes immediately appearing as his foot touches the ground, impaling the Namu as Tsuyu gets a good kick on the Dabai clone, turning it to brown mud. Katsuki please, Yuraka sobbed as she cradled her boyfriend's head in her arms, please don't die. Bakugo let out a groan as he slowly opened his eyes, quit crying. Damn it, he growled out, I hate to see you cry. Glad you're alright, Todoroki muttered as he staggered to their side, gritting his teeth as he cauterized his wound. That depends on your definition of fine, he muttered as he slowly pushed himself up, his right arm hanging uselessly at his side, fucker shattered my arm. We have other problems. Suyu said as two portals opened and Spinner and Magni stepped out both ready for another fight as the Namu broke through the spikes, its wounds sluggishly healing. Izuku gritted his teeth as he and Dabai, his hands were raw from burns and his vision was starting to get blurred. I'm at my limit he thought as he spared a glance back to his friends, eyes widening at the state they were in, with more enemies moving to engage them. Dabai took his momentary distraction as an opportunity, sweeping his legs out from under him and blasting him point-blank in the chest. Izuku bit back a scream as the blue flames washed over him, it was stronger and more potent than anything he had ever used. Dabai jumped back, hands at the ready as Izuku forced himself to his feet, breathing heavily as he fought through the pain, so this is the famous Kajin. Dabai sneered, you couldn't even keep up. Shut up Izuku snarled as he charged forward, swinging his fist. Dabai easily caught his arm and flipped him over his shoulder, slamming him into the ground. Izuku wrapped his legs around the man's arm and did his best to pin him that way, only to receive a powerful cross from Dabai, forcing him to let go. You can't even use your flames anymore how pathetic Dabai laughed as he loomed over Izuku as the injured student watched his friends try vainly to fight the other villains, but they were being pushed back. Bakugo was barely able to stand anymore and was relying on Todoroki's ice to keep him protected. But even Todoroki was beginning to slow down as he bled from several stab wounds. Only Yuraka and Suyu were in any kind of good health, and both were struggling to keep the two boys alive. You've lost, Akuma. Dabai sneered. Yurai were right, Izuku struggled to get out. But that doesn't mean my friends have. With the last of his strength, Izuku used his flames to blast off from the ground, vaulting over the villains and landing in front of Bakugo, and Todoroki, with a roar of exertion a massive wall of flames separated the hero students from the villains. Go Izuku commanded, his arms shaking as he fought through his pain. Go warn Ao I can't hold this for long go. Are you fucking crazy Bakugo snapped as he tried to charge forward, only for Yuraka to take away his gravity, dragging him back as Suyu helped Todoroki limp away. No we can't leave him Deku no. I'm sorry Kakin Izuku whispered as they got further and further away. Finally, Izuku dropped the flames, falling forward in a dead faint. Dabai caught him before he could hit the ground. Dabai looked down at his one-time friend, an unreadable emotion flickering through his otherwise dead eyes. We completed one objective, he said to his comrades as twice, 
and Toga slowly began to come around, we're leaving. What about the Beck Hugo boy compress asked as he finally made an appearance. He doesn't matter, Dabe scoffed. Besides, Akuma here gave the last of his strength to allow his friends to run I say we let his sacrifice carry this one time. VVVVVVVVVVW. In the clearing in front of the lodge, several emergency vehicles were parked with their lights illuminating the area like a giant beacon. Several students were huddled near the doors, talking in hushed whispers, while others were loaded onto gurneys, oxygen masks fixed over their mouths and noses. Yui helped Awais bring an unconscious Momo to the paramedic vehicle. Several officers and heroes were milling about, getting ready to go into the forest to find any other stragglers. Help we need help. Yui looked up, eyes widening as she saw Tsuyu practically dragging a half-conscious Todoroki out of the forest. Several heroes were already running over, with Yui following up from behind. We were fighting the villains, she said, shaking badly as she helped them set Todoroki on a nearby gurney. He was stabbed multiple times, I did my best to wrap the injuries but… You did great, one of the heroes said, putting a comforting hand on Suyu's shoulder, making tears fall from the girl's eyes, we got it from here. Yuraka is bringing back Hugo, she said, doing her best to keep her composure, he's injured too. As she said this, Yuraka came out, supporting a still conscious Beck Hugo, covered in blood and staring despondently down at the ground. Back Hugo. Yui called, running up to him, have you seen Izuku we haven't been able to find him she trailed off as the boy looked up. His eyes were dead, and it wasn't from the pain he was no doubt feeling. Back Hugo is Izuku. Daithi took him he whispered a moment before paramedics pushed past Yui, who slowly fell to her knees, Yuraka at her side in an instant, hugging the quiet girl as she sobbed. VVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVV
Izuku, why don't you want to go into the freezer? Iro questioned him, walking up to his side and placing a comforting hand on his shoulder. We need more meat for the special today. Stew isn't stew without beef after all. Izuku stared at the large metal box, shivering at the horrible memories. Toucan he muttered, looking away from the freezer. Iro's eyes softened. I understand, Izuku. If you are uncomfortable going into the freezer, then that is okay. But you must remember, you cannot allow fear to control your life. It shows those who hurt you that they won. Instead, you must move on, and let go of the traumas of the past, let it flow away, like leaves on the river. Izuku scoffed, walking away from a sad-eyed Iro. Hands shoved in his pockets, yeah, he'll remember that own day. Izuku slowly pushed himself up into a sitting position, releasing a puff of fire from his mouth. About the only thing he could do with the suppression cuffs on him, he forced himself to slow his breathing and released another puff of fire. It didn't warm him up completely, but it did get the feeling back in his hands. I can't escape he mumbled, slowly looking up, eyes burning red with tears and rage, but I'll be damned if I let these fuckers break me. To put this simply, we have failed. The teachers of UA all hung their heads in shame at the proclamation given by Principal Nezu. None spoke out against him, for all of them knew that he was right. We could not guarantee the safety of our students, and because of this our students were once again put into harm's way, with several having to be treated for serious bodily injury. Nezu sighed, the blame is on UA as a whole and sets a premise on what must be done so something like this never happens again. I think we should address the elephant in the room, Snipes said, before it was just guessing. But now it's clear, we have a spy in our midst. But who Midnight asked, leaning forward, there weren't many who knew where the training camp was going to be. It could have been one of the students, Cementos said, voice uncertain it wouldn't have been too hard for them to share their location once they arrived. And it's not like we don't have a prime suspect in Class 1A, a third-year teacher muttered. You're talking about Midoriya, President Mike said, glancing over to Aizawa, looking more tired and haggard than he'd ever been before, staring despondently at the table. How many times are you people gonna try and use the kid's past as a reason to get him expelled? He knew one of the villains at the USJ, and reportedly told Aizawa that he knew one of the villains behind this attack. There's no way this can be a coincidence. Midoriya has done nothing but show that he's not a villain. All Might said, standing up, he's one of the top students in his class, and has even shown the world at large that he has what it takes to be a hero. We know that another teacher began, trying to placate All Might. Then why do you continue to scrutinize him? All Might demanded to know. Why treat him like a villain when he has shown to the contrary? He's under scrutinization from several top heroes almost round the clock, Midnight added. For God's sakes Aizawa trains him. As does the Dragon of the West yet another teacher shouted. Does anyone else find it convenient the boy has a retired supervillain train him? Uncle is no supervillain yo Mike snapped, he's a tea shop owner and he's already served his time if anything you're sounding a lot like a mole, trying to make us turn on the student that was kidnapped. The table devolved into bickering, with teachers trying to talk over each other and gain control of the chaos. Then a loud crunch had everyone fall silent and look to Aizawa, the man was now on his feet, his fist embedded into the table from when he had punched it, slowly he pulled his fist out, now bloody from shards of wood, he was breathing heavily, his bloodshot eyes looking over all of the slightly concerned teachers, how dare you he whispered, his voice shaking with barely contained rage, our student gets kidnapped by villains, and you suggest he's a part of them you should be ashamed of yourselves. He was on the fast track to be a villain before UA. Aizawa's other fist slammed into the table, not breaking through. But denting the wood, he's my son and deserves to be treated for his current actions, not his past. With that Aizawa strode angrily out of the room, slamming the door behind him. Nezu sighed as he rubbed his eyes, the point is, we cannot start accusing each other, the only thing we can do is make sure our students will be taken care of. I'll be implementing several new safety measures that I've been considering for some time. I would like to go over everything with those present. The teachers got to work, none of them bringing up Izuku as a traitor again. VVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVV
He began to tell them about the tracker Momo had planted on that Namu creature, and how she had created a locator for the police to find it. I'm going to ask Momo if she'd be willing to create another one so we can go and get Midoriya ourselves. What? Everyone looked to Yui, who had finally lifted her head up to stare at Kirishima. What did you just say she asked hoarsely? I said, we can go get Midoriya ourselves, Kirishima said strongly, fighting to keep his voice below a whisper. Come on, we can't just leave him out there. But we don't have permission to use our quirks. Siro said, what good would we do? I'm saying screw permission, this is Midoriya guys, we can't. You can and you will. As one, everyone turned around to stare at Bakugo, limping towards them with the support of Yuraka. Beside them Shota was walking with his head down, his hands in his pockets. What do you mean I can and I will Kirishima growled, stalking towards Bakugo. You can't tell me you're okay with leaving Izuku out there. Of course I'm not happy you idiot. Bakugo said, his voice barely contained in a quiet snarl. I was there when we fucking failed to save him, and I hate to admit it but we can't fucking match with that blue fire bastard. But am I Doriya Kirishima started? Izuku wouldn't forgive himself if you're caught and punished, or worse killed. Yui said softly, gently cutting Kirishima off, especially after Hasu. Todoroki's shoulders shook slightly and Ada paled at the reminder. The mute's right Kirishima, Bakugo said, making Kirishima focus on the explosion user, covered in gauze with a scar carving into the right side of his face, just catching the edge of his tired, red-rimmed eyes, Deku would fuck you up just for suggesting it. And when the fighting started I was stuck in a classroom back at camp while all of you risked your lives Kirishima began, his voice subdued and shaky, I felt useless. If I can't help my friends then what kind of man am I I can't just sit on the sidelines and wait while our friend is in the grip of these villains. But if we ignore the law then we're just like the villains. Suyu said bluntly, not to mention Midoriya sacrificed himself to give us a chance to escape, we can't let that be in vain by putting ourselves in danger again. I'm sorry Kirishima, Shoto finally spoke up, still not looking up as he fought to keep his emotions in check. I know what you're feeling, believe me I do, but we do more harm than good in this situation. Kirishima's shoulders slumped, I don't like it he muttered, bowing his head. You don't have to, Bakugo said gruffly, putting a reassuring hand on his shoulder, none of us do. VVVVVVVWVW. Tsukachi strode into the briefing room, noting the amount of heavy muscle they were pulling out for this opus, with several top 10 heroes as well as notable top 50s sitting behind the seasoned SWAT officers. All Might was standing at the front awaiting him with several hero association analysts. Let's get to it, he said as he stepped up to the podium, setting his paperwork down. Our objectives have been chosen through months of police work and honest luck. He pulled out a small remote and pressed a button, making a projector turn on. The first of our targets is a bar in the older area of downtown Camino. We've had multiple sightings of League members coming and going from this location. This is where we suspect they'll be holding their captive, Izuku Midoriya. Another push of the button and pictures of the bar from various angles and a picture of Izuku. His mugshot from the JDC. They couldn't get a better picture All Might grumbled to Tsukachi. It was the only one they had other than from when he was four. He whispered back, then turned back to the briefing. The other site is one we acquired by use of a tracking device class 1AS vice president was able to get on one of the Namu creatures, leading us to building in the warehouse district. He clicked the button and the pictures changed to a map of the warehouse district, a single warehouse marked out amongst all the others. We believe this is where the majority of the creatures called Namu will be. Our attack will be a two-pronged assault on these locations. Capture is the highest priority after the safety of Izuku Midoriya. That kid saved a lot of people in Hasu, Edshot said. I think we should return the favor now. Glad we're all in agreement. Tsukachi looked towards the door, surprised to find Paku and Tatsumoto walking into the room. Both in their old hero uniforms, Tatsumoto's green and black gi a welcoming sight to many who had worked with the man before he retired. Whiplash, Zephyr, I was unaware you were assigned to this case. Tsukachi said, surprise evident in his voice. We assigned ourselves, Zephyr said with a genial smile, at the request of a mutual friend of ours. Tsukachi's eyes widened as a familiar figure walked through the door, clad in red-shaded robes and samurai-like armor was Iro Soran, the infamous dragon of the West. I renewed my provisional hero's license with the help of an old friend from China who is on his way even now, Iro said, stepping forward. Any appearance of the fat old tea shop owner was gone. In his stead stood a stout man with dragonfire shining in his eyes, and my parole officer was most agreeable once my friend Tatsumoto spoke on my behalf. We should be throwing you back into Tartarus old man. Endeavor growled, standing, and with these two old hacks for co-conspiriting this, I'd like to see you try matchstick. Paku sneered. Enough both of you. All my commanded, stepping forward, I myself will vouch for these three. Agreed. Edshot said, Paku was my mentor, if he made this call, then it must be the right one. 
If we're all in agreement Sukachi spoke up, getting a general nod of head save for Endeavor who just scoffed. All right, glad you three will be joining us. The pleasure is ours. Iro said, these villains will know the fear that the Dragon of the West can inspire. VVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVV
But that's all right, fail and try again as many times as it takes. The man's head came up, appearing to stare at Izuku as the firebender took a hesitant step back, his aching arms coming up in a sloppy defensive stance. Izuku Midoriya. The man said as he floated towards him, you've made quite a name for yourself in the last six months, worthy of being called a true hero. But that ends today, young Shigaraki, claim your prize. A sonic boom had the league scrambling to keep their footing as all for one turned and caught All Might's initial attack, wind pressure buffeting his suit and everything around it. I'll have you return my student, all for one. All Might spat as he strained against his foe's fist. Come to kill me again All Might all for one sneered as he sent All Might flying with a punch. All Might Izuku shouted as he jumped back, dodging Shigaraki's attack as he roared. Orange flames bathing the area before Mr. Compress was at his side. A roundhouse kick sent the man flying back as Izuku dodged Toga's knife, snarling as Shigaraki and Spinner charged in. Young Midoriya All Might shouted as he rushed back in aiming straight for Shigaraki. Worry not, Tamira Shigaraki all for one said, a taunting lilt to his voice as he appeared in front of All Might and blasting him away with an air bullet, because I am here. Damn it, Izuku growled lowly as he once again jumped back, trying to keep his distance as Spinner drove his sword forward, inches away from impaling the young firebender. A whip of water put a stop to that as it wrapped around the lizard man's neck and sent him flying away. The League of Villains. Izuku couldn't believe his eyes as water rushed forward, forcing many of the leaguers back as Paku slid down a mound of rubble to Izuku's side, his whole body moving fluidly as he brought the water back to from several whips around him, a bunch of no-name thugs. I believe it's time to remind them why no villain group has ever lasted more than a few months. Tatsumoto said as he flew in on his glider, landing atop the mound of rubble. The tides have changed. Izuku felt hope well in him as Uncle blasted himself through the air to come to a rest in front of Izuku, billowing fire out his nostrils as he adopted a defensive stance. The cavalry has arrived. Iro proclaimed, you will surrender yourself to the dragon of the west. Kill them Shigaraki shouted, making the other leaguers charge forward, twice. What on it twice shouted as he held his hand out and Dabai sprang from the earth, who sent a wave of blue fire at Iro. Iro parted it with his hands and retaliated with several jabs of flames as Izuku jumped over him and engaged Dabai directly, his flames forcing the copy to retreat as Paku surged forward. Water whips keeping Shigaraki and Toga back, meanwhile Tatsumoto was flying through the sky, dodging thrown marbles from Mr. Compress that would explode into rubble as he cancelled his quirk. Magni was trying to help twice and clone Dabai fight the two firebenders, who were now working in tandem, Izuku guarding Iro from flames as the former villain slipped past Magna's magnet, and blasting her with flames, knocking her unconscious before using flames to jump over Izuku and bring a hard axle kick down on the clone's shoulder, making it splatter into the mud it was formed from. Izuku Iro shouted as all for one and all might traded blows in the sky. Get out of here we'll hold them off as long as we can. But what about Izuku began, stopping as an explosion filled the air, and a cackling old man came flying out of the earth, far more muscular than any old man had a right to be as he sent giant boulders at all for one. Quake in fear at the power of the Mad King Bumi ah ha 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 ha. Bumi, Iro said softly, grinning as he blasted Magni with fire, making her jump behind some rubble for cover. Go Izuku will be alright. Izuku hesitated one last moment. Don't die, he said as he took off to the north. Stop him Shigaraki shouted, turning to run after Izuku, only to be slammed by a wall of water and frozen. Your fight is with me young man, Paku said pointedly as his water whip wrapped around twice, and sent him flying into a disoriented spinner. Another loss, all for one mused as he turned and sent All Might flying with a punch, before extending his fingers and wrapping them around Bumi, tossing him straight up in the air. No matter he turned his fingers towards Kirijiri, the tips extending and stabbing into the unconscious man. Force quirk activation all for one proclaimed, making a portal appear as he turned on the three pros, air cannon. Three rapid air bullets slammed into the old men, sending them back as all for one once again activated force quirk activation on Magni, making them fly towards Toga. No master Shigaraki shouted as he began to fall into the portal. Continue on Shigaraki. All for one called, restart as many times as you need, I believe in you. With that the portal closed, leaving all for one alone with Iro and his compatriots. All for one, Paku muttered as he slowly got back to his feet, helping Iro up as Tatsumoto landed beside him. I never believed my grandfather when he spoke of him. A myth taken true form. Tatsumoto said grimly. Come now all for one call to them. Don't heroes jump head first into danger. He took on All Might without breaking a sweat. We can't match that power. Paku said as Iro began to stride towards All for One. Maybe not, but we can hold him off until All Might returns, Iro said, planting his foot firmly onto the rubble and bringing his hands up as Tatsumoto took to the air, and Paku followed his lead, together. All for one easily dodged their initial attack, dissipating Iro's fire and dodging the surge of waves that Paku sent at him while also easily keeping up with Tatsumoto, 
as the man flew through the air, hitting him with high speeds winds that all for one would counter with air bullet, their fight getting interrupted by fire and water, the administrator, trying to steer the fall into the path of righteousness. All for one said as he suddenly rushed Tatsumoto, a single punch sent him streaking across the sky, crashing through a building before coming to a stop on the street, unmoving. Tatsumoto Paku shouted, his eyes sharpening. You son of a bitch he roared as the water around him suddenly disappeared, reappearing as droplets of water floating in the air before. With a the breath, they froze into jagged spikes that Paku sent flying towards All for One. All for One laughed as he easily dodged the water, the teacher, training the new generations. He called as he leveled his hand, rivet stab. Paku let out a scream of pain as All for One's fingers stabbed into his chest. You have a worthy quirk, whiplash. All for one taunted as he raised the man off the ground, ready to strip him of his quirk and leave him for dead. No ear roared, the flames from his mouth searing all for one's hand and forcing him to let Paku go as he withdrew his fingers with a cry of pain. Paku, Iro called as he ran to his friend's side. The man was barely breathing and bleeding out on the ground. The old man raised his hand and clasped Iro's as he reached him. Run. Paku gasped out before he lost consciousness. The Pretender. Iro looked up, his eyes burning with rage as he turned to stand against All for One. The Pretender. All for One sneered, spreading his arms wide. I remember you the so-called dragon who could not stomach his brother's bloodlust. Tell me, oh mighty dragon, how does it feel to fail at killing your own brother? Iro's eyes widen in shock. Azai is alive he whispered before All for One appeared before him, driving his fist into his gut and sending him flying back into the rubble, bloodied and broken. How the mighty dragon falls, all for one laughed as Iro slowly forced himself to his feet, only to be slapped away again. This time his shoulder was impaled by Rabar, making Iro scream. Goodbye, mighty dragon. Texas smash. The heavy-handed punch from All Might sent all for one flying as Bumi rushed to his friends, moving earth and rubble to move them out of the fight. Get them somewhere safe Bumi All Might shouted as the man ran. His friends in tow, I'll handle this. VVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVV
He said, patting his shoulder before moving to the door. Can can you take me to Yue instead? Aizawa stopped and looked back at Izuku. The boy was looking down, hands in his pockets, shoulders hunched. Any particular reason why Aizawa asked? To speak to Hound Dog. Izuku muttered, refusing to look at his father. Aizawa slowly nodded, let's go. VVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVV
Before your time, my angsty shadow wolf friend. Can said, squinting ahead, hey there's Tortuga. And indeed there he was, a massive alligator snapping turtle who was currently curled up beside the apartment complex, arms, legs and head pulled into his shell. The spiky ridges on its back intimidating to all but the blonde-haired boy who was currently asleep between the rows. Tortuga Achilles can shouted through cupped hands, eliciting a mocking raw cheer from the rest of them. The boy sat up, pale blue eyes narrowing at them as he jumped off his perch, a groan coming from the shell as muscular arms and legs came out of the shell, slowly standing beside Achilles as a bleary head poked out, its sharp beak opening as it yawned. Do you have to be so loud? Tortuga grumbled, wiping the sleep from his beady black eyes, his other hand making sure the jeans he was wearing were still in one piece from his impromptu nap. I was having such a wonderful dream. I too was enjoying my slumber until this vexation made himself known. Achilles grumbled, his clothes were different from what the others wore, an ocean blue chitin with a leather belt tied around it, and a pair of leather sandals, he pushed his long hair back before crossing his arms, his muscles rippling as he did. Who gave you a dictionary for your birthday and why did you actually read it Ken asked, making Tsum snicker. Watch yourself knave. Achilles growled. Relax Yonis. Jin warned him, standing toe to toe with the boy, both about the same height, we're supposed to be friends aren't we? I am here to get my license and move on. Achilles said, meeting Jin's gaze, I have no time for playing with you fools. Tortuga's large hand came down on Achilles' shoulder, making the boy look up at the boy who was a head taller and then some. What did hound dog say Tortuga rumbled? Sai the path to victory is gained not by taking the journey alone, but by relying on allies to reach the peak. He grumbled. Exactly, so stop fighting with everyone because you're pissed you got caught. Tortuga looked at Jin and offered as good a smile as he could give with his beak. Sorry about that stone. He's just irritated his nap got cut short. Don't talk about me like I'm a child Yanis snapped at him, earning a hard hit from the oversized paw that embedded him into the ground. Stop acting like one Tortuga said gruffly, clouds of steam coming out of his feet. It's no problem Tortuga. Jin said easily as Yanis pushed himself out of his crater, glaring at Tortuga. You're lucky my sword can't pierce your hide. He muttered as he got back up. Not that this back and forth isn't fun, Can interrupted before they could start arguing. But we got a party to get to, you can have your lover spat later. Tortuga laughed, I always appreciate your wit can he chortled as the short boy jumped up and landed on his shoulder, easily sitting on the edge of the shell as the large man began walking back to the apartment. He's right, everyone else who's coming is here. Let's join the festivities. Rest of our class here Jin asked. Only Amos and Kimuri came, Yanis said as they moved, the rest quit like the cowards they are. Though his wording is harsh, he's right. Ella said, they all quit after Kamino. I kinda don't blame them. Tsum said quietly, I mean All Might's gone, he's the only reason we came out of the dark times. And with him gone the shadows will spread once more. Kayaba said with a sinister grin, I'm getting tingly just thinking about it. Take about 60% off their bud. Kan said, giving Kayaba a look, but yeah I don't blame them either, hell you also got to figure some of them used to run with Yakuza and the likes. With the big guy gone there's a high chance that those old crime syndicates are gonna start doing more than petty shit. It is indeed a dark time we are approaching. Yanis muttered, the better to show that we belong amongst the stars. Can someone translate? I don't speak Shakespeare. It means more opportunities for us to shine. A new voice said, making Kayaba perk up a bit. Eninra. He said with a smirk as a boy jumped down from the second story of the apartments, a puff of smoke billowing about him for a moment before it dispersed, revealing a confident young man with brown hair and an undercut. A white shite shirt tucked into jeans showing off his fit form. His self-assured smile stretched the faded scar on his left cheek, gray eyes sparkling with barely contained excitement. How's it going Kayaba you miss me he asked, clasping hands with the other boy. <laughs> Stop giving heart attack please a soft, timid voice called from the second floor, making everyone look up once more to see a deeply tanned boy with a puffy white afro, and two shiny ebony ram's horns curling out from his temples. Amos soon cheered, making the boy flinch before scurrying down the nearby stairs, H hello. He said, standing awkwardly beside Kimuri. Happy to see you. Holy shit Ramos can talk Can exclaimed, earning him a hard slap to the back of the head from Jin. Can talk all time. Amos mumbled, picking at his blue shirt. Not good talk in this language till now. Don't be an asshole Can. Ella growled, leveling him a deadly glare that had the boy wisely biting his tongue. Gojas, key six alclimatigas Ramos, passes I am da tempo. Ella said to Amos with a kind smile, making the boy perk up. Goja's vidi vin anka rapide, la japana estas mal facila, he said with much more confidence. Then we'll keep talking in Japanese until you're more comfortable. Ella chuckled, making him pout. No fair. He mumbled, flinching when Kimuri threw an arm around him. What can I say, fair's fair. He said with a chuckle, I'm just glad we can semi-understand you now, even though you don't talk much. We can actually get your order right at MG Ronalds. Ken sighed. It's good to see both of you, Jin said, clasping hands with Kimuri and ruffling Amos's afro, making him whine. But I thought you two were inside. We were, but I was gonna head out. Kimuri said with a strained smile, I'm still not used to being around so many people. 
and I know no people. No thanks, social. Amos said with a nod. That's a moot. Sorohiko muttered. Izuku's on his way, Kimuri continued. That Ada guy wanted this to be a surprise, but I figure Akuma would appreciate a heads up. Giving the kidnapped survivor a surprise party a week after he saved, fucking brilliant. Kayaba said sarcastically. Most everyone's against the surprise part of it. Kimuri sighed, taking a few steps away from Amos and pulling out a pack of cigarettes handing them out to those who smoked. Kayaba and Ella declined, as did Yanis and Amos, who took a few more steps away. Ina declined and instead pulled out a cigarillo, letting Kimuri light the tip with a red hot ember, so I don't think they'll complain if y'all show up in force. Let's hurry this little smoke sesh please. Kan said, looking around, we get caught we're gonna be in some shit. You're the one who smokes slow, Jin taunted, already half done with his. Or you could quit, Ella offered, you know, so you don't get kicked out for smoking. Lighten up Peterson, Kimuri said, blowing smoke into the air, the remains of his cigarette turning to ash in his hands, live in the now, besides, it's not like Death Arms doesn't smoke. Yeah, but he's of age. Kiaba pointed out, and it's a dirty habit. You can't quit cold turkey. Soon pointed out as she put hers out on her horn, flicking the butt into the bush. You can, you just fail to try. Yanis grunted. I never wanted to try in the first place. Sorohiko mused, blowing a large cloud out of his nostrils as he stomped his out. Maybe you should start. Everyone perked up at the familiar voice, all looking over as Izuku walked over from Aizawa's car. Akuma they all cheered save for Amos and Yanis. How you doin' lil brother Jin boomed, giving Izuku a big hug while everyone crowded around. Good to see you guys. He laughed, patting Jin's back as he clasped hands with everyone one by one, giving Kayaba a polite nod which he returned, and a firm handshake to Yanis, who simply inclined his head after his introduction. Tordugo, when you get back into town. Couple days ago, he rumbled, bumping fists with him. Gramps wanted me to be a part of this, couldn't say no to the old coot. Well it's good to have you back, Izuku said with an easy smile. And Kimuri they finally let your ass out of solitary man. Can't keep me locked up, Kimuri bragged, clasping hands with him and bringing him in for a hug. Got Amos too. How you doing bud Izuku asked the nervous boy as he stepped back from Kimuri, keeping a good distance back from him. Good, I'm tired, very you not relaxed. Amos said with a strained smile. Yeah, we were just going to stick around to see you again. Kimuri sighed. Not used to being around people anymore. I get it, but we need to really kick it some time now that you're out. Izuku said, making Kimuri laugh. Miss you too, and glad we can talk now Amos, he added, shooting the ram a warm smile, and making him vibrate with happiness. We'll get plenty of chances later, Akuma. Kan said, jumping off Sorohiko's shell and onto the steps of the stairs. Right now we got some new schoolmates to meet. Why is he so happy about that? Sum asked. He's an extreme extrovert. Ella grumbled as they began walking up the steps, calling out goodbyes to Amos and Kimuri and skirting around Aizawa with polite greetings. She nudged Izuku's arm. Glad to see you in one piece, Akuma. She said quietly. Same. Izuku said with a tired smile. It's good to see the old crew. It's definitely been too long, Sum said, getting him in a headlock and giving him a noogie. Get off Saber, come on. Get him Saber and his existence. Shut up, Ken. All of you sees your constant bickering. Why don't you make us? Yeah. Aizawa watched all of this from behind him, rolling his eyes as he did. Glad I'm not Paku. He muttered. VVVVVVVVVVVWVW. Izuku sat in his recliner with Yui settled between his legs, her back resting against his chest as she talked with Tsum, Mina and Kenda. Rap music playing softly in the background. Around them were his friends from Class 1A as well as his old friends from the street, all intermingling and having a good time. Jin and Kirishima were arm wrestling at his kitchen table. Kan, Tetsu Tetsu, Sorohiko, Suyu, Yanis, Kaminari, Siro, Bekugo, and Yuraka were watching and cheering them on. Ella was talking with Setsuna, Ajiro, Jiru, and Yeyurazu. Toru and Ayama were sitting with them. Pony and Shizaki were sitting with Kayaba and Takoyami, all of them discussing their quirks. Sato was baking cookies with Jiroda and Kamori helping. Tirwaro and Tsuburaba waiting nearby. Out on the balcony sat the adults, Aizawa was sitting beside Miss Joke, talking quietly with Midnight and Present Mike. All in all it was a good party, only Ida was not mingling. Having to take a call in the other room, it was more than he could hope for when introducing his old friends to his new ones. Are you okay? Izuku looked back at Yui, she was pouting adorably at him. I'm okay, he said quietly, wrapping his arms around her waist, making her hum as he kissed the top of her head. You two are adorable Tsum squealed, I never thought Akuma would get in a relationship. Why Mina asked curiously, Midori is pretty easy on the eyes. Yeah but Akuma was all business no play back in the day. Kan said, jumping over from his perch on the counter. Some of the girls on the block wanted him all to themselves, never thought I'd see the fire demon so cold. That was a long time ago, Shinobi. Izuku sighed, resting his chin on Yui's shoulder and closing his eyes. Like uncle always says, to rush through life is to ignore the very reason for living. How is Uncle Tsum asked worriedly, Paku hasn't told us anything. Paku Izuku asked in confusion, why would he tell you anything? 
Didn't you hear Can asked with a grin? He's the teacher for class 1R. Dude's a hard ass. But I can't diss how dedicated he is. He's talking about us going for our provisional licenses at the same time you guys are. Kinda early if you ask me but whatever. Provisional licenses, that's quite a ways away. Kendo sighed. Another year at least. Maybe he thinks that's how long we'll take to catch up. Sue mumbled. Come on, you guys are only a single semester down. And you guys have been playing catch up for half that time haven't y'all Izuku asked. Well yeah. Then I bet you guys aren't far off. Izuku said, to answer your question, uncle's still under, but we're hopeful. That's good, I don't know what we would do without uncle in our corner. She sighed. From what I know of the man he is well worthy of praise. Ada, Izuku greeted as the stiff-backed boy walked back into the room. You good man. I am quite fine thank you for your concern Midoriya Ada proclaimed, his arm moving robotically, it was a business call, I'm sure you understand. What first-year high schooler has business calls can asked in confusion. At this point I don't ask anymore. Izuku sighed, yo Sato when the cookie's done. Five minutes. Shoots. How you been holding up Akuma Ella asked, wandering over with Kayaba and Yanis, who was looking decidedly bored. Same bad time same bad channel, you know how it is quick. He said with a shrug, looking at Yanis, don't think we've been introduced yet, Izuku Midoriya. He held his hand out. The boy looked at his hand before taking it in a strong grip. Yanis Cirillo, he said, well met, Akuma. Likewise. So, why do you guys call him Akuma Mina asked, making Kan and Soom perk up. No way, you don't know Kan asked with a grin. What are we supposed to know Kendo asked, Ada leaning in to find out as well. Soom glanced at Izuku, who gave her a subtle shake of his head. It's not a conversation for a party. Soom said with a nervous chuckle. I mean you're right, and I'm not gonna argue, but come on it's a good story Kan started. Only to be cut off by Ella slamming her fist into his head. It's really Akuma's story to tell. Ella said plainly, shooting Kan a look. Oh come on I wanna know Mina whined, looking at Yanis hopefully. I only know of his reputation through his comrades. Yanis said gravely, and what a mighty reputation it is. Izuku shifted uncomfortably, it's not a time I like to talk about. He muttered, giving them a strained smile, at least not right now. Yui looked at Mina, her hand unconsciously going over Izuku's own. How's your crush on Kirishima Mina she asked, making the pink alien blush a deep purple. Rockhead Ken asked, looking over to where Kirishima was now arm wrestling Sorohiko, his arm taking the appearance of Rock as he strained against the giant turtle. I mean he's easy on the yes and kinda cute in that dumb puppy sort of way. Please refrain from insulting our schoolmates Ida exclaimed. Could definitely do worse, Ella agreed, jabbing a thumb at Ken, you could like this idiot. Speaking from experience quick Tsum asked innocently. Fuck off Saber. War nicknames Mina groaned as Ida exclaimed such language doing whatever she could to get the attention off of her. Why? Well, we call Peterson quick cause it's short for quick shot. Kan said, depositing himself into Tsum's lap, the girl hooking her arm around his shoulders as he idly played with her horn. Don't even think Snipes can keep up with her at this point. Saber is short for Sabertooth, cause this mad lad's quirk allows her to shapeshift into a Sabertooth moose lion. But that's too long so we shortened it to Sabertooth. A Sabertooth moose lion Kendo asked on Shirley. Yep, Soom said with a smile, my dad had a quirk that let him transform into a Sabertooth lion. My mom had a moose quirk. Combine those two and you get me, who can transform into a Sabertooth moose lion. That's awesome Mina gushed. A very good quirk indeed. Yanis agreed. Saber's the best. Kan said with a carefree shrug. It's one of her strong suits. Can't argue with that. Ella sighed, looking up when Kayaba walked over. I'm leaving. He stated. Not sticking around oh purveyor of the dark Kan asked. No. Kayaba said, once again nodding to Izuku, before walking out. I shall accompany him. Yanis said, dipping his head to them all. Parties are not my strong suit. Don't forget to check in with Sorohiko before you leave. Soom warned. I know. He grumbled, walking away. So what's his story Kendo asked, watching Yanis quietly converse with Sorohiko before walking out of the apartment. A, hey, he's some hotshot from Greece. Ken said dismissively, came over here to fight in the underground quirked MMA matches, then spent the night being a vigilante, got busted by the fuzz and given the same offer we all got, be a hero and get your record cleared or stay in the JDC. He was a vigilante Mina asked in awe. The invincible warrior, Achilles. Soom said, I'm surprised his ego allowed him to come. He's not the most social of us that's for sure. Ella said, sniffing the air, cookies are done. Ding. Kendo and Mina looked at Ella in shock. How did you? She's got the best nose of us all. Ken sighed dramatically, appearing beside Ada with an arm thrown around the taller boy's shoulder. Maya Mori the one whom my heart beats for. Shut your trap can. Ella snapped, turning away from them to hide the soft blush creeping up on her cheeks. Now hurry up and come on, before all the cookies are taken. VVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVV
So here me and Midoriya were, running as hard as our little legs could carry us Jin narrated dramatically to Bekugo, your rock Yui and an amused Tsum and Sorohiko, being chased by three dogs and one pissed off store owner whose hair was on fire courtesy of our little Akuma. What you guys do your Raka asked, completely enraptured by the tale. Well, I'm not one to brag, but my handling on my quirk was leagues better than Akuma had. Jin said smugly, so I stomped on the ground and we made our escape onto a nearby roof. Escape he says Izuku scoffed, making Bakugo and Yuraka look over to him. We were launched 15 feet higher than the nearest roof and almost missed it completely because he panicked. Those at the table laughed while Jin scratched the back of his head sheepishly. I don't like dogs alright he defended himself. Anyways my brilliant strategy saved us. I thought it was my aim. Izuku sassed, looking up at the clock. You guys only got so long until you miss the train. Yeah, yeah. Bakugo scoffed, standing as he walked over to Izuku, who quickly dried his hands before clasping his right with Bakugo's, glad to have you back Deku. Bakugo said softly, pulling his hand back and giving him a friendly punch to the shoulder, better be ready for me to kick your ass come class time. Wouldn't have it any other way Bakugo thanks. Izuku said as Bakugo moved on, putting his arm around Yuraka's shoulders as they left, see a Deku she called as they closed the door. Deku, Jin mused as they walked over to say their goodbyes, Yui going to Izuku's other side and taking over with the dishes, better than Kajin. Don't go ragging on my name stone fist. Izuku said dryly, making Sorohiko chuckle, at least mine's original. Oh yeah, naming yourself after a god, Suo original. Sum drawled, giggling slightly, face at Akuma, you just suck at naming yourself. Definitely don't think of a god when I see you. Sorohiko rumbled, ruffling the other boy's hair and dodging the playful mouthful of fire he spat at him, maybe a little horned lizard. Little Izuku asked, offended. You're the shortest of us now Zuzu Jin laughed, bumping knuckles with him as he slowly backed away towards the door, even Kan's got a centimeter on you. And up until now everyone was really nice about not pointing it out. Izuku grumbled. Gotta take our pound of flesh where we can, later Akuma. See ya Akuma. Don't be a stranger Zuzu. Izuku rolled his eyes as they closed the door, turning back to the sink and raising an eyebrow at seeing Yui casually washing the dishes. I'll dry you offered, stepping to her side and picking up one of the plates, the ceramic steaming on contact and dry within a few seconds. Hem Yui hummed in agreement, the two quickly falling into a comfortable silence. Thanks, Izuku said softly as he put the last plate away, turning to look at his girlfriend, who had her hands clasped behind her back as she looked towards the dark living room. Don't mention it. She said quietly, letting out a soft gasp when she felt calloused fingers gently cup her chin, guiding her to look at Izuku, who captured her lips in a sweet kiss only a moment later. I don't deserve you, he mused as she slowly pulled herself out of her stunned silence. Who she asked, nudging him slightly and making him hold up his hands and surrender, we've talked about this. I know, I know, Izuku sighed, running a hand through his hair, can't help it sometimes. He mumbled. Yui hummed again and snaked her arms around his waist, prompting him to return the hug, neither moving from the embrace for a few moments. Do you know why they call me Akuma? Yui looked up slightly, humming in curiosity, but saying, you don't have to tell me. With a small sigh Izuku began to talk, when I was younger, I was a scared cat. He mumbled, my dad was an ass who killed my mom, and I accidentally killed him when my quirk came into being after that I was scared of my quirk too. Two years I couldn't even summon a small spark then I met Dabai. The fire villain she asked softly. Yeah, he wasn't always a villain, Izuku whispered sadly. He was once our leader, the guy we went to when things went to Shythe was like an older brother to me. He taught me how to use my fire. To use my anger and aggression to make my fire actually burn after he taught me I became ruthless in fights. The other gangs near us called me the fire demon of Shizuoka. Dabai called me an Akuma. And the others ran with it. He shook his head, letting it fall. Up until now I never really had a problem with the nickname. I knew I didn't want it as my hero name. Why do you have a problem with it now she prodded gently tightening her embrace comfortingly. Izuku seemed to mull over his words before he spoke again. When I was held hostage, Shigaraki tried to recruit me, said we were birds of a feather said I was a delinquent playing hero. I told him to shove his offer up his ass, but when I was in that freezer, when I was trying to keep it together until the heroes got there, I couldn't help but think that Shigaraki was right. He wasn't. He was, Izuku rebutted, I was a villain in the making. I got into fights for no other reason than I could. It made me feel powerful. I injured so many people for such stupid reasons dimly he was aware that he was starting to shake. Tears were collecting in his eyes. The Jones were right, I am a monster. You are not you he said sharply, her hands coming up and cupping his cheeks, forcing him to look at her. A monster wouldn't care what he did when he was younger, a monster would have joined Shigaraki for want and destruction. She smiled sadly as she saw tears slowly trail down his cheeks and onto her hands. You're a good person Izuku, you're a hero, and I love you. Izuku stiffened, then slowly relaxed, I love you too. He whispered before kissing her once again. Yui smiled against the kiss, slowly pulling away. When was the last time you slept she asked. Couple of days ago. He mumbled, yawning as Yui led him to the couch, making him sit down. I don't think I can sleep, not yet. 
Not easily. HMM then let's sit down and watch TV, Yui said, sitting down next to him and curling up against his side, smiling when his arm unconsciously goes around her shoulders. Don't you have to go home, Izuku asked absentmindedly, idly playing with the strand of her hair while she turned on the TV. Mom thinks I'm staying at Kendo's tonight, she said, giving him a peck on the cheek. Just relax, we're not doing anything bad except watching TV. Right Izuku yawned, smiling a bit as Yui played with his free hand, softly running her fingers over his scars. When Aizawa came by after his patrol, he frowned at finding Yui and Izuku asleep on the couch, cuddling up to each other. But Ms. Joke was quick to quietly drag him out of the apartment and towards his, you can lecture him when they're actually awake. She chided, this is the first time he's slept since we got him back isn't it? Yes Aizawa sighed. Exactly so let them sleep besides, don't you owe me some breakfast? Aizawa hid his blush inside his scarf, if I make breakfast will you leave? Oh Shouta, you and I both know I won't. It had been a long hard day of training and Bakugo Katsuki was ready to take a shower, change into something comfy, and maybe find his girlfriend for a movie night. But those plans went right out his head as he entered the dorms. Are you two wearing my clothes? Bakugo snarled as he found Izuku Midoriya and Achako Yuraka lounging on the couch. Izuku was wearing his favorite All Might t-shirt, and Yuraka was wearing his Skull t-shirt. It looks good on her don't think about that dumbass you're supposed to be mad. Why the fuck are you wearing my clothes? Ours are in the laundry, Izuku said with a dismissive wave. Yeah we figured you wouldn't be mad Yuraka chirped. Well you figured wrong take them off now he commanded. Yuraka fidgeted sheepishly, WL, you see, Twam not wearing a bra. She mumbled bashfully. Bakugo blushed and looked away, I cough I guess you can wear it until your clothes are ready, but Yui pointed at Izuku, who'd been trying and failing not to laugh at the situation, take it off. But Kakin, Izuku sighed, doing his best to pull off a bashful look, I'm not wearing a bra either, take it off Deku, make me bitch. Yuraka giggled as she watched the two wrestle. Sights like this were the new normal at Alliance Heights. Putting 20 teenagers in a dorm room with little supervision had surprisingly played off fairly well, with everyone pulling their weight and giving minimal complaints on how the chores had been split up. Ada was still a hard ass, going about enforcing what rules he could while Izuku led the effort on breaking what rules they could to help balance out the universe. Izuku jumped over the couch, grabbing his own, clean, shirt and pulling off Bakugos, throwing it in his face and causing the boy to trip over the back of the couch. There, hope you two are happy with each other, Izuku chortled as he pulled his shirt on. But not before Yuraka once again saw his scars, she did her best to avert her eyes and not draw attention to the fact she'd been staring, she wished she could ask what happened, but doubted he'd tell her. Hey, so how are you guys doing with the whole super move Izuku asked as he plopped back down on the couch. I'm just working on my Nasir right now. Yuraka said as she dragged Bakugo down beside her before he could retaliate. I'm gonna try and work something out tomorrow. Cutting it kind of close aren't you Bakugo muttered, earning him a nudge in the ribs. We have two days until the provisional license exam. Izuku pointed out helpfully, and really only tomorrow to practice. It's not like my quirk gives me a lot of options she pouted. Not like Mr. Explody here. Boy, and you have a built-in signature move with your quirk. Yuraka continued, gesturing to Izuku while Bakugo spluttered indignantly. Hair right Izuku muttered, looking down at his hand. I can't summon lightning anymore. Hound Dog raised an eyebrow in surprise, I was under the impression you were doing better controlling your quirk. Izuku sighed, leaning forward, lightning isn't a typical aspect of my quirk, he said. Uncle taught me when he believed my mind and body was centered. As only a balanced soul can generate lightning ever since I got back from the league I haven't been able to, it either doesn't work or explodes in my face. A mental block. Hound Dog supplied, the experience awoke previous trauma you had opted to ignore. Instead of face and come to terms with it, I've faced it. Izuku said, his voice struggling to stay calm. I faced it when they threw me back into that damned freezer. I came to terms with it, I've moved on. Have you slept this week? Izuku stuttered to a stop, his shoulders slumping. It's a process Izuku, the hero said gently, it won't happen overnight. I know that. He said quietly, I know. Midoriya. Izuku looked up, momentarily confused by his friend's worried stares. Are you alright Yuraka prodded gently. Yeah, fine. Izuku said, giving them an easy smile. You look it sad. Yuraka prodded gently. It's nothing. He reiterated firmly. Keeping his tone light, just tired, we've been running ourselves ragged all week. Not as much as rehab. Bakugo said, the way they talk, Whiplash has them running night training at the USJ. They're covering six months of training in one. Izuku perked up as Aizawa walked in. Paku is a hard ass, but he's a hard ass that gives good results. I'll be surprised if any of them fail the licensing exam. But that's not why I'm here. He turned to Izuku, Iro's awake. 15. Izuku practically ran the entire way since they parked outside the hospital, bursting through the door as soon as he was within reach. Uncle are you okay? The words died on his tongue when he found Iro laughing with the nurse. Ah Izuku it warms my heart to see you visit this old man he said jovially. You're not that old Iro, the nurse giggled. Izuku gave her an incredulous stare as she gave his uncle a kiss on the temple. I have to go, still on the clock, by Iro. 
Have a good shift Ming Aero called as he waved her off. Such a nice young lady. Well, I can see you're doing fine. Izuku deadpanned. Better now that I am awake and healed. Iro chuckled before giving him a concerned glance. But are you okay? It was a harrowing time for you. Come on, you know me uncle. Izuku said dismissively. Nothing keeps me down for long. Hum, so you are down then Iro hummed sympathetically, making Izuku wince. Why don't we talk about it over a nice cup of tea? I'd like that uncle. I really would. 15. Very troubling, very troubling. Izuku shifted anxiously, not looking his uncle in the eye after telling him about his troubles, their hot cups of tea sitting forgotten on the serving tray. Izuku, look at me, please. Izuku's eyes darted up, and quickly went back down when he found Iro staring at him, a gentle smile telling him everything would be okay. This block is of no fault of your own. The two halves of your life are beginning to coincide. Emotional turmoil is bound to happen. It interrupts my training, Izuku muttered. We go to take the provisional license exams on Friday, a day away, without my lightning. Without your lightning you will still succeed. Iro interrupted, just as you would have succeeded in the entrance exam, and the sports festival without your lightning. To force change when still in turmoil can do more harm than good, nephew. I know uncle I know. Iro smiled sadly, this block gives you new opportunity. He continued, it allows you free reign to reflect upon yourself, and come to peace with your past, true peace, not everyone has the chance to do so. Did you ever have the chance uncle Izuku asked inquisitively. I did it did not end well. Iro sighed, and fate seems to be giving me another chance. What do you mean uncle Izuku asked? Nothing for you to worry about. Iro waved his hand dismissively, and I would rather not talk about it yet. Tell me how your friends are adjusting to life in UA. By the time Izuku left he felt lighter, just talking with Iro had pulled a lot of the weight he felt off his shoulders. I'll come by Sede, Izuku promised, hugging his former guardian goodbye. You'll be back at the shop right? Yes, and make sure you bring all of your friends by. Will do, by uncle Izuku called as he jogged down the hall while Ming walked back into the room, closing the door behind her as her peppy smile changed into a professional mask. You didn't tell him she asked stoically. He does not need to know anything yet, not until there is proof. Iro said firmly, now what do you have for me Jun? Nothing good. The newly named Jun said, all for one was it lying. There were a lot more fire quirks popping up in the underground, and they're not playing around. Iro's eyebrows furrowed, glaring down at his bed. He can't be alive Iro muttered. It's starting to look like it, things are shaping up like last time, local gangs and villain groups are going missing, some are showing up torched, the caldera sigil usually on the alley wall. Iro slowly stood up, heading to the window to look out in time to see Izuku happily flag down Aizawa, the two heading off towards a plain black car. Thank you Jun, he said, I'll contact you if I need further assistance. The woman didn't say anything, just slipped out of the room while Iro did his best not to burn down the room. 15. Ayo Midoriya. Izuku paused on his stroll towards the bus, looking over to Tsum, Kimuri, and Amos were standing. Hey, you guys about to head out Izuku asked. Nah, ours is in the afternoon, Tsum said dismissively, we just wanted to wish you luck. Yeah, and provide you some incentive, Kimuri said with a grin. Ken got a call from an old friend of ours, saying we all got an open invitation to a club he's opening, some teen joint. How the hell does Ken know someone who can get us into a club Izuku asked incredulously. Technically it's someone who knows you, just getting into contact through Ken, and he's being an ass about it so I don't know who. That's not worrying at all. Izuku sighed wearily, but it would be nice to have some time off after all the shit we went through, but we gotta pass or else it's gonna be a depressing ass night in the club. He grinned as his friends all chuckled, save for Amos, who looked a little confused but still gave a confused giggle. Midoriya let's go Ida shouted from the bus, getting Izuku to wave dismissively. Yeah, yeah I'm coming, he grumbled. Looking at them, good luck on the test guys, he said, clasping hands with everyone. Good luck Akuma. Good luck Kuma. Luck, Amos said with a nervous smile. See y'all after. Izuku said running into the bus. You were almost late Midoriya Ida admonished, arm robotically chopping at him. Relax Ida. Izuku said easily, pulling his phone out and sending Kana text to find out more details on the club. I was arranging our victory party. A party Mina asked, her eyes gleaming with interest. Not gonna ruin anything, Izuku said with an easy grin. Don't worry too much, just make sure you pass. Like that even up for debate Mina shot back. Yeah we've been training like crazy Kaminari cheered, no way we'll fail. The bus devolved into excited chatter while Izuku sat down, shooting Aizawa a text. Yo pops, we all pass, can we get permission to go into town? And where would you all be going? Small students club in Shizuoka Square. Izuku looked up as the bus began moving, smiling a bit at the general chatter. Hey Midoriya, you ready? Kirishima called from towards the front of the bus. Please, they're gonna give me the license before we even enter the stadium. He bragged. Like how they'll give you your license before I get it Deku Bakugo shouted hotly. You'll be lucky to get a smiley sticker number two. I'll stick my foot up your ass. The bus laughed as Izuku leaned back, glancing at his phone. I'll have Iro and Whiplash watch the group while you're all out and about. Curfew is 11. Thanks pops. Izuku grinned and put up his phone. What are you grinning at mine to asked, some steamy pictures from Kodai. Izuku grabbed mine to shoulder, heating it up until the boy began to squirm uncomfortably. I will punt you into the ocean you creepy little midget. 
Understood, sir. Minda whimpered as Izuku let him go. So, Midoriya, you gonna whip out some lightning for this? Kirishima asked. Doubt I'll need it. Izuku lied easily. Man, if I had the same control over my lightning, I'd never stop using it, Kaminari said with a big grin. But I've got some new upgrades that'll definitely shock the competition. Ooh, off, bad pun. Half the bus deadpanned. Quiet, we're here. Aizawa called from the front of the bus. They all dutifully trooped off the bus and out onto the sidewalk in front of the gigantic testing center. Kind of intimidating, Hajiro asked quietly. HMBH, I've seen scarier. Bakugo grunted. Quiet, Aizawa said again. Remember, most everyone here is at least a second year. You're all gonna have to bring your a game and go beyond. Plus Ultra the class cheered, along with a tall teen wearing a Shaiksu uniform. Ujut. Juru said, looking at him. Oh excuse me I'm so very sorry the boy exclaimed, bowing so low he slammed his head into the ground. I just love Yue so much. Yeah, so do we Kirishima cheered, making the rest of the class sweat drop. Inasa let's go. It was nice meeting all of you the now named Inasa cheered as he ran off, leaving a small trail of blood behind him. That was weird. Hagakure said softly. Who was that guy your rocket asked? Inasa Yurashi thought I recognized him. Aizawa droned, he tried for Yue recommendation and he didn't get it that's gotta suck. Sato muttered. Actually he placed first in the exam. He said, but decided to go to Shikesu at the last moment. I'd watch out for him. Hey Aizawa. Oh no. Aizawa sighed miserably while Izuku perked up. Emi Izuku greeted with a smile as Ms. Joke walked up to them waving cheerfully. Izzy you're here too I guess Sawa wasn't kidding when he said 1A was getting their shot she snickered. Turning to Aizawa, marry me. No, hi you're left. Looks like you three know each other. Suyu said. Emmy's dating Aizawa. Izuku supplied. We are not dating. Aizawa growled. Totally our Emmy cheered. Our agencies used to be close to one another when we were rookies. A match made in heaven. I loathe you. Such a riot she laughed, then turned around. Hey guys, come meet the UA crowd. Izuku looked over as a small group of students came walking over. You guys really go to UA1 asked excitedly, rushing forward to try and shake Kirishima's hand. Only for Izuku to intercept. Yeah, class 1A, he said easily, hand tightening slightly as he looked into the boy's cold eyes. Izuku Midoriya, sure you know who I am, and you are. Yo Shindo, Tetsubutsu Academy, he said, eyes narrowing as he increased the pressure as well. Gotta say, it is such an honor to meet you. I wish I could say the same Izuku gushed brightly, adding some heat to the handshake. Cause we're about to dominate the competition. Oh that would be fun to watch. Yoshindo said with a strained smile, hand vibrating violently to try and get Izuku to let go. But Izuku's grip only got tighter, and hotter. Then keep your eyes open yo. Izuku said, letting his hand go. Guess that's our QME exclaimed, ushering her kids away. Shindo's smile still there. Only now it was offset by the glare he was giving Izuku. Good luck kids see you later Aizawa Izuku. Later mom Izuku called absent-mindedly, freezing when he felt everyone's eyes on him. Fuuk. OHMYGODME squealed, grabbing him and Aizawa up in a hug. I'm part of the family. This is your fault, Aizawa growled at Izuku. You're the one who gave her a key to the apartment. VVVVVVVWVW. Hey, Izuku. Izuku looked up from where he was finishing his preparations. Yeah, Kirishima, he asked. Why were you so hard on that Shindo guy? The redhead asked as he fixed his shoulder pieces on. He was just trying to be friendly. Bakugo scoffed from across the locker room. Yeah, right. What he said didn't match the look in his eyes. He sneered. Beck Hugo's right, Todoroki said, he wasn't looking to make friends, but to lull us into a false sense of security. By why we're all trying to be heroes, right? Sato asked. The hero business is a cutthroat world, Ajiro said as he tightened his gloves up. We see enough of it with 1B, and they're from UA, these guys aren't. If there's a battle portion of this test then we'll probably be swamped at the beginning. Izuku continued on as he stood up, stretching a bit. Prison rules, you jump the biggest, baddest, meanest, toughest guy in the yard, establish yourself. He looked around at all of his friends, and what better way to establish yourselves than to crush a UA hero class. They wouldn't mind a began with a terrified whimper. They would, but Hugo rebutted, giving Kaminari a look when the blonde began to shake. To be the best you gotta be ready to take on any challengers. His grin was slightly sadistic as he cocked his gauntlets, and I'm ready to put some extras in their place. But Hugo do not call the other testers extra Ada scolded. Great plan. Izuku said, eyes burning with a weird light as he ignored Ada. You thinking what I'm thinking? Ha, huh, I'm pretty sure I'm thinking what you're thinking. Back Hugo scoffed. What are you guys thinking Shoto asked in confusion. Revelry in the dark. Takoyami intoned, walking over to stand by them. Takoyami's in, anyone else Izuku asked. In for what Kaminari whined. Just follow our lead and you'll be fine Pikachu. Back Hugo barked, now let's go. Izuku laughed as he led the boys out of the locker room, quickly meeting back up with the girls. Everyone, follow our lead. Izuku said to them before they were given the details of the first portion of the test. Gotta tag three people out with balls, he thought, his mind running a mile a minute. This is gonna be easy. He winced as the walls of the room came crashing down. Go to the city. He ordered everyone, taking off at a run, Bakugo at his side. Why are we running, Yuraka asked as the class followed them. 
Like we told everyone in the locker room, we're the new kid in the pod, they're gonna try and put us in our place right off the bat. Izuku said as they reached the first building, Izuku dove through a window, everyone following behind. So we get smart about this, cause every single team that's got a chip on their shoulder and a stick up their ass is gonna come at us. He kept running, taking random twists and turns through the building before leading his class to the next, and repeating the process two more times before they came to a stop at the top of one building. Shoji, let me know if anyone's still on our tail, you too Jiru. Why would anyone be on our tail Jiru asked, stabbing her jacks into the ground while Shoji extended ears and eyes. To properly ambush and attack us of course. Izuku said as his eyes scanned the city. Well if they're gonna attack us, shouldn't we get ready to defend Momo asked. In a way, yeah. Izuku said, looking at everyone, stay off the main streets, anyone with enough firepower is gonna use that as an opportunity to shoot fish in a barrel. They want to ambush us, take us out before we can do so much as throw a ball at them. But we're not gonna let them. Izuku looked at them with a grin, me and Bakugo will lure them in, we're flashy, they'll take the bait, we'll lead them to these two buildings where you guys will be waiting, once we get enough into the alleyway, you guys strike. A good plan, Ada said, though you will need more frontrunners than you and Bakugo. You saying we're weak four eyes Bakugo growled. Not at all only that more rabbits will entice more dogs. Kind of a weird analogy but we'll run with it. The alarm rang out, signaling the beginning of the test, get ready guys. He said as he and Bakugo jumped off the edge of the building, Ada and Siro following. Let's get some traps set up Momo called. Mina coat the walls with your quirk I'll make a fence for the exit. I can float some trash cans to trap them even further when they get here your rocket cheered, running after Momo. Dark Shadow and I will be waiting on the first floor, Takoyami said. We'll drag anyone we can into the buildings. Where we'll be waiting Mina cheered with Hagakure. An explosion filled the air, followed quickly by a gout of flames rising high above the roofs. Bakugo and Midoriya have engaged, Shoji reported. At least five different classes are chasing them. Ada's got two more on his tail, Jiru said, Siro's helping him keep out of range. I'll go help, Shoto said, creating an ice slide and skating down. I'm so pumped let's go Kaminari you can fry these guys once we get them in the trap Kirishima cheered, Kaminari running after him. The rest of us will jump down when the traps sprung, Ajiro said to Sato, Shoji, Tsuyu, Ayama and Jiru, with luck this will all go off without a hitch. VVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVV
Guru what morning Shizuoka Kan shouted as Jin leapt forward and slammed his fists into the ground, sending a rippling shockwave through the canyon, shattering cliff sides and causing hero students to scramble for cover, only to be trampled by Sorohiko as the armored tortoise bounced around, slamming his fist and even his shell into people. Sue roared as she transformed, growing in size until she rivaled that of a garbage truck, her antlers growing alongside her as her canines elongated to sabers, claws peeking out of her silver gauntlets just adding to the fear factor as she bulldozed through people, a single toss of her head sending many flying. Others began getting dragged into the shadows, screaming as they went. Come play with me, Kayaba said as he peeked out of the shadows, glowing yellow eyes, glinting canines, and sharp claws striking fear into those he'd captured. Peterson jumped from cliff to cliff, can right beside her deflecting balls left, and right, you break left, I'll go right, Peterson ordered. Why do I always have to play the rabbit can pouted? Just do it you jackass. Love you too, sugar bear can cackled as he dove into the canyon, passing by Kimuri as he streaked through the competition. Smoke and ember the only thing indicating he had been there before he was hitting them with heated blasts. Amos gulped as he was slowly backed into a corner by five other hero students. This one doesn't look so tough, one scoffed, he looks like he's about to cry they all laughed. Amos was shivering, but with a terrified shriek the entire area was suddenly bathed in electricity. When it died down, Amos was the only one still standing. Sorry. He squeaked before bounding away, his hooved feet perfect for the current terrain as he sent bolts of electricity at anyone who got in his way. Deeper in the canyon a hero student was looking around, trying to find anything to attack. Hey buddy, you see those UA brats? Not yet but when I do he stopped as his eyes lost focus and Shinsu stepped out from behind a rock spire. Go distract your classmates. Shinsu ordered, making the bullheaded teen take off in the opposite direction. Then Shinsu grabbed his scarf, sending out a tendril that immediately brought a chameleon-looking girl out from behind a rock. Oh come on man she whined. Nothing personal, Shinsu said, but I want to be a hero. Jin laughed as he threw boulders around, every move he made continually changing the terrain and giving his classmates the edge while their opponents floundered. He watched as Peterson took out three students with one shot from her vantage point atop the rock spire while Kan threw his kunai to pin them to the ground. Yannis was in the thick of a group of fifteen, blocking, dodging, parrying and attacking without a single attack hitting him, and leaving his opponents in ruins in his wake. Amos had reunited with Kimuri and the two were having fun blinding the enemy with the smoke screen and allowing Amos to dart between them hitting buzzers with his ball. Kayaba slowly emerged from the shadows as the test proctor announced the first person passing, leaving behind two colorful-looking heroes who seemed to be shell-shocked, that was too easy. He drawled as Sorohiko landed, cracking the ground underneath him, the proctor announcing another passing a few seconds later, that's two of us. Sorohiko said, walking up to stand by Jin, who was already pressing a ball into two unconscious teen sensors. I was expecting more of a challenge honestly. Sorohiko grunted, crossing his arms as the rest of the class started walking back over, each one with their sensors lit up blue, indicating they passed. That was a wash can groaned, come on, we barely got five minutes of playtime. Be happy we passed so quickly, Tsum said, slowly shrinking down to her regular height, giving everyone a toothy grin. But yeah these guys were pushovers. Did you lie to me Yannis asked as he approached Sorohiko. I was told these were second years, it felt more like I was fighting middle schoolers. You don't have to be so harsh you know, Kimuri deadpanned. Kinda hard to match up to the guy with an invincibility quirk. We passed. Amos said cheerfully, coming to a stop by Jin, who side-eyed him as he brought his goggles up. Hey Amos, what's in your pockets he asked, making the boy bow his head as he started pulling out several wallets. Got nervous. He mumbled, making everyone laugh. Leave those here, don't want you getting in trouble. Shinsu drawled as they all began walking towards the exit. And where were you mind wipe Peterson asked, making Shinsu sigh. That's not gonna be my hero name. He grumbled. Why's mind wipe so down Kan asked. Mind wipe doesn't appreciate the democratic system. Soom said sagely. We did vote on it. Jin pointed out helpfully. I hate you all. Love you too, best buddy Can gushed, hugging the boy as they entered the waiting area. That first round was a piece of cake. Don't get cocky. Sir Hika warned, we still have a whole other portion of the test. And we'll ace that too, cause we are the shit Kimuri cheered, eliciting cheers from Soom. Can, Jin and Yannis, Kayaba was already settled against the wall, smiling at his friend's excitement. West SHIZUO represent. West SHIZUO represent. Izuku felt better than he had in weeks, flying through the simulated city with fire trailing behind him. Bakugo right at his side blasting through the air as Ida and Todoroki skated through the streets with Siro swinging overhead, dodging quirks and bodily attacks while leading them towards the trap his class made. It was exactly what he needed. And then a small gust began to pick up, forcing him and Bakugo to land, looking up as the wind picked up, harsher and faster until everyone's target balls began to fly into the sky. All of you, trying so hard to become heroes it gets me excited. Isn't that Bakugo began, pointing up at someone floating in the air, directing the winds with a single hand. 
Izuku stepped forward a bit, frowning. That's gonna be a devastating attack, Izuku commented, his hand flexing a bit, unless of course, someone throws it off. Allow me to join you, Yurashi cheered, bringing his arm down and sending the balls rocketing back to the earth. FWOOM. Golden fire exploded into the air, causing many of the balls to swerve off course as the air currents rapidly heated and rose. In the end Yurashi only got a handful of outs, still enough to pass, but not nearly as big a showstopper as he thought it'd be. He turned his surprised gaze to a nearby roof, where Izuku was standing, flames curling around his visage as they slowly died down. He was grinning up at Yurashi, his hands itching for a fight despite the boy having already passed. Yurashi's smile disappeared as he glared down at the fire user, much to Izuku's confusion before he took off towards the exit. That was weird. Izuku muttered, looking at Bakugo. Who cares, let's keep going. Bakugo snapped, shooting off with Izuku right behind him as the other potential heroes chased after them. Don't let them escape one of them shouted, sending spindles shooting out of his back at Izuku, who easily dodged them and shot off a burst of flames from his palm to send him falling back. Come on guys, you can do better than that Izuku taunted as Eater ran by, grabbing the back of his uniform and then throwing him forward to kick a bullheaded hero student away from Bakugo, who was bouncing between the buildings and Todoroki's ice barricades, grinning maliciously as he destroyed one barricade and blasted its debris back at their pursuers. T-O-D-O-R-O-K-I. Shoto looked up, perplexed by the group of ninja that were now surrounding them. We've been waiting for this moment we have Sage in high school shall defeat a RGH. Don't leave your back exposed. Izuku chastised as he blasted the leader with a hot fireball, the splash singing the few nearby, forcing them to jump away, two surged forward, super-powered punches smashing the roof into rubble as large nails and nuts slammed into the building face, thrown by others. Shit these guys are a problem. Izuku growled, backflipping to try and hide behind a hastily erected ice wall from Todoroki, only for both of them to be forced to retreat as more of the improvised projectiles slammed through the ice, neither boy able to do a thing to the shiny surface. That's pure tungsten you're trying to melt. One of them taunted. Good luck getting through that. Fuck off Bakugo roared as he suddenly darted between two of them, slamming his hands into their chests and sending them flying with medium-sized explosions. Keep going Ada urged them, sliding through attacks and debris, several other schools still hot on his trail, some getting caught up in the attacks from the Seijin students and hastily thrown tape traps Ciro had made. The tape swinging teen far ahead of them, we can't afford to be stopped. Ada's right, let's go Izuku snapped, blasting off with a powerful jet of fire from all four of his limbs. Todoroki right behind him on an iceberg, Bakugo was still screaming profanities all the way as he blasted his way through the air. Hey guys Yuraka shouted, flagging them down into the right alley, Izuku immediately cut his fire, and slid into the alley just as Ida drifted into the lane. Bakugo landed on the roof, no doubt to ward off any who were coming by air. Todoroki turned on his heel, foot slamming down to send a wave of ice at the incoming teens, giving himself a few seconds to dive into the alleyway, rolling to the end of it where Izuku was crouched waiting. Get them. They cornered themselves. Nowhere to go now you ape brats. Izuku grinned as they all flooded into the decent-sized alleyway. Oh no, whatever will we do? Izuku laughed tauntingly. Release. Dumpsters came crashing down at the mouth of the alley, forcing several to jump out of the way. What the one tried to cry out, only for a large tail to come down and a heavy strike to his back, making him stick to several purple balls lining the walls, several others joining him as Ajira whirled through them. Tornado tail dance he cried out as Kirishima punched a few others into the sticky balls, others fell hard to the ground as bolas and nets tangled them up. Others screamed as shadowy arms suddenly dragged them into the buildings. Kaminari now. And suddenly their attackers were gone, replaced by a single blonde kid jumping down from the rooftop. Indiscriminate shock 1.4 million volts. The golden arcs of electricity immediately fried everyone in the alley. All right guys hurry and get your outs Ida ordered, already getting his own as the others quickly ran into the alleyway. I got two with my pepper acid Mina cheered as she and Takoyami walked out of the apartment building as their passing was announced. First time I got to use it in the field. The darkness was very eager today. Takoyami droned, grunting when Hagakure nearly bowled him over in her bid to slam into Mina with a flying hug. They didn't even see me or Sato we took him down easy she gushed. Watch out. The four teens immediately doved to the side as Izuku crashed into the street beside them. The dumpsters Yuraka had dropped were gone, speared to the neighboring building with giant nails. Todoroki was currently throwing up ice walls to stop other gigantic projectiles while Kirishima was hurling them back, growling when they would suddenly decrease in size. You guys get out of here. Izuku ordered, flames flickering off the tips of his fingers. The only ones left are me, Todoroki and Kirishima, so dip out. Kicked their asses Midori Amina cheered as they took off at a jog. Izuku kicked off the ground, flames spurring him on as he dodged several and large nails in midair. With a grunt he kicked off of one of the nails, landing beside Kirishima, Meteor he commanded. 
With a grin Kirishima grabbed him by the back of his uniform and began spinning. Rahi roared as he threw Izuku towards the rooftops, the boy unleashing a torrent of flames to spur him on. With a backflip he landed on his hands, spinning and spewing fire from his feet, causing the Seijin students to shout in surprise and pain. A couple of them falling into the alley to be saved by ice slides conjured by Shoto. One tried to go for Izuku, only to be tased from behind as Momo jumped in. Thought you were already done. Izuku drawled, kneeing the final one in the stomach. I have my first out, was making sure everyone else got theirs. She explained, looking down into the alleyway, Kirishima and Shoto were already outing their last person, let's get going, before any other groups attack. Whatever you say, Vice Pries. Izuku said, quickly tapping two out before joining his friends on the ground, Momo right behind him. We rocked that shit Kirishima cheered as they walked down the street, several remaining teams giving them glares as they left. All of us passed the first section we roll. Can't argue with that. Izuku hummed, grinning. The beginning was a bit dodgy, miscalculated how many were gonna be on our asses. Enough. Shoto grunted, those Seijin students had a vendetta. They all did. Momo agreed, Midoriya's call was correct, they were definitely looking to crush us. Instead we crushed them Bekugo snarled as they neared the exit, where the others of their class were waiting, bunch of losers. They were challenging and tough opponents and you should not be disparaging them Ida scolded Bekugo, who rolled his eyes. Speak for yourself four eyes. Can't you ever just be nice to people? Katsuki Uraka asked asked, smiling up at him as he grumbled. I think it's physically impossible for him to be nice. Izuku said conversationally, in fact, his attitude hasn't changed since we were four. Oh fuck off Deku Bekugo snapped, swiping at the fire user who ducked under his grasp laughing all the while. Soon they were back with their class, eagerly talking about their own skirmishes within the test. Izuku spied Inasa happily talking with a less than enthused third year. With a sigh Izuku trotted over, yo, Inasa right he asked as he approached. Hainasa turned around, eyes narrowing slightly. Look, I think we got off on the wrong foot, he began, nervously scratching the back of his head. Figured we could bury the hatchet before we continue on in the exams you know. Oh, I'm sorry, did I offend you Inasa sneered, making Izuku clench his fist, his hand falling from the back of his head. Hey man, I was just trying to Izuku started, bristling when Inasa scoffed. Save it, he spat, shouldering past Izuku, who whirled around. Hey asshole. Hold on Midoriya, Kirishima said, stepping in the irate boy's way. Just leave it man, he's not worth it. Izuku growled and spat out embers, guy needs to get over himself. He muttered. Shoto stepped up to Izuku's side, he's been glaring at both of us all day. He said quietly, watching as Inasa rejoined his Shikesu counterparts, perhaps he has a problem with flame users. He's got a problem with his attitude. Izuku griped. Having trouble making friends hothead Bakugo grunted as Izuku leaned against the wall, arms crossed. Fuck off. He groaned, making Bakugo Bakugo laugh. All right kids, gather round. The Hero Association representative called. The second part of the test is about to begin. Izuku kicked off the wall, standing next to Kaminari as others gathered. Our next portion of the test will be point-based dealing and rescue. For that purpose he pressed a button and everyone stared in shock as the grounds they'd used for their first test was destroyed. Buildings crashing down as a landslide took part of the artificial mountain into the man-made lake, prompting a miniature tsunami and flood into the canyon. Holy shit. Kaminari whispered. All that money to build this stuff and they just blow it up. Kirishima muttered. Hold on, guys look there's Mina started. A villain attack has thrown the city and its surrounding territories into shambles. You are the first responders on the scene, your job is to save them. Izuku whistled as they watched hundreds of people begin to walk into the carnage. Many looked like they'd been injured, with realistic makeup covering arms, legs and faces. These good people from the Help Us Company are professional actors, they will be your pedestrians in need. You all start with 100 points, for every misstep you will lose points as determined by the HUC actors. Anything above a 70 is passing, your time begins now. Almost immediately everyone dispersed, UA stayed together for the most part, until Bakugo suddenly split off, you'll just slow me down he sneered as he exploded away, Kirishima and Kaminari hot on his heels. I'm surprised he stuck with us for this long. Izuku sighed wearily. Midoriya, go ahead with Ida and Yuraka they might need your fire Momo called to him as the two aforementioned teens were already quite a ways ahead. On it. Izuku confirmed, blasting into the sky, feet smoking as he free fell to Ida's side. Bursts of fire from his souls keeping him at the same pace with him. Guess you'll go back and tell them where they're needed Izuku asked. When I can, however, my immediate concern is evacuation Ida exclaimed. And I'm for moving heavy stuff Yuraka cheered. I'll help how I can then. Izuku said, let's hit it. Yo Shindo had to admit, those stupid UA brats were decent. Even now as he ran in a child HUC actor to the base camp a few of the third years had created. Midoriya was jumping in with two under his arms, the Ada boy likewise carrying an old man. Dropping him off with a list of what the man needed before taking off back into the destroyed city, Midoriya stayed behind cooling off with the help of a hurried water bottle tossed to him by one of his classmates. Miss you in the first portion of the test. Izuku said as he jogged up to his side, following him back towards the ruins. Shame. 
Yo said with mock sincerity, it would have been great to see how we matched up. It would have been great to kick your ass too. Izuku said cheerfully, making a tick mark spring up on Yo's forehead. Come on man, drop the goody two shoes act, it didn't fool me back on the street. Yo scoffed, whatever, he grumbled. Yeesh, can any of you guys lighten up for a bit Izuku drawled, his steps lagging as an explosion shook the grounds. That came from the evacuation center. The two teens immediately took off running, Izuku using his fist to jet himself forward, his eyes narrowing as he sees gang orca stride through a hole in the wall of the arena, dozens of psychics following, firing off globs of quick dry cement from launchers in their hands. A few hit students were using their quirks to cover the others as they evacuated the injured. Keep the civilians safe Yo shouted as they darted past them. We'll hold them off watch and learn first he jumped forward, slamming his hands into the ground as he shouted T-R-E-M-O-R-I-N-G Earth. The ground shattered as a powerful vibration exploded out of Yo's hands, sending the henchmen stumbling to the ground, some getting trapped between the shards of earth while others staggered to their feet, only to be fried into unconsciousness by Izuku, who capitalized on his senior's attack, fireballs blasting out of his fists and feet. Glad you're not all hot air. Izuku said, jumping back to his side, a sweep of his arm sending a wave of fire that kept the remaining henchmen back. Way too easy. Yo bragged. Is that so? Izuku cried out in pain as a large arm backhanded him across the field. Midoriya Yo started to call, only to stop when a large hand closed around his head. Only two rear guards to cover the evacuation this won't do at all. Yo cried out in pain as a sonic attack blasted directly into his body. His eyes rolled into the back of his head as Gang Orca dropped him. It seems none of you are ready to be heroes yet. He rumbled. Don't be so sure Izuku snarled as he leapt out of the pile of rubble he'd been slapped into. The fireballs he launched splashing against the number 10 hero, who whirled around and swung a fist at Izuku, who vaulted off the metal guard and landed hard on a pile of rubble, firing off several more fireballs. Two connected while the last three suddenly veered off, what the Izuku started, eyes narrowing when Inasa came flying in. Inasa, fall back your winds throwing off my fire. Then retreat, I have this Inasa snapped back, a quick wave of his hand and sending gale force winds at the orca, only for them to be rendered useless, as an ice wall in case gang orca. Midori I saw your flames Todoroki began. Enough talk, get ready to roast this base Izuku ordered as the ice shattered. I'm built to swim through the arctic, you really thought ice was your best shot he taunted, it really revitalized me. Izuku roared as he brought both hands forward to send a wave of fire at Orca, Todoroki doing the same as Inasa attacked once more with gale force winds, sending the fire wide and negating his attack. Inasa they need you for evacuation Izuku snapped, relocating as Shoto snarled out, you're getting in our way move. I don't need the son of Endeavor and his lackey giving me orders. Inasa shouted back at them. Jesus fuck Todoroki, see if you can't slow Orca down with ice. All we can do if this stubborn jarhead won't listen Izuku bit out as he fell back, letting Todoroki unleash a skyscraper like iceberg. What will you do Shoto asked. Something stupid probably. Izuku grunted feigning to run away and using the moment to try and drag Yo out of the way. Wait you are fine you asshole Izuku snapped, shaking the older boy before he shoved him away. I wouldn't say fine Dillweed. Yo sneered, getting up on shaky feet as they watched Todoroki's attacks shatter again. And again while the gale force winds did little to deter Orca, that attack really hurt. But my quirk helped keep the edge off, I was gonna unleash a surprise attack when you were able to get a little closer, but those two firsties fucked it up. One in particular. Izuku muttered, can you do that same attack again by us sometime? Of course I can but what do you have planned he asked curiously. Just get him off foot. Izuku ordered darting to the side with a jet of flame from his left foot as Yo raised his arms as Orca got within arm's distance of the two boys still desperately fighting. T-R-E-M-O-R-I-N-G Earth Yo shouted, slamming his hands into the ground, groaning as his body shuddered painfully. The ground cracked and shifted once more, throwing Gang Orca off balance, but not before he put in a set and Shoto out of commission. Izuku landed in a slide, arms starting to go through the familiar movements. Now or never Izuku get over yourself he gritted out, willing himself desperately to produce lightning. And for the first time since their summer camp, pure electrical power began dancing on the ends of his fingers. Take this dragon's breath he shouted, jutting his extended fingers out. A bolt of lightning flying faster than the others could react, slamming into Gang Orca's raised defensive arm. With a boom the area was covered in dust and debris as Orca was sent flying back by the force. Izuku fell to his knees as he felt his stamina drain sharply. Guess I was being too hopeful in that. He groaned, breath ragged as Yo stumbled to his feet, both tensing as Orca's henchmen tried to rally, only to be taken down rapidly as Ajiro, and Takoyami came rushing in with a few other students from various schools. That was crazy. Yo sighed, hard to imagine he was holding back. Yeah, we're lucky that worked. He muttered. I wouldn't say that, child. Izuku grunted as suddenly Gang Orca was back, his suit a bit ragged, and his arms shook with lingering pain from being electrocuted. But that didn't stop him from unleashing a sonic attack. 
All Izuku felt was pain before he was greeted by darkness. When he woke up he was in a decently large infirmary, several students lying on beds around him, including Yo who was bent over on his bed holding his head and groaning. Izuku could sympathize, his entire body ached, especially his head, Yo. He rasped out, grimacing at the dry taste in his mouth. The older boy looked up, grimacing a bit, you're awake. You sound so concerned. He said dryly. Yo scoffed, was worried I'd get in trouble for letting Ms. Joke's kid get injured by gang orca. In your defense I did incredibly stupid. And that's what I told your teacher as well as MS. Joke. He said smugly. You're an asshole. Pot. Meat kettle. The two boys chuckled tiredly. More out of the absurdity of the situation than anything else. How you feelin' firsty Yo asked. Like someone tried to violently shake my bones out of my body. He grumbled, how long has it been? Only about 20 minutes. Yo said, Doc said we should be good to go see our scores once he gives us a bit of a heal. Great. He sighed, closing his eyes for a bit until Yo shoved him when the doctors came by. Soon he was limping out of the infirmary with Yo. I suppose we gotta at least act like we tolerate each other. Yo sighed as they went. Or we don't and say we did. Izuku quipped, besides, you're good in a fight. I can at least pull back on stomping on your little innocent boy routine. It is not a routine. Yo growled, offended. Sure it isn't, I'll see you later Tremor. He said, walking away after they passed Yo's classmates, who were looking at them in confusion. Yo Midori Asato called as Izuku reached their class, you're alive. Takes a lot to kill me, he said, clasping hands with Sato as everyone else clamored around him. What did I miss? Todoroki and that wind guy were able to slow down gang orca until time ran out. About two minutes, Ajiro said, just after you were knocked out. They'll be posting the results in about five minutes, Momo informed them all as she approached. Oh, Emiridia, good to see you're healed up. Well as can be he shrugged, wincing a bit at the pain that shot through his shoulders at the movement. How'd you and Airhead do it he asked Todoroki as the boy walked up. I started producing flames and he used his wind to blow them directly into Gang Orca to create a fire tornado. He said quietly, had we not done that, I dare say Orca might have been able to directly attack the evacuees. At least he pulled his head out of his ass for that long. Izuku grumbled. You shouldn't hold a grudge, Ida admonished him. He will one day be one of our allies in the fight against evil. Doesn't mean he's not a jackass. Izuku shot back. Excuse me. The class turned as one towards the four Shaiksu students walking up to them, lead by a tall second year covered in long hair. My name is Nagamasa Mura, second year representative at Shaiksu. I came because I heard there was some grudges to be had amongst our schools, and I would like to put them to rest, so we may proceed forward as friends. He motioned to Nayamasa, who stepped forward towards Izuku and Shoto. I apologize for how I acted towards you too, he said. Bowing so low he slammed his head into the ground once more. Don't give yourself a concussion over that. Izuku exclaimed while Shoto just stared in confusion. I was behaving poorly, so poorly I was acting like the person I hated most. So for that I apologize but just know I still don't like either of you very much but will strive to work towards tolerating you. Gee, so nice. Izuku deadpanned, before being nudged by Ida, who stared at him sternly. Yeah, yeah, apology accepted. Shoto nodded with him. I hope we'll all be able to work together next time Yue and Shikesu run into each other. Nagamasa said, shaking hands with Ida. Yue always appreciates his allies, the young Ida son proclaimed. All right children, gather round, your scores have been posted and attendant called. Izuku walked over, falling into a spot by Bakugo. How'd saving people go with you he asked. Bakugo grunted, shitty hair and Pikachu didn't slow me down. But did you slow them down Izuku asked, giving him a shit-eating grin when he glared at him. The two started scanning the panels, Izuku let out a sigh of relief when he saw the 71 by his name, 71, what'd you get Kaken? Bakugo stiffened as he finally found his name, what he whispered. Izuku's eyes zeroed in on Bakugo's name, his own eyes widening as well when he saw the 68 holy shit. Izuku breathed, dude, I'm sorry, shut it. Bakugo snapped, turning away angrily, Yuraka stepped towards him worriedly, only to be stopped by Izuku. Give him a minute, he whispered, looking around as his classmates started celebrating. Everyone cheering as they learned they'd passed, everyone save for Bakugo, and Todoroki, who looked surprised to see the 69 by his name. They must have counted my argument with Inasa against me, Todoroki said faintly. Izuku winced when he realized that's probably where the majority of his lost points were. He'd probably only been saved by his last attack. The two strongest guys in our class failed Kaminari whispered in shock. The power dynamic is shifting. Mina whispered back, thinking of his 95, we're the top dogs now. Don't get ahead of yourself, shrimp. Izuku scoffed, making Mina whimper, still it's unreal. To those of you who failed, there will be supplemental classes provided to go over your weak points. This will be a six-month course, at the end of which you will be presented with your provisional licenses. The tension in Shoto's shoulders slowly bled out, while Bakugo just scoffed, crossing his arms glumly. Don't worry, you'll still get your license. Yoraka cheered quietly to him, hands behind her back as she leaned into his side, making the boy untense just a bit. Yeah, yeah. He grumbled, shooting Izuku a look when he chuckled. Shut it Deku, you barely passed. Still passed, he shot back, making Bakugo steam. Still, you guys know what this means right? 
Mina and Toru began cheering, party time. Izuku strolled out of his room in blue jeans and a white t-shirt with the kanji for tuxedo on its front, putting on an old leather jacket as he walked downstairs where those who wanted to go out were waiting. Todoroki, Momo and Ada had begged off to sleep, none of the three wanting to go to a club, but they'd been overridden by Mina and Toru, who convinced Momo and Ada that it was good for team building, while also telling Todoroki his father would hate it. So they were begrudgingly tagging along, Bakugo, Sato, Shoji, Koda, Suyu and Takoyami would be staying, Bakugo because he didn't feel like celebrating, Sato, Shoji and Takoyami because they really didn't want to go, and no amount of bribing could sway them, so Yoraka stayed behind as well, turning Bakugo's night of brooding into a movie night with his girlfriend. The rest of the class had spent the two hours after their tests getting ready for the dance. Kaminari was dressed much the same as Izuku. Though his jacket had yellow accents and he had a chain on his hip, Ida had worn tan slacks, and a polo shirt tucked in, with Emomo dressed just as casually in a ruffled shirt and long skirt. Mina and Toru had collaborated with Jiru to produce their best club wear that was still appropriate for Ida, and Momo's strict dress code. Mintia had worn a button-up in slacks, and was under strict orders to not get them kicked out of the club acting his usual way. Hiroshima was wearing a red tank top with the word manly stamped on it, pairing it with black jeans. Ajiro looked absolutely uncomfortable, dressed much like Ada save for his green polo was unbuttoned. Siro was wearing a black and orange jersey and baggy jeans. Nice fit dude, Siro complimented Izuku. Love the tux. Thanks, I got it tailored myself. Izuku chuckled, looking up as the door opened and Yui walked in with Kendo, Shizaki, Tetsu Tetsu, Awase, Kaibara and Joruta, all of them dressed for the club. Yui Izuku greeted his girlfriend, intertwining their hands together when she got close enough, glad you guys could make it, how'd the test go? We passed, Yui responded, smoothing out the skirt of Nurnai's gray dress, giving him a small smile, how'd you do? Passed, barely, as I was giving us our notes come class on Monday, but I'm sure most of my points were lost cause of a small spat we had with the shikes who first year. You fought him she asked. Nah, he had a stick up his butt. He corrected, sparing a glance at Shizaki, who was watching him like a hawk. He'd expressed his distaste with Shizaki's lifestyle with Yui, who told him in no uncertain terms that Shizaki was one of her friends, and so he'd play nice. Including watching his words when around her, Shizaki, he greeted respectfully, keeping his voice neutral. Surprised to see you today, didn't think a club would be your scene. I am going to make sure nothing untoward is happening, she said stiffly. It was her one condition on keeping Madoma in the dark about going on this little trip, Kendo explained. Don't worry, this is a teen's club. A new voice joined in, Jin walked in followed closely by the majority of Class 1R, though they were missing Kayaba, Sorohiko and Yanis, none of which were too invested in going to a teen club, and Peterson and Soom who were already heading for the gates, they don't serve alcohol or anything like that. And we'll have our escorts as well Ida exclaimed, arms chopping robotically. Kimiri walked over to Izuku, bumping fists with his fellow fire user, figured I could use the socialization. He said lightly, trying to keep his anxiety out of his voice while Ramos nodded as he walked up. Not been to many party. Ramos mumbled, be fun. Definitely, Izuku said, if you guys gotta go, just let us know beforehand. I heard Iro and Paku are gonna be our escorts, they'll be playing Paisho in a nearby shop. Paisho Kimiri asked in confusion as Jin joined them. Come on guys, Tsum and Peterson are already down with our ride for the night, let's get to partying. So can, Izuku said as they all left Iro and Paku at a tea shop, making their way towards a densely populated club, the line reaching two streets down. Ken ignored the line, leading them all towards the front. Who's the guy who invited us here? You'll know him. Ken drawled with a grin. Confidently striding up to the entrance, a large blue sign with white neon lights proudly proclaiming the building to be the Southern Wolf. Hell if the name doesn't give it away, don't know what will. No fucking way. Jin snorted disbelievingly, getting surprised stares from the other UA students. Cussing is unbecoming of a hero in training. Ibarra sniffed, leveling an impressive glare at the earthbender. As sorry. He chuckled sheepishly, rubbing the back of his head while Izuku stared at him in surprise. Since when does he apologize for something so stupid? Hey Akuma, come up here with me. Izuku's eyes snapped forward as he realized Ken was right in front of the bouncer, who was keeping a firm hand on the velvet rope that separated them. The teens waiting in line complaining at their group cutting, Izuku strode forward, hands in his pockets as he reached Ken's side. See, Midoriya Ken cheered, jabbing a thumb at Izuku. Boy wonder, flaming pile of hero that took out Stain, personally knows the owner here. The bouncer a large, broad man with a boxer's face looked down at the tiny clipboard, his intense gaze darting between them and the clipboard, you're down for the VIP room. He grunted, removing the velvet rope and stepping to the side. Enjoy the night. Alright party people let's run it Soom cheered as she and Mina practically pushed everyone into the club. 
The music was pulsating with multicolored lights flashing from the stage, the large dance floor surrounded by white leather booths that were lined with blue neon strips. A cool mist hung in the air, Izuku shivered at the way it reminded him of a fridge. He shook it off as he sidestepped a waiter in what seemed to be a parka. Carrying fizzy drinks and table food to a nearby gaggle of high schoolers, his eyes caught the sight of what looked like a one-way window, the dull glass weakly reflecting the lasers and lights from the dance floor. This place is pretty neat. Himiri whistled, keeping close to Amos and Jin who was suspiciously trying to get closer to Shizaki. Excuse me, Mr. Midoriya. Please don't call me that. Izuku said, shivering once more, this time in revulsion. That just feels wrong. He turned around and was immediately tense to find two men in suits and sunglasses. The boss wants to speak with you right quick. The one on the right said easily, he asks it be a one-on-one -on -one conversation. VIP is in the back for the rest of you. Guess I gotta go bow down to the guy who got us in. Izuku sighed, his shoulders slumping a bit, Yui patting his back comfortingly. You wanna tell me who I'm going to meet, Kan? I got an idea. But, nah, not as much fun. Ken laughed as he darted onto the dance floor, dragging surprised Peterson with him. You sure you don't want backup? Kimuri asked, staring distrustfully at the goons. I'll be fine. Izuku reassured him, pumping Amos's shoulder good-naturedly. Go have fun. Yui watched him go, eyes narrowing just a bit before she was ushered towards a free booth by Shizaki, Ada and Momo, Jin clearing the way for them as politely as he could as he followed another bouncer to the VIP room which was raised slightly higher than the dance floor, and with two entrances to allow anyone who wants to easy access to the dance floor. I don't like this, Shizaki sniffed, secret meetings at a nightclub under the pretense of a party. It ain't like that. Jin said reassuringly as they go to their seats, Jin scanned the crowd, nodding to himself when he saw most everyone dancing, save for Jiru who was trying to convince the DJ to play some song or other, and Jorida who was trying to order something at the bar. Kan's the one who used Izuku's name to get us in here. He kinda backed him into a corner to meet the owner. It was very rude for him to do that. Ada huffed, though I assume it's okay because he alluded to Izuku knowing who the owner is. Jin snorted, yeah, the name really gives it away. He was never one for subtlety. Izuku was led through a few back halls and up a flight of stairs before the two men took positions by a wooden door. Boss is in there, we'll be out here, make sure we don't get called in there. One of them warned as he opened the door, letting Izuku stroll in, taking note of the blue, white themes, the Inuit bone and wood weapons on the walls and what he hoped was a faux polar bear rug on the floor. He looked ahead to the desk sitting in front of the one-way window, where his benefactor was currently going through papers and writing furiously. Katara. Izuku asked in shock, making the girl look up. She was dressed in a nice blazer, and blouse combo, her blue eyes widened in surprise when she saw him. Oh I thought they'd take longer to get you up here. She said as she stood up, quickly putting the papers she was working on in the drawer. Don't worry about the bear pelt, it's fake. Why he wanted that she devolved into a quiet tirade against what Izuku assumed was her brother. Anyways, I'm glad we contacted Kan when we did. Things have been a bit hectic since Sokka decided he wanted to expand and we, are you staring at me like that? She asked in confusion at the incredulous look Izuku was giving her. Sorry it's just I expected Sokka not while you, he said, shaking his head again. You're not usually one to follow in his schemes. This scheme actually came with a 10-year plan and a viable money strategy. Katara chuckled, Sokka worked on this place instead of going to high school like Gran Gran wanted. I say it worked out for him. Izuku whistled, and you decided to drop school too. Not at all, she said, shaking her head. I go to Shizuoka High. I just help where I can are you still at UA? She questioned, smiling happily when Izuku started to chuckle, ducking his head bashfully. Yeah, just got our provisional licenses actually. Only two in the whole department failed and they'll be getting them after a provisional course. That's great she cheered for him. No wonder Kan was so insistent about letting you guys in here. Thanks for that by the way, these guys, they've earned a day off. Izuku said, bowing to her. Oh come on, we're friends, you know you'll always be on the list if Sokka has a say in it. She teased, he's been wanting to help you ever since you got him out of that jam with the police and I gave him a good beating for that I couldn't believe he left you behind. It was my plan. Izuku shrugged, scratching the back of his head as he looked away. I know you guys were struggling. Your gran wouldn't have survived if he'd gotten locked up. We owe you so much. She said, smiling warmly at him, a smile that he returned before he seemed to shake himself. So, he began, taking a step back, while Katara did the same, both averting their eyes a bit, was there anything else other than wanting to catch up? Actually yes, she said, her voice turning grave. Big Tiny met Sokka the other day, gave him a message to give to you. Izuku raised an eyebrow, why wouldn't he just contact Tsum? Or Jin? He asked cautiously. He said he's sure his phones are being monitored, and needed to talk with you face to face, he figured Sokka would be able to get in contact since he's friends with Kan. And he just wants to talk with me face to face. Izuku asked disbelievingly, seems like a lot of trouble for something so small. Can't be too sure these days. She said with a frown, there's been a lot more street gangs since All Might's retirement. Some of them are harmless and barely do anything other than harass people. But we've had a few in here trying to demand protection money. Roughed up one of our bouncers pretty good too before Sokka and Haru intervened. 
Who was it? Izuku almost demanded to know, a bit of smoke trailing out of the corner of his mouth. Cool it. She ordered, a small whip-like tendril sprouting from a water bottle on the table, flicking his forehead in a stinging attack. Sokka had it handled, but it was still concerning it happened. If Big Tiny is going through this kind of trouble to get to you, I'd be concerned. Izuku frowned but slowly nodded. All right, I got next weekend free. I'll go down and speak with him. Do you have his address? She pulled a slip of paper out and handed it over. I'll let Sokka know. Thank you, Izuku. I haven't done anything yet. Izuku chuckled as he pocketed the paper. Rights were the tabloids true. Her smile turned sly as she asked this, making Izuku blush, you and rule. Yeah, so what? Izuku stuttered. Nothing, Katara giggled, holding her hands up placatingly. I just remember you as that little ten-year-old who was running around proclaiming girls were a waste of time. Yeah, that mentality didn't last very long. Izuku laughed, between your water whip and Sum's antlers, I learned pretty quick. He looked at his watch, I better go back down and mingle with the guys, don't want to miss the entire celebration right? Right? Sorry for keeping you. She apologized, smiling as she ushered him out. Oh, and food and drinks are on the house, make sure everyone knows to go crazy. The pulsating music was oddly soothing to Kimuri as he watched Jin awkwardly try and start a conversation with Shizaki while Momo and Ida had a spirited debate with Joruta something about hero law or other. He hadn't kept much track of it while Yui was absent-mindedly on her phone, giving simple, one-worded answers to Shizaki or Momo when they talked to her. On the dance floor he could see Tsum, Mina, Jiru and Hagakure dancing alongside Siro, Kan, Kaminari, Kirishima Peterson and Owais. Mina was at the bar talking with Yanagi, who knew what those two were talking about. Amos was already edging towards the door, apparently ready to make a run for it. Hold on Ramos. Kimuri told him, wait for Midoriya to get back so he knows where we're headed. You two won't stay longer. Momo asked worriedly. Yeah, not our scene. Kimuri sighed, running a hand through his hair. I was in solitary for a lot longer than I want to think about and Amos there hasn't had much interaction with anyone that's not JDC personnel so he trailed off, chuckling sheepishly at the confused looks he got from the UA students. Hey he so yeah, not my scene. Then why did you come? Ida asked, not to sound rude, but you didn't have to subject yourself to something that puts you on edge, and I apologize if our invitation seemed pushy. Kimuri laughed at the absurdity of Ida's proclamation. It's all good, honest, he said, waving Ida's concerns off, if I'm being truthful. Sitting in that dorm will make me go crazier than being here it's nicer, but it still feels like a cell when I'm in. Perhaps you can do some redecorating to help that, Yamomo suggested. I know Todoroki was able to put tatami mats into his room, as well as hardwood floors. I'm sure you'd be able to change the room however you wish. He really got tatami mats in there. Jin asked in surprise. MHMM, when we asked him how he did it, he said hard work. Ada chuckled, I assume he did it all himself. It was really impressive. Izuku said as he slid into the booth beside Yui, kissing her cheek as he settled. Don't worry about food or drinks either, Bossman says it's all covered as a congratulations. I will go tell everyone now Ida said, standing up and marching away. Guy's got a bit of a stick don't he? Kimuri muttered. He's high strung but he's a good guy. Izuku said, I'd trust him with my life any day of the week. High praise coming from you Akuma. Kimuri mused. Yomidori Ken shouted diving into the firebender's lap, much to Yui's annoyance, how was your meeting with Sokka? It wasn't Sokka, it was Katara. Izuku said, tossing Ken out of his lap and into Kimuri, who shoved him out of the booth, and I'm not happy about being ambushed like that. It was Katara. Ken exclaimed, jumping up, no way Sokka said he was gonna be the one meeting you. And once again Sokka was able to lie to your face and get away with it. Peterson scoffed as she strolled over with Tsum at her side. Typical. Who's Katara? Momo looking at Izuku with an intense gaze as she hummed. An oldie friend. Izuku muttered, sweating under Yui's glare. A year older than I am. Her brother was four or five years. Guy was one hell of a brawler. He had to be since he was quirkless. I helped him out of a jam that landed me in the JDC. So he's paying it back with this party. And his sister was the one to greet you. Shizaki asked suspiciously. She said he was busy trying to set up another location. Izuku explained, shifting slightly at her accusatory stare, then told me everything's on the house, I didn't look too far into it. It's good to hear Katara and Sokka are doing well. Jin interjected, causing Shizaki to look at him, she and her grandmother helped us out a lot when we were younger, hot meals, a place to sleep if we needed it, clothes that didn't have holes in them, we owe it all to Grand Gran and Katara. Shizaki's stare softened and Yui stopped giving Izuku a hard stare, they sound like lovely people. She relented, she looked up as a distinctly American song came on, I love this song. She remarked, making Jin perk up. W would you like to dance? He stuttered out, ignoring Tsum and Kan snickering at him, or the way Izuku and Kimuri waggled their eyes at him. Only Amos was giving him a nervous thumbs up. Shizaki turned her gaze to Jin, giving him a small smile, and a nod of her head, I would like that. She said, rising and moving to the dance floor, daintily taking Jin's hand, making him silently follow her, a thunderstruck gaze upon his visage. I don't believe it. Izuku chuckled as Joruta approached Tsum. Might I persuade the lady for a dance? He asked, holding a hand out and making Tsum grin. 
Don't be so stiff about it, she teased, taking his hand and quickly heading towards the dance floor. Guess that's our cue, Izuku said, jumping up and bringing Yui with him. Both eagerly heading off to the dance floor while Peterson and Kan took their spots. Kimuri smiled as he watched them all descend onto the dance floor, his hands tapping against the table. Muri, Amos whispered quietly, practically vibrating in his seat. We're going Amos. Kimuri reassured standing up and flashing Momo. Kan and Peterson a smile, see you guys later. You both have a lovely night with Iro and Paku. Momo said kindly as they left. Later guys Kan waved as Peterson opened a menu giving them a smile and wave. Kimuri glanced about as they stepped out of the club, the cool night air bringing with it a muted quiet that surprised him even with an entire line of club going hopefuls milling about and talking. He was surprised to see Ada standing just outside the door, quietly talking into his phone. Had no choice my classmates it was said to be a team building exercise no, I didn't want to miss snow that's hardly fair. Kimuri slowed down a bit, pretending to be looking at his own phone while he eavesdropped. I promise I'll make it up to you we can go to that new art expose that you've been wanting to go to my treat off course anything for Yao okay? I promise I'll call before I turn in for the night goodbye. Ida hung up and turned around, freezing when he found Kimuri standing there on his phone, Amos peeking around his friend at Ida. Oh Ida. Kimuri feigned surprise as he put his phone up, clapping the other teen on the shoulder, almost didn't see you, what are you doing out here? Taking a phone call. Ada said, raising a hand robotically, business I'm afraid, don't worry I took care of it. I'm sure you did. Kimuri agreed, his lips twitching, me and Amos are heading to that tea shop uncle's at, we'll meet y'all at the end of the night. Excellent I must be returning to the others have a splendid night Ada proclaimed, speed walking back inside. Wonder who the girl is. Kimuri spoke out loud as he headed across the street, he sounded whipped, right. Ebel nai need a vuzo kipigi pryli a persona a pharaoh. Amos babbled nervously. I agree, totally whipped. Kimuri chuckled while Amos sighed wearily. Izuku stared out the window of the bus as Paku drove them back to Yue. Most everyone was asleep. The combination of free food and all-night dancing having tired most everyone out. Yue was nestled between Shizaki and Kendo, Izuku sitting up front with Jin and Iro, having filled them in on everything Katara had told him. Kan peeked over his seat. So you think something's going down? Jin asked. I don't know, Izuku muttered, but Big Tiny wouldn't go through the trouble if it wasn't important. I'll probably take a train next weekend we got permission for that weekend to see family right? That you do, but go forward with caution nephew. Ira warned him, old forces have been stirring, and I fear what awaits you. Don't worry about us uncle. Izuku said with a reassuring smile, we'll be ready for anything. The first day of classes was jarringly boring. They'd been through so much in so little time. The mundane classwork initially felt unreal to everyone. Izuku himself was dissociating a bit, finding it hard to concentrate as his mind continually went to what Big Tiny could possibly want from him that required an indirect form of communication. You could there Madabro? Hiroshima asked, making Izuku look up. When did they get to lunch? Yeah, just thinking. He said, shaking his head a bit before digging into the katsudan he'd somehow ordered. Pop said we were having a special informational class this afternoon. What do you think it is? No idea, but I heard the rehab guys already went through it. Kaminari said, Ken mentioned it when I saw them in the infirmary. Izuku looked up sharply at that, they're in the infirmary. He asked worriedly. Yeah, don't know what happened, but Ken said the class was fun at least. Kaminari tried to sound excited, but he definitely sounded scared. Yanis was in there too. Sato asked with a whistle, I thought that guy was indestructible. Guess someone finally found his limit. Hiroshima whispered in awe. Izuku grunted a bit, toying with the idea of going to see them, but Yui settling down beside him distracted him. Did you hear anything about the rehab class in the infirmary? MHMM. You gonna tell me? He asked with a small smirk as she simply began to eat. MMMMM. She hummed. Thanks babe. He said, kissing her forehead. Bunch of villains if you ask me. The whispered insult had Izuku's ears pricking up, glancing out of the corner of his eye to look at a few second year gen ed students whispering about something. Heard some of them were a part of a gang, how they get a chance with UA. It's that fire brat, isn't it? Another scoffed, a little louder, none of them realizing that the whole table of first-year heroic students were now listening with rapt attention, had to have wheedled his friends in somehow. How do you think he did it? Izuku asked, plopping himself down at their table, making the dishes on it shake as well as making the three students jump. His friends were staring worriedly, with Kaminari wondering just when the boy had moved. W what are you talking about? One stuttered. Yeah, we were having a private the other tried to say, but Izuku cut him off. Private conversations aren't heard across the lunchroom. He said coldly, so tell me how you think my friends cheated their way into UA. Go on, I'd love to hear all about it. Midoriya, come on man. Kaminari said, trying to keep the peace as he put his hand on his friend's shoulder, they're not worth it. Izuku gritted his teeth, then let a breath escape, yeah, you're right. Izuku muttered, getting up. They're just jealous anyways. Kaminari whispered as they reached their table. 
He thought he'd said it quietly enough, but one had hurt him. Jealous of what? He snapped. Izuku whirled around, smirking as Kaminari had just given him ammunition. Jealous that you couldn't get into heroics with two years of chances while these villains got in on merit alone. Makes you wonder what that says about you Izuku was cut off as the boy punched him in the jaw. It was a harsh hit, and he would be the first to admit it had rattled him. But he'd had worse, and the boy had just given him the green light to vent his current frustrations out on him. He came up with a biting uppercut that sent the boy crashing into the table, food and trays falling with a horrible clatter as the other two charged at Izuku, who bobbed and weaved between their sloppy punches before socking one in the stomach, making him double over in pain as his friend was suddenly restrained by Sato, Kirishima getting Izuku in a full Nelson. Come on guys this is seriously not manly Kirishima exclaimed, his chin hardening when the first gen ed student tried to punch him. A satisfying crack filled the air, as the idiot broke his hand on the sturdy hero's jaw. What is going on here? The thunderous shout had everyone quieting down. Izuku glanced back and cursed quietly under his voice when he saw Aizawa glaring at them all, Yui behind him, having gone to go get him when the altercation started. Kirishima quickly let Izuku go as the dark teacher stomped towards them. Well, he demanded, his voice ice cold. Teeth these guys attacked us the boy who just broke his hand said, for no reason. You were the one to throw the first punch, Sato pointed out. After your friend provoked us. Yeah, shouldn't have been talking shit about my friends. Izuku snapped back. Enough Aizawa snarled, his eyes flashing and making everyone go quiet. Everyone involved in the fight will be receiving detention. I will be reviewing the security footage to see who started it. His stare went straight to the gen ed boy, who'd paled drastically, and they will be given extra punishment. Everyone to class. Now, the group immediately dispersed, Izuku heading straight for the door before Aizawa's hand stopped him. Walk with me, it wasn't a choice. Izuku sighed as he followed his father in all but blood, glancing back at Yui, who was giving him a disappointed frown. That hurt more than the punch he'd just gotten. He sought the rest of the way to a nearby faculty exit, Aizawa pushing the door open and motioning for him to walk through, which he did without a single protest. Leaning against the wall as Aizawa stood in front of him, arms crossed. What happened? Aizawa asked again, his voice stern, but gentle. Overheard them talking about the rehab class. He said after a moment's pause, they called them villains. When I called them out on it they evaded until Kaminari came over and pulled me away. While we were walking away Kaminari whispered something about them being jealous, and one tried to call him out on it. Unlike them I repeated it and that's when he punched me. He rubbed his jaw, might have added something else but I didn't lie. So he threw the first punch, he reiterated. Izuku nodded mutely, can't lie and say I wasn't looking for it. He muttered, I've been on edge since Kamino, that's not an excuse. Aizawa sighed, pinching the bridge of his nose, what am I gonna do with you, problem child? He asked, send me to recovery girl to check my jaw. He questioned. Aizawa scoffed, I've seen you take worse. He muttered, you'll be serving detention with midnight tomorrow, don't be late. He turned back around to open the door, and next time, walk away, you can't start a fight with everyone that says something negative. You'll be fighting for the rest of your life. Later that afternoon. All right, today we're talking about the work studies I alluded to when we initially talked about your provisional licenses. Aizawa said to his class, everyone sitting with rapt attention as he continued, unlike your internships, this is purely on a voluntary basis, with the stipulation that the only heroes allowed to take on work study students are those with a proven track record of hosting such students. Now, to talk to you about the benefits and caveats of work studies, please welcome Mirio Tagata, Neji Hado, and Tamaki Amajiki. The three walked in and Izuku raised his eyebrow as the blue-haired girl suddenly shot towards him. Oh my god you're the fire guy does your fire keep you warm all the time? Usually he began, but she was already off, straight to Shoji, hey hey why do you wear that mask? Well actually, once again she was off, now grabbing onto Mina's horns, much to the girl's embarrassment. Oh you have horns can you feel when I'm touching them? Please stop. Mina pleaded. Izuku felt anger starting to bubble up, but before he could do anything, Aizawa was pulling Nejair back, enough. He said pointedly, you're all here for a reason, Amajiki, why don't you try? Amajiki stepped forward, an intense stare pinning everyone to his seat. So intense, Izuku thought, what kind of quirk does he have to be able to he sweat dropped as suddenly Amajiki was facing the wall, shaking in terror. It's no use, I try to imagine them as potatoes but it's still intimidating. He practically whimpered. Come on guys where's your spirit? Let me try the tint and rip off stepped forward. Hi Mirio Tagata here and the future is gonna be he flexed as he finished his sentence. Not a single person said anything. Terrible you were supposed to respond he laughed. Oh man that fell flat anyways. We're here to talk about work studies they're really great good for helping you refine fighting style. And quirk with an experienced veteran it also gives you a good insight on the goings on in a hero agency. Can't be that great if you're a part of it. Bakugo grumbled. Actually Mirio Tagata is currently the top of his class. Aizawa said, getting everyone's attention, this group is known as the Big Three, the strongest candidates in the hero course. Bullshit Bakugo snapped, that tin tin motherfucker is at the top. 
I wouldn't say the top, I bet Amajiki could beat me if he tried. Mirio laughed, slapping his friend on the shoulder. Please don't bring me into this. But if you really want to see what the work study can do for you he began, grinning. Then how about let's spar? The last class isn't out of the infirmary from this morning. Amajiki reminded him. That was you. Izuku questioned, eyes narrowing. Yep kinda got carried away, but I promise not to this time. I can't believe we're at this point again Aizawa sighed. But it's better you all see the kind of experience you get, let's go. Izuku popped his neck, glaring at Tagata, standing opposite of their entire class sans Todoroki. Are you sure you don't want to be a part of this Todoroki? Aizawa asked, looking at the boy standing on the sideline, but Hugo's participating as well. I don't feel I have the right, considering I failed. Todoroki muttered. Aizawa nodded, and looked back. This is a friendly spar Tagata, don't kill my class. Radio Erasure Mario said with a grin. All right, begin. Izuku got into a stance as Kirishima and Ajiro lunged for Tagata. Almost everyone flinched when the boy's clothes immediately began falling around him. Cover yourself up Jiru screamed, covering her eyes as she blushed furiously. Whoops sorry fine tuning is a problem Tagata chuckled as he began pulling his pants back up. He's open Izuku shouted, blasting a large fireball at the boy. Kirishima hardened and followed the blast up with a biting uppercut while Ajiro came from up top, slamming his tail down on top of the boy's head. And then Bakugo was sliding in, a powerful blast sending a mushroom cloud into the sky. All three attacks phased through him. I guess I should take out the long-range fighters first Hai he said cheerfully as phased into the ground. Damn it if he's going after the long-range fighter swirled around, as Tagata began raising from the ground, I got you. The stream of fire immediately spiked the temperature in the building, the flames and embers billowing against the walls. And to Izuku's surprise, Tagata emerged from it all without a scratch, his fist lashed out and buried itself into Izuku's stomach, driving the breath out of him and sending him crumpling to the ground alongside Jiru, Mina, Ayama, Hagakira and Siro Power. Fuck you Bakugo snarled as he flew right at Tagata, hands launching forward to unleash another powerful explosion. Tagata didn't even flinch as his fist came flying up in an uppercut, catching Bakugo in the stomach and sending him crashing to the ground. He disappeared back into the ground as Dark Shadow and Sato attempted to capitalize on his distraction, these two being the next to join their classmates on the ground alongside Yamomo and Yuraka. I got you Kirishima snarled, fists raised over his head, he brought them down, eyes widening as his fists passed through his head and shattered the ground a split second before a powerful hand chop slammed into his neck, driving him face first into the destroyed concrete. Before anyone else could move Choji, Suyu, Mainta and Kaminari were flattened with another roar of power. Dark Shadow Takoyami snarled, the shadowy monster flying with a roar of its own. But with frustrating familiarity, the upperclassmen phased through the attack and shot forward, driving a fist into the boy's stomach. Not even moving his tape shot through him and Ajiro's tornado tail dance swung through his head. With a grunt he pulled Ajiro out of the air and slammed him into Siro, striking another pose and proclaiming power. Izuku forced himself to his feet, I ain't down yet. He muttered, fire climbing up his arm as silver lightning darted across Tagata's body. It suddenly vanished as a single strand of Aizawa's capture scarf wrapped around his arm. That'll be all. Aizawa said plainly, last time someone said that, Class R got sent to the infirmary, everyone up. The class collectively groaned as they got up. Bakugo was beside Izuku, he'd risen to predatory crouch before Aizawa had interrupted. His eyes narrowed furiously on his upperclassmen. Sorry for going a little too far, but I was trying to make a point. Tagata said, putting his shirt on, what do you think my quirk is? Something strong, like a strength boost or dodging quirk right? Kaminari asked. Ha I wish my quirk is permeation I can phase through anything the drawback is it takes a lot of concentration. And while using it, I can't see, hear, or even breathe. That's insane Kirishima shouted, you were so accurate in taking us all down. Practice, and my mentor worked hard to help me understand my quirk. Tagata said, that's what these work studies can do for you, help you refine and work on your quirks and give you the experience you need to be effective heroes. Aizawa nodded, with the right hero mentor you could advance your training infinitely. So make sure you all choose wisely, and don't forget, you'll still have to keep up with your schoolwork while working with your work studies, you also have a smaller pool to choose from. The rat has decided that only heroes who have previously done work studies are allowed to take on first years, make sure you think about whether this is for you. Until then, class dismissed. Izuku helped Bakugo to his feet, holding his hands up in appeasement when he shrugged him off roughly. I'm fucking fine. He snarled. Oh I'm sure. Izuku rolled his eyes as they began heading out with everyone else. That guy was crazy. Took out our whole class in a few minutes. If sensei hadn't stopped us. He griped, steaming a bit as Izuku nudged him good-naturedly. I know what you mean, he admitted as they all entered the locker room. I was hoping to get at least one good hidden for Jin and the others that didn't work out. He turned towards the bathroom stalls like he usually did but hesitated. Straightening his back he walked towards his locker pulling his uniform out and undoing his jacket. 
Everyone cast a few surprised glances, Izuku hadn't freely changed in front of them at all this year, and few could deny they were curious as to why. Even fewer were ready for the scars. Holy Kaminari started, but shut up when Ajiro nudged him roughly, eyes never leaving the deep whip marks and brands on his skin. Izuku did his best not to look at anyone as he changed, he could feel eyes on him, burning almost as much as the brands had. He quickly put a shirt on, I'm not hiding anymore. He said, his voice a little shaky, but firm. I don't want to talk about it but I'm done running from my past. Kirishima put a hand on his shoulder, the boy tense but slowly relaxed as Kirishima spoke. That's super manly man, and we'll be here to support you any way we can. There was a quiet, sincere chorus of agreements and Izuku slowly relaxed, thanks guys. He said softly, finishing getting ready and following his classmates out of the room, feeling more at ease with them than he'd ever had before. Later that week, are you sure you don't want back up? Jin asked as Izuku walked towards the train station, Sum and Kayaba right behind them. Of the three only Izuku was dressed casually in blue jeans and his leather jacket, a blue t-shirt with the kanji for formal wear underneath. The other three were in their gym wear, with Jin tying his jacket around his waist while Kayaba had his sleeves rolled up. I'm sure. Izuku said for what felt like the 80th time. Don't worry Jin, I'm just going to see Big Tiny. Yeah but you said it yourself, it's serious if he called you in like he did. He grumbled, crossing his arms. It'll be fine. He said again, patting his shoulder, Pops had the support course set up a panic button, and voice recorder, just in case. You're going hot to big tinies. Sum asked in shock and a little worried, he may be on probation. But he won't be too happy if he finds out. Then he won't find out. Izuku said simply, patting the simple pen in his pocket hat Sum had whipped up for him, undetectable and inconspicuous. Perfect for this. I still don't like it. Jin grumbled. I'll be back before curfew. Izuku reassured him, you'll have time to walk the nun back to her abbey before we meet up. Jin blushed as Sum and surprisingly Kayaba snickered at him. WWE ain't like that. He stuttered, besides, she wants to focus on being a hero. So you asked. Izuku asked with a grin, making Jin shove him. Worry about your own relationship, Akuma. Sum chuckled as she got him in a headlock, knuckles grinding into the top of his head until he was squirming. Jeroff me he griped as he escaped her clutches. How is Yui? Kiaba asked a little snidely, I heard you two had a spat. No to spat, per se. He grumbled, his turn to sulk as they finally reached the train station. She's still not happy about that fight I got into on Monday. I thought those upperclassmen started it. Soon questioned. I didn't help the situation. He sighed, leaning against a nearby pillar. I've been on edge for a while now. I was looking for a conflict. I'm lucky the dumbass was the first one to swing, as is I got another detention for escalating the situation instead of de-escalating it. Surprised they let a criminal like you out of their sight. Soon teased, getting a chuckle out of her sulky friend. Yeah it was already approved before all of this, and when I told them the reason for it they made it an official operation which means I have to let Aizawa know everything I find out. He shook his head, I get their reasoning, but it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. This is the life of a hero. Jin said hesitantly, I'm sure Big Tiny would understand. All the same, you probably shouldn't let him find out. Soom finished. That's obvious. Kayaba scoffed as the train pulled up, are we done here? I have a study group at three. Jin rolled his eyes, be careful out there Akuma. He said, clasping hands with his old friend, Soom giving him a hug afterward, let us know what you find out. Soon as I get back. He said, giving a terse nod to Kayaba before stepping onto the train. Jin watched the train go off, we should follow. Jin muttered, flexing his hands a bit. We don't have permission to go off campus today. Soom reminded him. When's that ever stopped us? He challenged. Since we got accepted into a hero school. Jin grunted, glaring after the train. What do you think Kayaba? He asked, looking to the wolf boy, only to find him gone. Where'd he? He has a study group. She reminded him, and so do we. Come on, don't want to keep your angel waiting. She cackled as she took off at a fast sprint, ducking out of Jin's playfully attempt to swipe at her, both racing back towards the campus, neither noticing the denser-than-normal shadow move quickly along the tracks with the train. West Shizuoka hadn't changed. The cracked sidewalk and street are still grimy and semi-overgrown with weeds and stunted grass. What store faces weren't boarded up had metal grates and bars over windows and doors, cameras watching all that came and went. On every corner there was a group of mean-looking youths, some dressed similarly, others dressed in a certain color, all leered at anyone and everyone who walked past them, sizing up potential scores and shrinking away from those they knew they couldn't touch. Most moved down the street as Izuku walked past. Many in this area still remembered him if the wide, scared eyes from several groups were any indication. They whispered and subtly pointed at him as he walked. Others glared, no doubt remembering past fights that they lost, unwilling to try again for fear of a repeat. Still others were staring at him hungrily, the up-and-comers who saw him as a way to fame desperately wanting to establish a name for themselves, but too scared of the retribution to really act on it. Izuku ignored all of them as he strolled into the old neighborhood and towards a familiar house. It was on the small side, single bedroom with no driveway, a metal chain-link fence surrounding a fairly well-cared-for lawn. 
In his youth there had been trash and wrecks that they'd spent the majority of their time hiding out in. That was all gone. Now replaced by folding chairs and what looked like four milk crates taped together serving as a pseudo table. A speaker blasting some western song he didn't know. None of the faces he saw were familiar, all of them glaring at him distrustingly as he walked up, leaning against the gate as he looked between them all. He lost hero. One asked, snake-like eyes glaring at him as a forked tongue hissed out between his lips as he ran a quick hand through his long blue hair. Dodo is twelve blocks that way. He jerked his head back the way Izuku came. I'm here to see Big Tiny. He said evenly, eyes darting to the large teen made of stone stepping around from the side of the house, crossing his impressive arms with the sound of grating rock. His gray skin scorched and chipped in places, gave me this address and said to come here around this time. The snake boy stared at him for a few moments, before looking over to a sallow-faced boy casually smoking a cigarette. As he leaned against the wall, solid blue eyes staring right at Izuku he telling the truth. The boy nodded, not saying much else as he knocked on the door. Izuku grinned as Big Tiny came out, currently shorter than everyone else, his bull's jersey pooling a bit alongside his jeans inside two large shoes. His eyes were squinted a bit in worry, but they brightened as soon as they saw who was standing at his gate. Akuma he boomed as he shot up to nine feet, lumbering over to hug him as his people jumped, realizing just who they'd been trying to intimidate. How you doing Tiny? Izuku laughed as he returned the hug, sorry it took a bit, came as soon as I talked with Katara. I'm glad you did, shit's been getting tense he stopped himself as he looked around, let's talk inside, never know who's listening. Izuku nodded and opened the gate, following his friend inside his mother's house. Change the place up huh? He asked looking around the near empty house, a wraparound couch sitting in the corner facing a medium sized flat screen mounted on the wall. He nodded to the three people sitting inside. Two were rolling a joint on the couch and gave him a small wave of their hands, he recognized them as a few goons that liked to stick with Big Tiny. Not really friends but definitely not unknown to him. Tweety. He greeted, staring at the harpalite girl perched on the counter in the kitchen, her owl-like face perking up at seeing him. Akuma. She greeted, waving the claws at the end of her wings, tawny feathers ruffling a bit as she tapped her clawed feet against the granite countertop. How you been? Good, good. He said as Big Tiny closed the door, so what's this about? He asked worriedly, I'd have thought you would if he stopped as Big Tiny held his finger up, motioning to one of the boys rolling the joint. The boy's eyes suddenly started glowing green, a pulse of energy filling the room before everything went back to normal. No one's listening on the outside boss. He said, before looking at Izuku, Gray seemingly staring through him, is there a reason you're recording this? Orders. Izuku said, shooting Big Tiny an apologetic look, when the boy shifted uncomfortably, only way they'd let me come this weekend. Big Tiny nodded, fine. He grunted, moving towards Tweety and letting her wrap her tawny feathers around him, relaxing in her embrace, not like I gave you much in Fasari for all this. Things have heated up since ALL Might's downfall. So I've heard. Izuku muttered, putting his hand in his pocket and pulling out the pen. Placing it on the counter, Katara said there were some new gangs causing trouble. New. He muttered, leaning back into Tweety's embrace. It's not new. Under new management maybe. He shook his head. About a month and a half ago, we had some guys coming around talking tough. Couple quirkless kids trying to intimidate some of the businesses and trying to recruit some local elementals. Granite took care of them. Then a few days later they come back. More of them, few more quirkless and three fire users. Snacky eyes and Gidget over there got him out before they could kill him. I stepped out for that one. They spewed some bullshit, talking about the Caldera Syndicate, telling us that we either submit or they take care of us. What you do? I beat their asses. He scoffed, me, Blitz and Tweety sent them running, fire users were a hassle but we dealt with them, had a few others poking their heads around, trying to recruit other elementals and muscle, but we've kept them at base so far. Sounds like you got this all well in hand, Izuku said, scratching his jaw, what exactly do you need from me? Tiny popped his jaw, those fire users, he muttered, meeting Izuku's gaze, they had some real familiar moves. Izuku's eyes sharpened, do tell. It was sloppy, undisciplined, but those moves it was like watching you fight. He said, not just that, they kept talking about some fire lord, said we'd pay when we saw blue fire. Blue fire. Izuku growled, you think in Dabai. I don't know, he's not one to be this organized. He sighed, even when he was in charge of us, he'd leave us alone for months on end. Only thing he did with any consistency was train you, and you didn't fight then like you do now. He fights like me now. Izuku said grimly, I don't know who trained him, but he was able to beat me. Tiny grumbled a little, I still don't think it's him. He muttered, pulling a cigarette out and lighting it, offering the pack to Izuku as he blew a cloud of smoke into the air. Izuku waving it off, especially now that you've confirmed you fought him recently, cause these guys were asking about you. Me. He asked in surprise. Yeah, nothing big, what your rep was, who you hung out with, people that helped you. He ran a hand through his hair, letting out a huff of irritation, smoke angrily spewing out from his nostrils. People around here know not to talk on stuff like that, but it's worrying they're asking. Izuku nodded slowly, eyes growing distant. Sounds like they retrying to angle towards a recruitment. He muttered, the question is, do they think that I'd turn villain, or do they think my position as a hero would help them? 
He shook his head, anything else of note about these guys. They spat a lot of shit about Caldera. He said, bunch of whackjob cult-like shit about how the Caldera Syndicate will rise from the ashes like a phoenix. Izuku felt like ice water had been dumped on him. Iro said they were toast. He whispered, fists clenching, there's no way. There's always a way, Jin said sternly. All it takes is a few kids remembering their pops or uncles and suddenly they're back. And unlike others they're actually able to ride on the clout. That tells me they're a lot more established than they should have been had it just been a bunch of kids. This is big he muttered, lip twitching a bit as he realized his hands were burning. With a growl he unclenched his hands, letting the smoke die. I need to talk to the others about this did you want me to put a word in for a hero presence? Not sure what I can dredge up but I'm sure if I contacted X less directly. Don't worry about us man, we take care of our own. He said, patting his shoulder, before flicking his cigarette into a small bucket nearby, pulling another out and offering the pack again to Izuku, who accepted it with a distracted thank you. Got a lot of guys around here now doing better because of your example. Lot of young bloods Trina stay on the straight and narrow so they can make it in the hero biz, meaning I got a lot of Ogs doing what they can to make sure they don't have to. My biggest concern was warning you about this without them finding out and swarming this place. What if they're watching the house? He questioned. One of the boys on the couch snorted at that. They keep it to the area around the businesses. They know not to come around here. And we made sure to run some interference. Tiny explained with a small grin. Sokka's girlfriend still runs that biker club. And they get irritated with these guys pretty easily. Last I heard there was a rumble down at TH. Izuku laughed at that, meaning death arms will be there in a bit to break it up. Guess I should get going before then huh? Wish you could hang out longer. He said clasping hands with his friend as Tweety jumped down from the counter, hugging Izuku goodbye. Guess that can't happen till this new shit's dealt with. Maybe we can organize a block party instead of crashing one like we used to. He joked, eliciting a deep bellied laugh as Tiny grew to tower over him. Come on, I'll walk you to the end of the street. The two old friends walked down the street, cigarettes hanging from the corners of their lips. The sun was hanging high in the sky and a chilly breeze blew past them, threatening winter but not yet promising it yet. Tell Jin and the others I said what's up, Big Tiny said. I know it may be a bit until it can happen, but I won't say no to having y'all over again. I'll pass on the message. Izuku mused, blowing a long trail of smoke into the air, letting a tongue of flame chase it for a moment. If you need anything contact me directly. I don't care if they know, and unless it puts you in danger I'd rather know immediately rather than wait on Sokka or Katara to contact me. Understood. They stopped at the corner, Izuku turning towards him fully as he pulled the finished cigarette from his lips, letting it brown and turned to ash in his hands with a little bit of applied heat. Keep your eyes open big tiny, Izuku said, clasping hands with his friends once more. Hate to see your ugly mug on a t-shirt. Same to you, I don't want anyone accusing you of pest control. Izuku laughed as he stepped back, keep me posted he called as he walked away, hands in his pockets as he made the journey towards the train station, taking a few shortcuts he knew to get there quicker. Passing between two of them he came to a halt as a white blur crashed into his legs, the force barely enough to stagger him. He hummed in confusion as he looked down, eyes narrowing a bit at the bandaged little girl staring up at him fearfully, hey kid, you alright? He asked with a gentle smile, carefully kneeling down to look her over, dirty bandages, terrified, no shoes, he listed in his head as he began pulling his phone out, arm going around her to pick her up. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, sir. Izuku's eyes narrowed at the young man walking out from the alleyway, fur-lined green coat swaying in the breeze a bit as he fixed his plague mask with glove-covered hands. That's my daughter, I've told her before she should look before taking off out of my sight. If you'll just hand her over I'm sure we can sweep all of this under the rug, don't you agree? Izuku's arm was tightening around the little girl even before she whimpered please don't go, into his collarbone, hiding herself as best she could from the man in front of them. Yeah, that's not gonna fly with me. 